All right, I might have a um, controversial movie take. Do it. Um, but but I'm not certain. Well, are we live? I don't know. We are now live. Well, okay. this will be on so, the upload anyway. Well, oh, well, I want to get... If it's going to be something controversial, I think that we need to have the live chat's reaction to it just in case. All right, well, mm -hmm. if you give me... Give it five a little, minutes, you know. At least a little reward for showing up so... Uh, well, I don't want to say showing up so early, because... We're late because, well, what? it doesn't matter whose fault it is. It doesn't matter whose fault it is. It's fine. Technically the, the not late if people are still going by together. time zones from, uh... oh, wait, are we two hours late or not late at all according to, I forget how time works. Um, it, it, we are, we're two hours after the normal time. I won't, I won't use the L word, but we're two hours past the typical time. Lesbian? Which is fine. Well, I was thinking the Isle of Lesbos. They have their own time? They do. They have their own time. However, Pretty they cool. share that time with everyone above and below them. Oh, Generally. I yeah. Um, the people from Lesbos are lesbians. Listen, see. guys. Look. They like savings, okay? That's, uh, it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> it did for Bretagne. Oh, it did? Uh, yeah. I got a... I know something that could start us off, uh, uh, something a little amusing. Cool. I got a, I got a text the other day, Hi. and well, that's a good question. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'm asking the same thing. Here's the text. It's a text from uh, just some random number. It says, "Hi, Phyllis. This is Kim. <laughs> I have your cheesecake." <laughs> Dude, I knew your name was Phyllis. I was just like, oh, you just get a real sense of Phyllis, you know? Your yeah. grandma name. You should submit I do that not know to, why like, that two sentence horror stories. <laughs> no, I, I don't typically get a text like that. Every once in a while, I'll get a text, and it will be people thinking that I'm Kelly, and I'm trying to sell my house. Oh. And so they constantly are uh. giving me like offers on how to sell the house and things like that. It's it's not too common to be a nuisance, but it's just every once in a while that sort of thing happens. But I can give but my this is I, your first Phyllis. This is my first hi Phyllis. This is Kim. I have your cheesecake, which is <laughs> enticing to me because I really <laughs> well, really I mean, like you know. cheesecake. It's one of oh, the yeah. it's a top tier dessert. I've gotten even that one three. before, so it's just cool that you've gotten your first one. Yeah. Um, kind of like I'm a rite of passage sort of thing. Yeah, I'm initiated now. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, I watched two movies that I, uh, one of which I hadn't seen before, and one that I had. Oh my! All right. And the two movies that I watched were Casablanca, okay, which mm -hmm. I have not seen before, mm -hmm. and I saw Logan's Run. Oh, okay. Now, Casablanca was really good. I really liked yes. Casablanca quite opinion. a bit. That okay. that's <laughs> actually not the controversial <laughs> opinion. That I think that movie, I think Casablanca is like an excellent movie. I think but, I know what the controversial opinion is going to be now. I've used the process of elimination. The controversial opinion. I don't even know if this is controversial or not. I guess we'll see. But Logan's run is bad and I don't like it. Oh um, my god. Oh my goodness. Have you have you guys seen Logan's run? I don't think I have, I have actually. Not. No. I would uh it's 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 probably worth watching, I think. It's a it's an odd movie. Um it's about uh in a it's a post-apocalyptic uh, oh, sort geez, of story where you have some of it, it was it's like 72 or three it was a few years before star wars fucking changed everything science fiction but it was uh, it's a bunch of people who live in this uh this idyllic world yeah 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 uh this idyllic paradise world essentially underneath this massive dome uh and they get everything they want and everything's amazing and wonderful but when you turn 30 you participate in uh, an event called Carousel, where you are reborn in fire, right? So once you're 30, you have to get reborn, essentially. Okay. Um, that's a general premise. That's fine with me. And I, I've seen it before, many, many years ago, and I, and I, but that was when I was young and dumb, and so I rewatched it yesterday, and that movie is bad, and yeah. it needs it needs a remake because the premise is really interesting. But I think in practically every way, its execution is bad to mediocre at best. Um, mediocre. So I, I don't. I don't know if that's controversial or not. I don't know if people have strong opinions on Logan's Run, but it's uh, it's bad. But it'd be worth a watch. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, I thought it was. I thought it was pretty bad. I think that it's it's 
that's what needs to be remade is these uh, are these old movies that have interesting premises and interesting ideas and they're just done really poorly yeah, remake like those movies yeah someone saying whatever that's about mute the video before you get a copyright strike what video <laughs> we they black adam before we oh <laughs> watch it's, it there's factorio music it's soothing it's not how, why would you even assume that's black adam music <laughs> <laughs> i'll make another i don't know if this is also controversial but i had no idea if it, i had to check the name of our group chat i didn't know if it was black adam like adam and eve or black atom like the particle okay hmm. are you going with this that's all that's oh. it a hot take <laughs> i didn't <laughs> I didn't. I don't know if I'm supposed to know which one it is. Both seem equally likely to be the case. Well, um, that's it. That, that's it. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. Uh, you know, the formatting for this. I don't know whether to do it before or after, where we talk about the miserable mess that is DCEU. And remember, Marvel is too. They're just different messes. We randomly talk yeah. about one or the other because they're very funny to look at. Because they're, they're the most expensive storytelling shit that's going on in this world. For some reason, they keep making all horrible, horrible decisions. Now, whether or not Black Adam is a horrible decision is remains to be seen. Okay, like calm down. I'm not. I'm not jumping ahead. What do you mean? I was. I'm just. I'm. I'm just thinking. <laughs> is it better to do the movie first or to do the meta first? Let's start. Uh, I think we should start with the meta. Oh no, because I think the F. meta. What. Oh no! Uh, oh no! What happened? Oh, we already F died. We do the meta first. Oh, my God! That's what, that's what <laughs> press F for meta and oh, press so M for movie. <laughs> this dying. will help keep things organized. It says How YouTube is not oh, no. receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. So that must well, be then do internet, something. Right? It's fine do for me. Do something, Butler. Do something with your video. I want to do stuff. I'm clicking. It. Here I go clicking. <laughs> Chat reload, it's on your end. Draw something on the screen. I mean, well, the thing is, we could just carry on, and if it comes back, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't, because <laughs> it's all recorded anyway. So we could just, you know, yeah, the re upload people audience. are going to be like, get on with it. I don't care if the live people heard what you said, which is very mean re upload people. The live people are yeah. people too. Rude. Rude. Sort of. So when you say, um, the, the part of the reason why I was saying before or after is because. What what is in this film can have us talk about the future of of the DCU. We can't really talk much about that, but we can talk about why this movie was made. About the past. Yes, we could we could talk about because what well, you know this is between the lot of us. We're going to be able to piece it all together like detectives. But what was the one before this for DC? Uh, Discounting the Snyder. Squad. The Suicide Squad, right? Or was it the, the right. one before that? The suicide see now in my yeah. head for Marvel, I le legit see them as stacking this big Jenga tower and it's all falling apart. But with DC, it's like the Suicide Squad, and I'm like, does that count? It's like, yes, it counts. And it's like, does that count? <laughs> like, just... are you yeah. sure? It, uh, are you sure about it that? Does not fit. It just for many it doesn't. Reasons. It just feels like it's in its own fucking universe, doesn't it? Like it's doing its, it's own uh, thing. Kind of have to, to treat it that way. Absolutely, in its own universe. You didn't know about Kandak. <laughs> Apparently not. There's lots we didn't know That's about fine. that comes out of this movie. Um, Which, where would you rather, when it comes to made up places that were totally there all along, bro, would you rather live in um, Kandak or would you rather live in Marip uh, Maripora? Ma Madripoor. 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 Yeah. Would you rather well live in Wakanda if you're going to throw it in? Um, would they allow. Now, white people. I personally, <laughs> I wasn't. I listen. I don't have any problem with, with white people. Uh, that's fair diversity enough. and inclusion, but I fear that the Wakandans, who are horrifically racist, terrible people, might have an issue I, with the, the, that look, sort of thing. They had Bilbo there, and they didn't kill him or anything. They just called him names. So I'll deal with that. That's, <laughs> that's how it starts, smaller. That's how it. Well, <laughs> that's fine. How it I'll deal with it. They're gonna use gamer words on you. Okay, apparently it's life people it's matter. better now. I don't know. Let's hope. That's good. Um, that's good. Oh gosh. I guess the thing that's worth like laying out in the preamble is that Black Adam has been in development for a long time, like over a decade. 
Yep. Oh, does not really? Yes. Uh, it is, well, so not Black Adam specifically, but rather that uh, Dwayne Johnson has been going back and forth on whether he wanted to be Shazam or Black Adam in like a film that w may or may not have been happening for a very long time before it got locked in a few years ago. Does he have a particular, does he really like this character or? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's fair enough. The, the, cause, um, the, so like, I don't know how much you know about Black Adam Rex, but he's basically, None. he's basically. I know um, that he's not your typical hero. Mm. Well, he <laughs> was a villain traditionally, um, basically Shazam's arch nemesis. Um, but then he sort of slotted into the role of anti-hero at some stage. But I mean, you know, that's kind of a question that's worthwhile is like Black Adam, uh, but had like seemingly nothing to do with Shazam at all. What's the deal? Um, and I imagine that the deal is it's Dwayne Johnson and he wants to be the lead <laughs> as opposed to, uh, the antagonist in another film, which do I you think he's upset that, that he would... couldn't be Superman. Um... Uh, well, I mean, Black Adam is not quite Superman. Like, I guess power sets are kind of similar, but, like, he's a I, I think he's character. very... Yeah, power-wise, he's very close, it seems. He just shoots lightning instead of laser beams. That's the, that's one of the big differences. Yeah, <laughs> it is, it's it's depending important. on your nerdiness, that's a huge or tiny difference. Like, you're like, if what you, the fuck if ever? They, they can get over it. It's easy. But Black Adam. What a, what a phlegm. Um, um, well, so, well, and I guess in terms of its place in this universe and like the preamble, um, the DCEU is, is not what one would consider a tremendous success. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what it's, would you uh, even could actually, it be called a success? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it could at this point. Too many of those films haven't made like money. Um, when I Bringing, say made the money, DCEU not... puts the sucks in success, like it's like, it's. Uh, it's... I would go as far as saying it failed successfully. Like, that's how it feels. It's, it's like a celebration um, where it's like, congratulations, you managed to make it over the finish line of failure. I think, um, let's, put, let's put it this way. The only reason why the DCEU isn't over is because it's superheroes. So, like, there's, there's an intent and a desire to keep it going when, if any other series had had this many failures critically and commercially, it'd be done. Like, because this is the 11th film. And, and how many of them could, like, honestly be said to be, like, good? <laughs> Well, like are, are you suggesting part of it is like relying on Marvel pushing it all forward as well as the the, uh, the meta? Yeah, like Warner Brothers would never want to let it die because it presents their best opportunity to franchise something. Because nobody, it, this is it, right? Like, there's Marvel, which Disney owns, and then there's a uh, there's a uh, DC, which is owned by Warner Brothers. Universal doesn't have this. Um, like Paramount doesn't have this. Um, I can't believe I'm forgetting the fifth one. Uh, Wait, fifth movie in DC? Big movie studio, the of oh. the major ones. Fox? No, well, Warner? Fox is Disney now. So, um, oh. what am I? What am I? That, that's, that's Papa John's. Oh, Sony. <laughs> yeah, Sony. And Sony's trying to make their own like Spider-Man universe, basically, right? Like they, it, it's um, we're in an era where it seems like what the studios really want is franchises because franchises are. In some sense, instead of having to go out on a limb and create something totally new that people may or may not respond to, you can leverage something that you know has some level of interest straight away. That's why they're never going to give up on making DC films ever. But then the problem is that that attitude has been like, we got to keep going with what we what we have, and it's led to this incredibly incoherent universe where like you don't even know who's participating in it anymore in terms of actors. Um, you don't know, like, if they're blending uni like, what's the deal in terms of blending in old universes that they had, like, bringing in Michael Keaton Batman. Um, of course, when projects get cancelled a couple of months before they come out, that doesn't instill a lot of confidence in people in terms of, like, the, the longevity of, like, following through on any sort of roadmap, but the reality is there probably hasn't been a roadmap. It's like this shambling mess on life support. Um, that, like, has taken, consistently taken injuries that cannot be fixed with surgery. And so, like, he's got broken bones and he's bleeding out of his eyes and he's, like, crawling forward. And nobody, like, it, it, that's it. He has to keep going. And, yeah, he's just, and, and, and strings are attached, no, drag him across the floor. 
<laughs> yeah, like out of because I think that there is fundamentally there seems to be a refusal to entertain what I I don't know what everybody would think here the reality that you need to do a hard reboot. Um, yes, God, you have fucking to do a hard yes. Reboot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I figured you might agree with that meme. Like it's it's um you've you've got a universe that a lot of things have already been wasted and squandered. That I've got like, a list. A lot. You're all of your yeah. A-listers. Yeah. There's usually a well, lot of things that. have been squandered. It's like, what hasn't been squandered? That's true, right? It's like, that, you've yeah, had true. a few things that come along to... I mean, I don't think it's any surprise that the Batman, which is a film that is totally separate from all of this, like, benefits great... Like, is stronger. And even that film, I think, probably got hurt to some degree by a level of um, damage that's been dealt to DC as a brand. That, like, that, that didn't make a billion dollars is, is not, not like, awesome. Um, it's, it was super successful, but Batman, right? And even, like, Batman has been hurt to some extent by what I would imagine is a level of um, broader brand damage to DC. And the damage being that <laughs> Marvel, I think, has a reputation for being reliable. I don't think that they should have that anymore. Um, but I think that they've still got that to some extent. Like, there seems to be this reputation that at the very least should be entertained. Again, after Phase 4, I don't think that that's the case. But, like, they have that going for them. And I think that they have, like, a sense of uh, it's never going to end. Maybe that will come under a bit of, like, challenge if there's, like, more and more and more, like, you know, looking forward at the box office of upcoming films. But... DC doesn't really have that. DC's in a place where people don't really know what is or isn't continuity, or, like, which characters even exist in this world anymore. Um, and, like, that seems to be something that's really important to being able to maintain, like, a long-term, uh, like, multi-movie franchise, um, like Marvel. So, yeah, DC's not in a very good place. And now comes along Black Adam, wow. spearheaded by Dwayne Johnson, with a lot of new elements in it, um, and seemingly as part of the marketing material, a this being an important film in terms of determining what the future of DC looks like, because if yeah. it makes a lot of money, Dwayne Johnson can leverage more of that, because a lot of it would stem from him, I would imagine, to steer the direction of this universe. If it doesn't, who knows? He's probably like... When when they had their first me and like you can have my star power, but in exchange, I'm 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 gobbling up a decent portion of this. This is gonna be my big next project. I want an MCU. God help us all. Because he never would have been. He, he probably wouldn't have been if he was to join the MCU with whatever hero. They're not gonna give him much of a slice of pie. However, of course not. If he spearheads the DCEU and gets it in any way, shape, or form close enough to the MCU's success, then he'll have a big old pizza all to himself. It'll be great. Yeah, pr pretty much a big fish in a small pond is, uh, is Dwayne <laughs> Johnson in the DCEU. And so even if uh, Black Adam isn't super successful, he'll probably just be like, all right, what are we doing next? Like, how many times have they had false starts anyway? I don't know. Uh, oh, Every time. Uh, Pretty much every time. Point. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, what, what, how how do we want to go about doing this? Do we want to have a quick thing of everyone's quick thoughts on the darkness of Adam and what they thought of him? <laughs> sure. Um, I think so. Why not? Did, so All right. Did sure. more just yawn? Are we boring you, sir? I have been up for a very very long time. All right. <laughs> you fuck. But anyway, Black Adam. Uh, it's a movie. <laughs> Who's going first? Let's go right um, to left. All right. You don't need to get political, jeez. I just, I figured, <laughs> you know, we usually go left to right. Let's mix it up. <laughs> right to left. Sure, yeah. fine. Meme r r suppository. <laughs> you can go for it. <laughs> sure, sure. Damn. Um, uh, so, so, so Black Adam, it was, in fact, another DCEU film and everything that that means. So... Uh, you know, uh, take of that what you will. It's, you know, it's very style over substance. It's a film that doesn't like to stay still for very long. It's it, in many ways, I, you know, while I was watching it, while I was in the theater, absorbing it with my eye beams, um, it, I felt like I was not so much watching a film that ebbed and flowed in pacing as much as I was watching an extended action sequence 
that had very occasional, you know, pauses for breath. And then it would go right back into just blowing shit up and zapping things with lightning and um, sh shit like that. Um, it was, it, 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 there was a lot of montages and speedy expositionary narration that seemed to just signpost, we, we don't want to stay with characters or story very long. We want to just get right to the fucking, yeah, let's, let's fucking, you know, punch demons in the testicles and, and get heroes to fight. Yeah, let's, let's, let's fry soldiers. Yeah. Oh, fuck, we got to stop for a while. No, let's go back to it. That, that's kind of how I felt watching it. Um, so The Rock has, was, despite him being the big selling point of this film, was quite terribly miscast um, as Teth Adam. Uh, he, like, I don't know, I think he lends himself more to comedic roles from what I've seen of him. Um, he, and it, it, there's some hilarious, but with, with that being said, there is some unintentional hilarity with his casting here where um, uh, he can't do any accents. So he's just speaking with his <laughs> Dwayne The Rock Johnson voice. Yet every fucking Kandakian has this, you know, pretty middle, uh, either has like a South African or a Middle Eastern accent, depending on uh, where they hail from. But he he doesn't have any of that. He's just the rock. Um, and when he's and he's everyone trying, in the past and the had the rock's accent. We know this from historical documents. True, true. Accents weren't uh, invented until like 2000 AD. Yeah, yeah. I I, I read that in the Bible. Um, and uh, like the the film keeps going on about how angry Black Adam is. Yet all of the Rock's delivery is so flat and subdued, and he kind of acts like an autistic robot for most of it, or like an alien that came down to Earth and doesn't quite know how the human work, um, which is like partially a writing problem, partially a performance problem. It's kind of a both kind of feed into each other, uh, which kind of leads into my next thing, which is the di the dialogue's really bad <laughs> in this film. It is very on the nose, very baby's first drama. Um, and uh, it's not helped by the fact that this film is overstuffed. They had about three films. They had about three films worth of material in here, and they didn't. And all they really wanted to focus on was the action potential uh, for all of it. Um, I, I wouldn't call it Snyder levels are bad because that's like a new dimension of misery. But like, it's it's about if we go by the gradient of bad of the DCEU, um, this is about in the middle. For me though maybe i can be swayed either way like i'm mm. still marinating on it um there's some really utterly perplexing world building in here like i the justice society in general raises a lot of questions like especially with suicide squad and everything the fact that there's murderer batman adorning a child's wall as merchandising or the fact that the justice <laughs> that league seems to have had they keep, five they keep doing that, that problem yeah, <laughs> that was yeah. problem yeah, that's a, it's a it's an ongoing thing. Like, and the Justice League in this universe seems to have had about five trilogies worth of adventures happening off screen because <laughs> they seem so ubiquitous <laughs> at this point. Uh, um, and you gonna fucking like, review the whole movie? <laughs> yes, I am. I'm going. We gotta go right scene now. by uh, scene. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. I just have all of this summary here of my thoughts and uh, fucking Black Adam. You know, he's an edgy... The, the, and the final thing I will mention is... Because uh, I'll, I'll get into other things later on. But the final mm -hmm. thing I'll mention is... Uh, the, you know, the, 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 all the marketing for this film is like, oh, this is, the, this is a kind of superhero or anti-hero that you've never seen before in the DCEU. You've never seen anything like this. And I'm just thinking like, okay, what have we had in this universe? We've had edgy, gritty, killy Superman, edgy, gritty, killy Batman, um, rapey, rapey Wonder Woman. Um, and then the rest of it is focusing on anti-heroes and villains and stuff. Also Aquaman and Flash in there somewhere. Well, I mean, um, Aquaman, like, genocided... A whole bunch of he sea creatures the against their he will. Killed, he yeah. killed John Rice Davies. And remember, yep, Wonder true. Woman we'll fucking decide. crushed the skulls of her enemies on walls. <laughs> like, this is. Right. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, yeah. if anything, Black Adam, when he like vaporizes someone, it's like, oh, that was kind of you compared to what the others do. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, like, this is not any. This is actually pretty par for the course as far as like the kind of hero they focus on, uh, which kind of shows they're a bit out of touch with their own universe which is bad 
So yeah, that's my that's my thoughts um, beyond what I'll share later. But uh, yeah, right. that's, a, that's what I'll share so far. That's, that's some positive Short thoughts so far. To the point. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I like that. Good. All right. So when you things. asked, go ahead. When you asked, what do we think about Black Adam? Were you asking about the movie, or were you asking about the character? The movie. Oh, okay. So I saw Black Adam. Uh, it's not terrible, but it's definitely not good, I don't feel. Um, I don't feel strongly about it in any way whatsoever. I come away from a movie like this being very apathetic. There's nothing really in this movie that I particularly care about. Nothing that really grabs me. There's nothing I found really, really interesting. There's maybe a couple slight exceptions. I was just not really... I wasn't bored while I was watching it. And I've watched it one time and I wasn't even bored. Mm. But I wasn't <laughs> wasn't gripped by it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just... I really don't have anything strong in particular to say. Uh, though that may, of course, change uh, as we have our discussion here. All right. Wait, does that mean I'm next? Okay. Yeah, um, go yeah. for it. Um, I'm going to... I'm just going to keep it real short. I, because I agree with a lot of what's already been said. I think it's bad. I liked it, though. All right, Fringy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I enjoyed it, but it's not good, pretty much. It's, uh, it is not particularly well written. Um, it's got a lot of problems, but there are certain elements of it that I enjoy and that I think are okay. Um, the most, the, the main one being Pierce Brosnan as Dr. Fate. That's probably my favorite part of the film. Like, my favorite character in the film and my favorite element. I also kind of like Talkman. Um, <laughs> I don't have that much to say on why I liked anything in particular. Yeah, it's, uh... I don't know exactly where it would sit in terms of the DCEU qualitatively. Um, but, yeah, I enjoyed it. But it's not good. <laughs> That's my take. Don't you don't need to Wait, write no. more. That's okay. <laughs> you don't need to write more. It's fine. You can stop now. <laughs> you can. I. You don't stop. need to. You can if you want. It's just you know. Yeah. Capital. Ah, uh, this movie is not very good at all. If this was, uh, if they hoped that this would be a sort of reset for the DCEU, this isn't it. Um, mm -hmm. In my opinion, this feels. Maybe slightly better, but definitely in the same, you know, family, the same world as the previous DCEU movies. It's not very good. I think what interesting ideas that were there to be explored were not done very well. It's a very confused movie, uh, thematically and symbolically. Uh, the action was, eh, it was fine. I just fine. It kind of washed over me. I wasn't especially gripped by any of the action. Uh, they do not do the man out of time stuff with the rock very well at all. <laughs> no, not even a little bit. There's there's a joke or two that made me kind of laugh. Um, that's about it as far as his character. Um, and I think above all, the fact that the, the, we'll talk more about this, of course, but the fact that they try to paint him as oh he's you know he's not he's not a superhero he's like a uh, more edgier. I just find that very, very cringe and not well supported by what happens <laughs> yeah, in the movie at all, a little, a little or by what happens in the previous movies. In what this is the this wrong franchise. franchise to have that kind yes. of marketing. It doesn't. Work. Yes, it's yeah. very, very bad choice. Um, there's some really bad world building. There's some, I don't know, very uh, like. Uh, there's some really bad performances, not just from The Rock, mm, but uh, there's, like there's, there's a, a little kid in the movie the worst who's performance, especially yeah. bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, Pierce Brosnan is good. He lends it a sort of uh, gravitas that is missing. Bit more from legitimacy. The rest of the movie. Yeah, there are some funny lines from a couple funny characters, and that's cool. I guess this has some of the worst music and soundtrack choices I've seen mm. in a film oh. since maybe 2016's oh. uh, The mm. Suicide Squad. Um, very bad use of music. No good. Oh, you mean like, do you mean the use of the score or the use of... Uh, oh, like, uh, more scores? specifically the soundtrack, but I did not think the score was great either. But the soundtrack was especially egregious, in my opinion. Agreed. So, 
funnily enough, uh, I remember I told Maul of this. When I walked out of the theater after watching the film, I was whistling Black Adam's theme. I kind of like it. I kind of like his theme. I, um, but... I don't remember it, I but I wouldn't I necessarily that... knock the score as much as some of the... the, the... Previously I know what you recorded about. songs. It was, uh, it was when they. It was. It was back in black. <laughs> oh wait, no, not back in black. I'm, the what's the? I'm mixing. Paint it black and back. Paint it. Paint it black. Yeah, yeah. Uh, black. Uh, yeah, bullet with butterfly wings by Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> that was really Get it? He's inappropriate. Black Adam. Oh, yeah, 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 black. Vampire, I really like that song. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it sucks that here. Very good. No, oh, it's it, like. There's another one as so well. Much that pops yeah, up I can't remember it. when he attacks the base. But... It's the exact same thing as the Painted Black thing. It's just a different song. Yeah. Yeah, it was like it's... the Saints Row 3 song, right? Like, yeah, that's, that's I where I knew that is. from. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's very, <laughs> it's very much like the... Su no, sorry. Suicide Squad. In that it makes me hate all the songs I used to really like. Because um, he was so safe. I was getting Suicide Squad now. vibes from this, yeah. So, well, I would say this is... Yeah. Par for the course, or maybe slightly better than the rest of the DCEU, but if it is better, it's not by much. Mm. And that's... that's I, I would be... I think... I, th I feel like I would say that it's... it's We can't forget how bad some of these films have been. Hey, look, know? hey, <laughs> look, this is the fun part. Know, we're we're all going to go through this. And I, I've already got a shit ton of arguments for how shit this is, but also for how it's actually kind of redeemable. So, looking forward to what we conclude by the time we go through all of it, because... Superman lasered a bunch of embryos to death. <laughs> I feel That's like true. Black Adam is the the never going to have low. that problem. <laughs> the bar is low, that is true. Even though they try to make him more villainy, he's less <laughs> villainy than Superman. They, that's the thing, yeah, if they even the tried to have Black Adam do that, The Rock would be like, I'm not doing that, I'm not a bad guy. <laughs> you know, I'm not actually way. bad. Yeah, I'm not actually a bad guy. I'm going to market though. myself as being a bad boy, but I'm not actually. Yeah. That requires some level of commitment and moral dubiousness, which I don't really want to commit to. It's still unbelievable, by the way. Krypton had its chance, what he says before doing that. Jesus Krypton Christ. Krypton has its chance. Man of Steel, what a legendary movie. Do you know I used to just tell people that movie was fine and cool because I didn't remember so it. Did I. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, so we may as well just get started up. We'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll just go scene by scene, sort of, but there's no visual aid, I'm afraid, guys, because this, this movie's just not out, you know? It's hot Too off the press. You're going to have to use your imagination. We'll have to use our storytelling skills to get you in. I thought, no, you you, you can't have our friends at Rajbet no. help us, <laughs> to, help us to see the movie. I love those guys. Uh, great. So yeah, we. Uh, I thought it was kind of funny. I, I was. I was when I was watching this movie. I was sort of just like smiling at the idea of we're trying to introduce this whole new set of like law, basically like before Rome, Babylon, or the pyramids, there was conduct, and I was already like, uh, the like Marvel have done this like seventeen times in Phase Four. You yeah. Know? Uh, yeah. It's turns out there going. was this entire grand civilization <laughs> that yep, we yep, made fine, up, fine, and fine, it's fine. even yeah, yeah <laughs> also, whatever. By the okay. way, just starting up with exposition, like narration that ends after <laughs> this little pro prologue. It only is here to serve as exposition. I don't even. I think that's part of what was making was me smirk. I was just like, "All right, DC, what have you got now?" And it's like it just, before it so times two thousand six hundred. Yeah. BC, like and Transformers, you're just like, oh god, here we know, go. Like Transformers when Optimus Prime is talking about the old spark. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems like, like it's like, look, era. don't even try to do a grant, just give me a character. I, I, like, I, think, I think that as soon as you watch that, you're like, oh, so this isn't going to be great or anything, is no. it? <laughs> <laughs> like, no. You instantly know that it's not going to be very yeah. good. Um... Yeah, they're like the first self-governing people on Earth. They thrived for centuries, but then there was a shitty ruler called King Acton who was a dick. And seriously, the, the, when they introduced that alone, I was like, okay, I'm following. And then they were like, he wanted to use dark magic to forge the crown of Sabak. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> oh, what, what, oh no, Christ. that sounds bad. I was like, that, let's, we, sure, we sure wouldn't want that to happen. This is that one would of those, really bad if that happened. This is one of those pub the brakes, guys. Like, what do you mean use dark magic? Like, what is, what is that? That's just a thing. For, okay, fine. You just, you know, use your dark magic. But you can't make the crown of Sabak. That is, by the way, infused with the power of six demons of the ancient world. 
Oh which my god, this is getting him... worse by the minute. I thought that was a hilarious <laughs> line. This the oh, power, the no. six demons of the it's cause it's the six you do is the six demons of the age of will. This you know each yeah, one yeah, of those six the same demons, demons from Shazam. Yeah. The seven demons of the age of wills, it's like this other guy who's just like, Yeah, odd number. <laughs> I was here, it. no one really remembers me, <laughs> but that's all right. Yeah, it's supposed to reflect the 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 friendly wizard people, the, the evil demon people now, uh, which you'd know if you'd watch Shazam Rags. What the fuck is wrong with you? God. <laughs> no, no. What's wrong with you? That's true, because uh, I was told Shazam was great, and then I watched it with Metal, and we were both like, "This was shit." So that'll <laughs> you guys will get coverage of that one day at some point. That's a, that's a spicy take. Though. It is a spicy take, but it'll be completely confirmed because the, the 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 I'm sorry, okay. There's some funny and quirky things in the movie. I'll give you that. All right, I agree with the sentiment that it's a cool, like, more but grounded here's the movie. thing. When pe when it came out, everybody's like, "Oh man, finally a great DC film." And nobody talks about it like presently. Not really, no, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, you're, not in the same way that people theory. will continuously reference like Guardians for the MCU, you yeah. know? Yeah, exactly. So, Before um, we go too far with the opening exposition and narration sequence, uh, did anyone else find the line, the very first self-governing people, weird? Like, what did people I do found a lot that? of lines weird. Yeah, because... Well, they... If you, if it's you... supposed to be... There, there's this element throughout the film of their fighting for their freedom from mm -hmm. the people around From them the it's, it's a, colonizers well, yeah. so are they saying that it's up to that point it was always like some form of collective was would have a leader they were leaderless but like happy and stuff. i guess and i guess the it. point that they're trying to say is it's like the first civilization but the problem is that it's not old enough for it to be the first well, no, civilization self-governing yeah, meaning the first mean. civilization that doesn't have a definitive ruler uh what was the apparatus by which they could have somebody that's, become king? That's kind of what my point is. The, the, he's saying like, <laughs> it's the first self-governing people on Earth. It's like, I feel like having a governance in place is the thing that comes after being self-governed. You're like, everyone collects up into bigger and bigger pieces and then you I have to have leaders. I don't think they wanted us to talk about it for even no. a couple of minutes. And, I and feel like the whole point about it more than they wanted us to. The whole reason they bring it up is because they want to contrast that with and then king acton ruined everything by being king <laughs> and you're like oh, yeah. okay which yeah he's he's super evil um because he wants the crown of sabak infused to the six oh demons God. of the ancient world the magic Nobody dark good magic that. And, so, and it's gonna make him invincible if he gets this crown but he can't get <gasps> the crown because he needs to make it with eternium and eternium is mined only in kandak Seriously, when you get all of this as a shock and blast at the beginning, it's like, what the fuck is like, what what the hell is going on? What the we've got a new, we've got vibranium again, another one of those, yeah, another, better. another MacGuffin metal, which they don't really do anything with that. No, do they, they don't. Uh, half and half. Let's black really... Adam once. I think that's, that's they do, my they do some stuff it. with it. Uh, it's plot relevant. Uh, I, I I mean, I don't know. I, I I wouldn't even determine whether or not it's worthwhile by how many times they use it exactly, but. You know, we get the, there's some stuff that we'll go over. We it, got the knife. I mean, to be fair, the crown is made out of it, right? So, you know. uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the crown is. Right. Yeah, the crown is. Yeah. So anyway, uh, then to get the Eternium, he enslaved all the people in Kandak to to mine it as best as they can, and then they can collect it all up and make a big old crown, and then he can become the demon prince of the six demons of the ancient dark magic world and become the crown of Sabak. I don't know. It's all like a power thing, I guess. So he's a dick. That's what he's up to, and it's really sad. And then we 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 meet up this 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 a slave who manages to mine, and he's he he finds he's got a bit of eternium. He's like, oh my god! And then like he's like celebratory about it, and a few people notice, and then he realizes that, and then starts trying to hide it. And like a bunch of people start going, like, blah, 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 I want the eternium, I want it. And I was just like, why the if. If it's that rare and important that other slaves are probably willing to partially kill you to take the stuff that you found, like, the second you see it, you'd want to hide that shit. Be like, oh my god. Yeah. Because this, this is a death sentence if I don't do this correctly. Well, so it makes the Kandakians look kind of, you know, vicious. Well... I guess maybe they're desperate. It makes way something. less sense in about one more minute, considering something. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're obsessed at that point. They don't want it. But luckily, before a fight breaks out, some kid is like, let's not fight everybody. Let's not do that. 
The ones that he, yeah, tr this, he, he tried to hide it. No, 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 no. You gotta, you gotta listen, okay? So he sees it, and then he's like, "Ooh!" And then some other people see him seeing it, and then he's like, uh "Oh, oh, geez, oh God!" When I'm saying the first thing you should do if you see a glint of blue, is like, "Oh, fuck, 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 fuck!" Cover it up, cover it up. Okay, okay. If this is Eternium, holy shit. Okay, I need, I need to shove this down my my, my trouser hole. I need to get this out of here without anyone. You should oh, be that no. obsessed with it. This, this shit. What a weird work environment. Like, you're there for all time trying to dig up this blue shit, but the second you do, everyone might kill you for it. <laughs> so you're just like, hmm. This is a. This is they set down, up please. a really bizarre incentive structure that we'll get to in a minute. Yeah, we're. Yeah. <laughs> it's an incentive structure is the way to put it. Um. But yeah, the kid breaks it up, which is great. I guess they all really respect him and, and appreciate what he has to say. He's a very uh, assertive young man. I'm, I'm very happy that, that he was there in that uh, moment. Yeah, it's it's good that he was able to... like Imagine an oldish kind of man who has like the most valuable thing in existence in his hand, and he's surrounded by a bunch of very, very angry people who want to take that thing from him. And then the kid just shows up, says, no, don't do that. And then they all just stop and they don't care anymore. <laughs> He's that's very what that's, they do. Yeah, they do he, give he up pretty quick. Be. He must be. Yeah, he must be extremely persuasive. He must have rolled very high on that charisma check because everyone's is like, because yeah, if it was some okay. guy that like everyone and... was partial friends with or respected, some village elder even, you'd be like, oh, I can kind of see. It. But it's like it's just some kid. He's, he's <laughs> all right, fine. Uh, the kid is just like, yeah, chill out. We gotta, we can, we'll, we'll do the thing we gotta do, which is you take your Eternium to the local slave driver man, be like, hey, hey, Eternium, do I get my reward? That's that's how that works. He's a very proud he's a purveyor of slaves. Um, he is a he's a supervisor, really, like Jordi LaForge. And 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 the guy is like, uh, you, yeah, you can get your reward. And like the first thought I had, and I assume everyone else is like, is he gonna kill him? This feels like he's gonna kill him. Really? He's gonna kill him. Yeah. And Why then would you do that? he well, guts him and throws him off the, the little yeah. thing they're on. And so it's just like, so here's the problem: <laughs> like when, <laughs> when the reward for giving in the Eternium is I kill you, it's like. Uh, I don't know why there's an incentive at all for anybody to be desperate. <laughs> this is the kind of shit where if you find it, you're like, oh, fuck, 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 someone else take over. You, you can grab yeah. it. Um, I don't want to get stabbed. I don't want to have any intention drawn to me whatsoever, even though it is extremely beneficial for the person in charge. Yeah, like, no, if, it's, if you it's kill stupid in many ways. For wanting, yeah, it, I, it's that, it, it falls into that trope umbrella of bad guy kills his own men. You yeah, have this, this such an annoying trope. Yeah, it's this needlessly pointless cruelty that is counterproductive, not even unnecessary. It's just totally counterproductive where you're you're essentially punishing people who want to be rewarded in some way for giving you something that is of extreme and incredible importance. Yes. So you kill them just to show that they, oh, these guys are bad. These are the bad guys. When we when they get toasted <laughs> later, you won't feel bad about that at all. And yep. if you want to argue, no, they usually give rewards. This was the one time where they didn't. It's like, why ever do it? There that is makes never. It worse. Yeah, you should never. Ever, that just means it's a lottery, and you're like, I'm fucking risking getting gutted. Why would I do that? Uh, and yeah, that's the weird implication of that is that they almost always give a reward, but this time he was like, ah, nah, fuck nah, you, fuck you. <laughs> The fact that you would even ask for a reward is why you're. And I swear to God, death. if I were the king, and particularly evil still, and I found out this was happening, I'd be like, "You fucking idiots! No, every person who you finds a, a stone's worth <laughs> of that shit, send them to yeah. the like a happy place, whatever. Give them a really everybody, great reward." Yeah, everybody who facilitates me becoming invincible and powerful and strong and just better, reward those people, and the people who try to stop me and get in the way, punish them horrifically and publicly. I want you. You want to reward people helping you because you want them to and help you. And you might even be better off now having a public execution for that particular slave driver, just to be like, guys, yeah. the reward thing was serious. This guy fucked up. He doesn't work for me. Off with his head. He is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, words with the the slave driver union. This we'll is see just, what we can do. But this is not number. acceptable. If any more slave drivers gut you and throw you off a cliff, like just let us know. Please we'll take care of it. To HR. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, really, oh, really bad people. start. I was like, oh, God. Like, six Doing seconds already. Yeah. Boo. Said several reasons. 
Um, yeah, and then the the kid's dad, or well, the kid nearly gets in trouble, and the dad shows up. And he's like, oh, sorry, my kid's retarded. This is fine. Don't worry about it. Yay. And then leaves, and he's like, kid, you gotta keep your head down. You gotta not be a hero. And then the kid's like, well, if we had more heroes, we could have freedom. Like, yeah, freedom. Okay. <laughs> this is the, to me. I was just like, yeah, all right, fine, I guess. It's gonna <laughs> yeah, be, <laughs> it's gonna be Black Adam at some point, I guess. Feel big and rockish. Um, big and rockish is yeah. That's, so that's, gets, that kind of accurately describes him. He's big and rockish. Gets all into it, and then he's like, rah, and runs and just grabs the Eternium off the guard, who you would have thought would have been covered in that shit, you know, because that. Whatever, it's fine. And and then uh, he like manages to outsmart all the guards and they're all like falling over each other trying to capture him until he gets to the top of a little hill and he's like, Rejoice everyone, I am holding the Eternium and they all like they're all like cheering. And then he gets taken away for execution, which is what I was expecting would happen. I wasn't sure what was going on. You know? It's like I did it. Yeah, you 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 grabbed it so that you could run away a bit. And I guess then, he's trying to give him hope. He's like, I, I'm, I'm holding the rock of the souls of evil. Look, demons. here's the thing that's, here's the thing that's gonna give the tyrant king what's, like invincibility. I have it, everyone. What's the connection with Eternium and the evil demons of un the underworld, the six demons? Because you know it was really well explained in Rings of Power how Mithril is both good and evil because of Balrog and a prince. Hit a tree that was hit by lightning because it's strong and unyielding like evil. Yes, yeah. yes. But in this, they don't really give you much in terms of just. No. Uh, it's a material that the real, the evil people want you to make a crown out of. You're like, okay. It's, it's kind of kryptonite mm. a little bit sometimes. Yes, there is a moment. Kind of vibranium other times. It's kind of. You, you know, it's a conductor of evil energy. Yeah. Very. Think about true. that. Yeah, it seems yeah. to be only evil. Like, mm. I don't know if the good guys can make use of it. It doesn't seem like they can in the movie, do they? Um, they don't make don't use of it, so. no, but they should, because it's incredible, and it can make you do some incredible things, uh, as we see. Yeah. And it's the only thing that seemingly can kill Black Adam, so... Might want to hang on to it. <laughs> um, so yeah, he does that, and he's taken away, and then they're about to kill him, and the wizards from Shazam are like, Shazam! Blah, 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 and they, they snatch him up, and they give him powers, and then it, it ends with the, like he then took out the king, and all was well in Kandak. And it's it's very That's much good. like, hmm, that was a bit of a rushed ending. I wonder if there's more to that. And yeah. It's like, oh, maybe there will be. But then oh, they're like, oh fast forward to today, and Kandak has been taken over by like international mercenaries. And it's just like, oh. And that's well, why they're playing the first song, yeah. Smash and Pumpkins. And like, <laughs> the inter gang occupy Kandak with tech that can like make them teleport and crank up to speeds on the little flying motorcycles oh, that are God. basically astronomical. Like, it's inhuman. I don't think you can survive it, even if. <laughs> we'll it's, get to that it's part. Pretty, it's quite something to just introduce into the world that there yeah, is there's um, there's international mercenaries so powerful that they could control an entire country and that they have essentially magical technology. It's seriously, they just dump all of this on you after telling you that there's demon princes that are trying to get a, a crown from a particular bloodline in order to raise hell on earth or something. And it's just like, oh my god, what are you wow, doing? <laughs> Us all at once. Right? Yep, it's all dumped and, and on you. Not only strong elements, but they're like significant in terms of implications on a world that hasn't acknowledged the existence of Kandak, or the fact that it had like a great champion in the past who had superpowers, or yeah, that you've got like a private military company that's taken over a sovereign state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, just like all... yeah, none of that. Like the the military mercenary people taking over this sovereign state. Well, That's not clear at all. Um, also, inter gang is a really stupid name. It's from also, the comics. Yeah, also they're called so. inter gang. Yes, like, right, we're um, an international gang. <laughs> it's like what? What, what should we call ourselves? We're very inclusive and diverse. I didn't even. I don't know. What... I don't think if you're operating at that level, I feel like you're not calling yourself something gang. Sounds... No, and gang gang. <laughs> it's like. Um, when, uh, in, uh, what is it? I think it's Justice League, when, when Wonder Woman grabs that guy, the terrorist, and has the lasso of truth around him, 
and she says, who are you? Like, what do you work for? Whatever. He says, we're a gang of reactionary terrorists. <laughs> it's like, I don't think you would describe yourself that way if you were in that group. I don't know if you were call yourself or an a international gang. gang. Yeah, I don't know. We're an international gang that. of mercenaries. Oh, that was brilliant. Yeah, all right. Okay. So we zoom into like a uh, old part of Kandak where there's a check going for the vehicles. There's a vehicle check. They, I guess, the intergang check your vehicle for um, stuff. I don't. I'm not even sure. I don't know what their laws are, but they, they, you can't be smuggling something. Certain things. And um, as he's doing it, a little kid tries to go past the guy on a skateboard, and uh, that that kid is is actually the person who narrated the opening. And I think just from those few bits of narration he did, Rags, you were already like, "Why is this terrible actor that speaking?" Was, it was one of my <laughs> first, if not the first, criticism I made was as all of this backstory was being introduced. I said, "Wow, I hate this narrator's voice so much." Yeah. <laughs> little did I know. Little did I know mm -hmm. that the character narrating it would be a consistent, extremely annoying element of the film that would pop up insistently for well, the so, rest of it. You know, as if you didn't have reason to not like him. He, he, he like, pushes the guy and then he's just like, get out of here, stupid kid. You gotta, gotta wait to be checked. And then he's like, I'm on a skateboard. And he's like, if it has wheels, it's gotta be checked. And then the kid says, you know what? You're a neo-imperialist from halfway around the world, here to steal my country's natural resources, strip mine my sacred lands, pollute our water, repress our heritage, and make us wait in lines all day. It, it's such a, like, I'm sorry, yes. what? <laughs> like, and he yes, just says, queen, Chad, slay. yes. <laughs> it, I, I was legit like, oh god, cringe. <laughs> like, what, what is yeah. this fucking ten-year-old lecturing me on? <laughs> what is this? This 10-year-old yeah. skateboarder, he's, he seems like a time traveler transplanted him from the 90s. He's got a skateboard <laughs> and he ties his sweater around his waist yeah, yeah. and, he's, and he's, he's skateboarding around all the bad men and he gets away and he holds on to the truck on a skateboard to go even faster and he <laughs> wants to be cool and part of things. And I'm like, oh my god, it's a, it, can we just call him the skateboard kid? I don't know, we can call him something. Yeah. I'm gonna call him the kid. Let's call him. Yeah. Skateboard if kid is too long, Rex. The skate? No, it isn't. I said the it is, so it is kid. now. No, it isn't. The skateboard kid is not only perfectly king of long. lengthy. I decide. No, it's not only perfectly length. Well, then you'd like it because it's longer. No, that's not how long works. How does it work? If you can, he's a self-hating. Dare I remind you of? I'm thinking of ending things. Too long. That was movie was long. <laughs> or was, was it too long, long or did it just feel like it went on forever? There is, it's, it's, remember, girth, very important. It's Goyth. wide, more Goyth. than long. Mm. See, so yeah, it was a bit cringe, but uh, he, by annoying the guy, the guy is like, ah, oh, fuck it, this car, you can go, you can go. And I remember thinking, Okay, so it was cringe that he said all that because he's like 10. Also, the, it's pretty convenient that that car now gets away with it when they clearly, because one of them was like had a gun and they were ready to shoot the guy if he'd checked the back, I guess. So I was like, wow. But then it turns out he's the son of the person that's being smuggled in the car and she's like hyper into the politics. And so she's probably fed the shit out of him with all of this constantly. And that's why he's repeating it without even understanding probably any of it. So, you know, I was like, so he, I was like taking two issues and then I was like, actually. Okay, fine. Fine for both of them. I think that the dialogue is a little bit cringe in-universe, is kind of what I'm getting at. Yeah, it is cringe in-universe. It's cringe in all universes. Across the multiverse, <laughs> it is cringe. It's I am cringe saying in every universe. multiversal <laughs> constant that I cringe. actually retract the criticism, is what I'm trying to get at. That it was gross, but then I was like, oh, I guess that's maybe how that character would say and what he would do when his mum is, like, obsessed just, with all this. Y yeah, Except he that gets the movie absolved agrees. of that. I, well, I, yes, the movie definitely agrees with his sentiment, but I can just say, like, I, I'm saying that it lines up that he'd probably say all that shit, basically. Yeah, uh, I get what you mean. I think it's, I think it's kind of strange how pointed the movie wants to be with some political, social commentary. Yet, but like, it, this is an invented country. And you never find out why Intergang are here, except the, no. like, obviously the just one guy from the, the resources. Crown. But. Okay. <laughs> They're here to pollute the water, Muller. That's why Fine. they came. Fine, you're gonna pollute the water. Steal their natural resources, Muller. Strip mine the lands for Eternium to make the evil crown for the demon princes to ultimately have hell ri Yeah. 
Hell yes. Yeah. I my I think I I don't like the kid not just because of everything, but because he <laughs> seems to be extremely stupid in going up to this armed angry yes. guard who's check at this checkpoint stopping people and being like, beep, beep, beep. "Mom said it's my turn." And Radical. Fuck. You're not my real dad. Radical tubular. Whoa, you're the best friend I ever had. Talking wise, crack and skateboard. And he's extremely <laughs> annoying, and you hate him, and you just want him to. You just want him. To, you. I've never so quickly sided with an international gang of mercenaries so quickly. <laughs> if this is what the people of Kandak produce, I am pro colonization. God, <laughs> someone um, clip that. He's just so annoying and, and stupid. Why would you do this? I like, I, yeah, I get I, you're a kid, you're headstrong, and you think that you're invincible, but at what point do you go, ah, the angry men with guns, I shouldn't go up and just harass them constantly, especially I if mean, I come through this checkpoint over and over, and I have to deal with him again the next time I want to go this way. He makes a very conscious decision in relation to their fates in about half an hour from now in movie, so... He is, he was, yes, he does. Yeah, you know, he's an interesting little character, a kid. We'll see about that. We'll continue. We'll, we'll get back to him. But now, so real oh, quick, yeah. his ranting ends up being a distraction. What is not clear to me is whether the distraction was on purpose. I think he they didn't want him to get involved in any of this. He did that on his own volition, and it helped. So and he so the, knew that was them. Yeah, the and the guys, in the, he knows all the guys in the car, right? And and they were, I yeah, think yeah. even one of them says, like, good job, little man. And then she's like, you're not supposed to be anywhere near this shit, you fucking dumbo. You <laughs> fucking dumbo. Yeah, she says that, <laughs> one to one, that's the dialogue. Uh, she has a necklace, um, and one of them is like, wow, that would be worth a lot of money. Is it, is it magical? And she's like, no, it's unrefined Eternium. I remember thinking like it will be it will be magical when before. we refine it. I this is what I mean. I just like what 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 do you is it is it magic or is it tech? Not until it's re, not until it's refined. Yeah. If you ask somebody if something is magic and they say no, it's not refined. The implication is that when you refine it, it will become magical. magical. Yeah, it is. I was You're very right. just oh, like right. okay, <laughs> like whatever. Let's just keep going because. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Uh, I'm sure it'll come up in a moment. So, um, yeah, the the mining operation is, like, huge. I guess they're looking for the Eternium as much as they can to build another crown. I, I, I or Because she's currently looking for the old crown that, that was mentioned in the opening, but they're all there to mine Eternium to make stuff and things. They can't make another crown, but they do want the crown. Right? On yes. the old crown, right? The, yeah, was... well, c what I'm trying to say is, like, couldn't they just make another crown? It's like, oh, maybe they don't have the crown blueprints. They don't know how to make I... the crown. So maybe the I magic legit... is lost. I don't know. I thought because they, they were seemed... just mining okay. the Eternium because it was, like... It's just a good know, resource, cool but, like... Resource, but their yeah. leader wants the crown, right? Leader man wants the I crown. Th is Yeah. I think you have to yeah. assume that they couldn't just take all the Eternium they have powering their magical bikes and make a crown out of that, that somehow they don't have well, That's that what ability. I'm saying, like, I guess they just don't know yeah. how to make the crown. Yeah, they don't have the magics, I guess. Some people are saying, like, there's only one crown, right? And it's like, well, I don't know, is there? Is, can you make more than one crown, or are you not allowed? Whatever. <laughs> it's fine. Multiple crowns? Can you, yeah. Can you just, it's like a video game, can you just pump out crowns and give them to all of your pawns and your guys so they're all <laughs> invincible? Just crank out those crowns! Um, so, a group of heroes reach, I don't even know if there are heroes at this point, it's kind of unclear. They, they, she says, we're trying to get to the crown because it's so powerful. And then some other guy is like, so powerful, so so who should have it? And then she's like, no one should have it. We need to we need to find it so that we can make it so that no one has it. Uh, you know, like, put it in a secret place. In a ditch somewhere, maybe. Okay. Um, it's it's kind of weird, thinking back on the character, you wonder if that character would be like, oh, the crown, we can use this to free Kandak. Because she's a big, like, revolutionary type, and she wants to free her yeah, it's almost, country. Well, it gets so you're really like, awkward hmm. later on, because I guess we're jumping ahead. She more or less endorses Black Adam and, like, his methodology. She is pro-violence. Yeah. She is very um, pro-violence. Uh, she claims pro otherwise, but yes. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> to the point that she chastises Hawkman, who, like, again, jump at the gun. Hawkman is like super paragon. Uh, he doesn't kill people. 
He's like pretty quintessential hero guy, and she often chastises him about how Black Adam's methods. We are jumping too are, far ahead. Uh... Well, it's just <laughs> I cut this off. Out, we haven't even you... gotten to just society at all. So boo. We we haven't, but it's just it, once once you mention that she, it's like yeah that she wouldn't even consider using the crown. It's like that's interesting considering how she. I'd say it's even on, like, more yes. layers of weird because this has nothing to do with Kandak's situation. This is just another no, it, thing she's up to. She just wants to make sure no one can yeah. find this crown because it's powerful. That's got nothing to do with her goals politically. It just so happens that this facilitates something for her. Uh, it's very strange when you zoom out and you know how the whole film goes. This is just a side quest she's got going about the crown. A side quest that ends up becoming the main quest. Oh, for sure, yeah. Uh, so she she's walking through and she she finds some stuff to read and and she just, she just picks a random thing and just starts reading. She says, "Men were given the gift of magic, but their hearts were too easily corrupted. The ultimate power was banished from the earth and hidden until now." Men, they've had magic beforehand. Fuck off. I mean, I was gonna say like, men were given the gift of magic. Is she referring to Eternium? Uh, maybe is she talking about the wizards, the Shazam wizards? Uh, so this is my issue, like, is Eternium magic, and if yes, then uh, that's, it's only in Kandak, but then that discounts all the other magical creatures that exist in the DCU already. And if it is and, known that Eternium yeah. is, is magic, why there aren't we go. the Justice League, why aren't they, like, or the Justice Society? Thing, Everybody, or the rest of the world. Why isn't Waller obsessed with Eternium? That shit is amazing. Yeah. yeah. She's, uh, she, and she likes, I mean, and remember, like, the Enchantress, that was like hyper magic, right? Yeah. Like, in, in the first yeah, Suicide Squad. Yeah. So, so, like, yeah, yeah just, just trying to lay out some form of a timeline here. Like, it's been, Eternium's amazing and it's been around forever. And no one gives a shit. <laughs> no one does give a shit, even though. It about it. You can make flying motorcycles that can, like, teleport in super yeah. speed across the planet to China. So, like, in, 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 uh, in Marvel, like, at the very least, vibranium was, like, an element that was acknowledged pretty early on. Of course, there's still plenty of problems with, yeah, like, introducing still... Wakanda and everything. But, like, at the very least, it was at least a named element that was, like, relevant to the story before... The doors got sort of blown open with uh, Black Panther, like with introducing that here. It's just come out of nowhere. It's, it's totally new. So anyway, you got Lady, Guy 1 and Guy 2. Guy 2 goes missing. Guy 1's like, I'm going to go find him. And then Guy 2 comes back. and Guy 1's missing now. And it's like, wait, what happened to Guy 1? And then we see that Guy 1 was thrown off something and he lands and he's like, bleh, and nearly dead. And it's like, oh no. And then when she asked Guy 2 what happened to Guy 1, he's like, he went to get some fresh air. Like, oh, you killed him, I guess, is the implication uh, there. So Guy 2 is actually bad guy. Yeah, and Guy 1 is now dead as, and all we got left, there's also yeah. Chungus Guy in car. He's, he's also there, he's an uncle, <laughs> Uncle Chungus. Yeah. Uh, I like Uncle Chungus. Chungus. I, I, he is henceforth Uncle Chungus. I, 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 I'm okay with that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, fine with that. I, I approve. So then, um, there, are, uh, she finds the crown. The crown is just, it's just this room, and there's two rocks, and the crown is between them, floating, and it's kind of like, oh, okay, it's there. There it is. Um. Uh, but bef uh, they're, they're reading some stuff around the area, and she spots something that says, Speak not his power, so he may suffer a dreamless sleep for all eternity. Now, before you say anything, I just want to read that again. Speak not his power, so he may suffer a dreamless sleep for all eternity. It, without any context, what would you conclude from that if you were reading it? And that's just death, isn't it? <laughs> like... Uh, he's either dead or equivalent of dead, but he can be revived if you speak his power. Yeah, so yeah. actually what I was aiming for was just, oh man, so whoever wrote this wants this other person to suffer. The word suffer is in there. And yeah, then, suffer, which is odd considering what we later discover about who arranged this. Well, that's not where I was going with that, actually. So she says... I think suffer is, I, I think suffer also will mean allow, right? Oh. Um, so he may suffer a dreamless sleep for all eternity? 
to to a, like I to guess. allow or per, to permit something. I know what you're, you're like, saying, do not, but I'm, do not suffer. I don't do, think do not suffer a witch to live. Do not allow a witch to live or permit a witch to live. Suffer also means those things, so it gets a bit of a pass. In fact, I, th I think it technically gets one. But I, suffer I, is strong language. So, well, so but we have the context to know that the person who inscribed that legit wants him to suffer. Because they think of him as like an awful, awful person, right? Um, kind of, but a dreamless sleep is essentially putting someone on pause. So that's not suffering. And if they wanted to torture Well, wouldn't it be I dependent on the could, wizard's right? definition of that? I, I suppose technically, but that would be a bizarre form of torture to literally make it to where they're not feeling anything or even, even are in a state of really knowing that they even exist. Um, it's like anesthesia. But like, I, oh, I, I guess I agree so, with you. but I don't... Yeah, I, it could be, but I don't think just, that's Just what keep in mind, for. Vengeful Wizard Man put him here and wants him to stay here, and the message is... What I'm trying to really get at is that message sounds like a deterrent of sorts slash a warning slash a explanation of there's a person here and they should be here. I mean, the, the command yeah. is speak not his power, like the and then so that he may suffer a dreamless sleep for all eternity. Um, the fact that that's a condition at all, that he has a release condition. Yeah, yeah. Instead of, we'll be the ones to decide when he has been on pause for long enough. Well, yeah, it's, In any case. basically telling somebody who shows up, hey, here's how you sort of wake him up. And sure get would be there. a shame if you spoke <laughs> his power and woke him up. That would be bad Not if like you did we, that. I guess uh, maybe they wrote it as a reminder for themselves. I like, swear to oh, God. Fuck, how do we get him out? I <laughs> might actually make my first ruling for a ban that goes beyond spam. Anyone who says move on, I fucking ban you. <laughs> We're having a <laughs> chat right now. Shut the fuck up. So the reason why I'm bringing this all up, and I'm interested in what everyone had to say there, is because the thing that she says immediately after reading this is, wow, so Kandak really did have a hero. I think that is uh, absolutely I, bizarre I that she a, says that. Yeah. That's a very big leap. It's not even... Mm. Is it a stretch when it's literally not at all connected? Yeah, it's like... I, well, I, was, I, was, being, I was being a little bit... Um, no, that was a genuine question because I I would say stretch but I, too, but then I was like, an wait, extreme stretch. Like you would have to like if you if she came up to me and said, oh, this means if if we're there and she reads that inscription and says, rags, who because you're you're with me here, we're buds. <laughs> I this means do not so yeah that's that's that that means that was Kondok's hero. I'm like, first off, you have a <laughs> fucked up version of what hero is. What I guess she actually does, but also um. Like what? What makes you think that this isn't some evil, terrible demon yeah, imprisoned here? Someone might try to argue ago. he's aware of some of the Kandak law or whatever, and that there was an ancient hero or whatever. But like, why would you conclude that the hero is 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 here, and that it says, "Speak not his power, so he may suffer a dreamless sleep for all eternity"? That just to me, I'm just like, that's... especially well, this is where the crown thing. was. The crown exactly. was unambiguously Yeah, bad. this could yeah, be the well, king Anka Tootle or whatever his name yeah. is. It could be the entity itself. The evil entity is locked here. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, not, I just thought it was really strange. It, 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 well, say, the, it's funny, because, yeah, we all said it's a stretch, but really it's like a total non sequitur. Yes. Like, it's it's, it's totally unrelated. I would, it's, um, okay, so it's, it's, another thing that's odd about it to me is that she's surprised the fact that they had a hero is real, even though it's a legend that she's clearly aware of, and there's a statue based after him. But like, I guess hypothetically, she didn't know if that was real or just a myth. But she's not surprised at all that the crown is real and just floating here. Yeah, <laughs> like, <magic laughs> that's a good point. That's not that weird. But oh my god, they did have a hero. Oh my gosh. Can the reason I guess she says it isn't yeah. because she was prompted by that line. It's so that he can say the line in response, which is, um, "If he's a hero, then why, why did they bury him here?" You know, because because ah, he's not like other heroes. Exactly, because the film tries to play for a little bit with the idea that he's the hero that everyone foretold. He's the, but he keeps, you know, every time that's brought up, he's it's, like, hmm. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a fair question to ask. If he's a hero, how come he's how come he's buried here? I think there are plenty of reasons one baddies... could have buried him there as an actual hero. Yeah, I think it's weird. I think so too. After the message is read. Yeah. Correct. Um. And the, yeah, it's just to prompt him to say that to make us go, "Oh look, this, oh Jesus, he's not really, this ain't your grandpa, Superman." <laughs> Gonna be <laughs> this is this is Black Adam. He will fuck you up.
So she grabs the crown. He'll murder on the whim of a child. Uh, Le colored atom. But then mercenaries arrive. Oh no, Ooh. they're all here. And they've got a, uh, Uncle Chongus is a brother. So they're like, we're going to shoot him unless you give up the crown. Five, four, three, two, one. And then she goes, wait. And then she, she gives the crown. And I did think it was, it got a smirk out of me that he was like, you let them get to one? I was yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, because yeah, I agree with him. I would be like, if you're gonna yeah. give it up, why the hell did you cut off at one? <laughs> like, Jesus. Because he's gonna do that. He's gonna do that dick thing that villains do, where before they get to the end of the countdown, they shoot anyway. Um, I, I, I just, I, I think it's more common that they actually do count down, but then they don't shoot at one. They, they, yeah. for some reason, they say one and wait. <laughs> like, yeah. or, it, it, well, because you have to get from one to zero, because the countdown ends at zero. So there's, you got to cross from, you got to get to the one, and then you got to get to the You'd be surprised how many villains don't follow that rule. There are some out there. But, that's, but they're wrong. They're wrong. No, you, don't, you don't have to say zero. The shot is the zero. Yeah, the shot is the zero, but they're counting down in between the one and the zero. But not, not they're not saying 0. 0.7, 0. 0.6, 0. 0.5. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's implied by the pause between one and the gunshot. I need I to make a school for villains. Yes. I need to start a. I need to a, a, a like a a doctor professor Rags's uh, college for the nefariously inclined or something like that. And oh I well, need to tell them how to be generally nefarious. Interesting, you bring up villains doing doing silly villain things because they they've won now. They've got the crown. They've got the girl. They've got everything they want, and they're gonna execute them too. Because fuck it, whatever. And they, they drop it down on their knees and they're about and they say any last words. And unfortunately for the the villains, she's standing right on Black Adam's little Just, little thing. This and, is, no. and it'll be like introduction course. This is why in, in Professor Ragnar's School for the Nefariously Inclined, <laughs> one of the first lessons is you don't give the heroes last words yes. or complicated death. You just fucking plug them. Yep. Just take the gun Kill and them. shoot them in the fucking head. <laughs> It's we're not here for ceremony, okay? You can do well, that when I'm, you take over the world. I mean, it's it's a it's a, it almost <laughs> feels like an ancient reference, but I just can't resist. Like you guys have seen Austin Powers, right? Mm. I actually have not. That's gonna be an EFAM movies one day because I fucking adore oh, those okay. movies. But I when Doctor Evil those, yeah. is like, put them into the chamber, and then uh, he's like, why don't you just shoot them? Why don't you just shoot them right now? I have a gun. Why don't you just shoot them? And he's just like. No, that that doesn't make any. Why would I shoot? No, they got, I'm gonna put them in an elaborate trap that involves mutated, ill-tempered sea bass, and and, then, <laughs> and like and that's going on. Then the doors start to close. He goes, "You're not you're not gonna watch. You're not, you're not gonna make sure that they die." And he goes, "No, I'm going to assume it all worked out." <laughs> like, why would I assume it goes wrong? <laughs> that is a fucking ancient movie that makes fun of tropes in movies, and it's no less relevant today. It's fucking great. But yeah, oh yeah, that's where he goes. Shh, shh. Um, that's good shit. We'll watch them. No worries. Well, EFAM movies. Someone said Cad now. Bane should take villain advice from Rags. Cad Bane Ugh. would have flung so fucking fast. He would, like, all of the Empire. I need to have a big, just a big online class so that all of them can tune in. Like, all right, first, first rule before you do any villainy. Basic marksmanship. <laughs> uh... So yeah, she she looks down and she just reads it and it says, "Mightiest of mortals, gods of god of gods, six immortal elders by name Shazam," and then he gets woken up. So if they just shot her, or if they dropped her to a different area, then there'd be no movie. Or if they just <laughs> turned her the other way and he was between, it's ah, oh, it's just the uh, yeah, it sucks. But all right, it well, sucks. It's so shit and lazy, and I hate. Big it. old lightning bolt. Woo! The rock is here. Look at him go. Wow. Oh my goodness. Woo. And then uh, some guy goes, what was that? And then evil guy says, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. And so I was like, wait, wait, wait. But he knows what so this is. Know. He knows about the Shazam stuff and he knows. What does he know? And why wouldn't he have yeah, desperately wanted to prevent things? He would, he would, if he knew about it, he would absolutely want nobody reading anything in that fucking place to, to make sure Makes they don't because I, I actually have no clue what is gained by having him say I like he recognizes it. I know that he's aware of like the his his bloodline's history, but I still think even in this moment he should be like, what the fuck? But I guess yeah, he's already clued on to exactly who that is, and uh, I don't know. I just thought maybe that he's taken it real well. I guess. 
Um, so then, then the, they put a gun to the rock, and they're like, "You, you big old, you, you're a bad." And then he kills them all. Um, but... He instantly kills everyone, which is like the first guy. Yeah. I'm like, I don't. Why did you actually kill him? I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of. I guess he's just he. Why are you, this? You, you wake up from this slumber, and you have just some guy pointing this weird object at you. You have no idea what it is, of course, because. Yes. You are you know, this ancient, this this dumbass, and so you have no idea what it is, and you just instantly grab the guy and fry him in your hands. It's like, why? Why'd you do that? Why actually? Yeah. Why? So I, I, I was unclear on that. Even even by the time I finished the movie, what did he know about that scenario when he was spawned there? Did he know anything, or was fuck it? All. I think I think it's fuck all, right? He and some guy yeah. points a gun at him, which he apparently recognizes as lethal, but lethal not to him. It wouldn't do anything to him. <laughs> also, yeah, also it's it's not lethal I mean. to like, him. Also, you can't he win know what a gun is because either you shouldn't recognize it, but even if you do, you should already know it won't do anything to you. So, yeah, he vaporizes him, and it's just kind of like, okay, um. It, it uh, kind of gave me Shang Tsung vibes, where like a, an ancient magical entity comes out of hibernation and would like suck the life force out of the nearest living thing. Except for the fact that this is not how the Shazam powers work, so I've got no fucking clue why you decided to Shang Tsung that guy when it doesn't actually benefit you in any way. It seems like the writers were aware of that trope and knew that you know, oh, when magical people who are bad come out, they tend to kill the first thing that's near them, not realizing that when that trope is employed, normally it's because that's part of their power set, rather than it just being like, a oh my god, he's so evil, he just melted that man, oh my he god. He just instantly killed someone. I was like, yeah, but uh, the, why, though? And again, you, you, you get the whole vibe of like, I get it, he's not like... Else, yeah, he's, like, he sure is bad. <laughs> he's, but he'll kill people. There he goes. Why wouldn't like, he assume that they are the ones that awoke him? I don't know. He's very. I don't know. Even when they're shooting their guns at him and it's just bouncing off and having like zero effect, you'd think it would. Wouldn't it be more fun for him to be like, what? Just like he has no, like he doesn't. He has any concept for this. It's like you're showering me with pieces of hard stuff that I don't. I don't know what is this. Like, is this worship? I don't. What is happening? <laughs> he's not very inquisitive. I would say. He, well, he just the, the way they do movie. is he seems to understand. He says like immediately, your magic is weak, and it's like. Well, why would you interpret it as damage if if it does zero damage instead of anything? I don't know. Fine, I guess. He's just clicking on real fast. He knows what's going on. I guess he knows that that was supposed to kill him, but didn't somehow. Sure. Well, and then then a rock nearly falls on the lady, and he saves her as well. And it's like so. He's managed to discern a difference between this group of people as well. Well, yeah, he looked at their skin color. Oh. <laughs> Because they're all, like, British as well, those mercenaries, aren't they? Or, um... For being someone who lived... He must... If this is before the pyramids, he must be... God, like, one, two, three... Like, Five thousand years old or something crazy like that. He's extremely accepting of different cultures and races. <laughs> he also... Especially he'll, I guess that gives him an excuse to not say the N-word, though. Because that's what you really want to do if you want to show that your character is edgy. Have him say the N-word, and then I'll, I'll believe you. But Rags, how would he know what the N-word is? That's what I'm saying. He gets a pass. He gets the N-word pass. <laughs> but his N-word pass is that he's excused for not saying it. It's, it's not that he is allowed to. Black Adam, you see, he breaks all the rules. Um... <laughs> So then they're like, send everything backup wise. Okay, and then Black Adam just sort of walks out of the mountain. Um as he Did can. you oh did you say um if that one soldier knew who this was, why did they even bother trying to Oh well like, I mean shoot him and, I can understand uh, a like panicked him? guy who doesn't know what's going on calling in backup, I guess. Um But like the main leader man, yeah, he should probably be like, everyone stop. This this person is literally like Superman. There's no point. But he didn't say anything, so I don't know. Uh, maybe he's still trying to come across as not evil, so he couldn't give orders, even yeah, though maybe. he gives that up pretty quick. So, um, so they send 
rockets, soldiers, tanks, helicopters, everything to attack him, and he just kills all of it to paint it black, and I thought it was cringe. I thought it was big old It was all cringe. cringe. All of his Very fights cringe. were cringe. You guys yeah, may have seen clips of it. Him. You may have seen clips of it online where he does a little clap and it blows everything up. People, <laughs> people are making fun of that. It looks pretty dumb. Yeah. It's just, I know that the he's invincible. There's nothing they could do. He could effortlessly kill all of them. And I just, I'm like, oh, I kind of feel bad for all these soldier guys. Like, I'm not convinced that they're bad. Mm -hmm. They're just, like, I don't even, it's kind of, and he's just, just wiping them out. And I'm like, oh, man, these poor guys. But, um, oh boy, I don't think I agree with that. Fuck cool. those guys. They they're attacking everybody. They they. Oh yeah, they did. This is after they. Yeah, this is after they shot the people. And, and to be fair, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. he does that, his little. Yeah, yeah, he floats yeah, out, and then they fire rockets and machine guns and stuff. I, I don't know. I guess it's just like. Yeah, I guess they sort. Yeah, I guess you know they. Could, yeah. So Still, it, it's boring either way. It was uninteresting. <laughs> I know the scene was supposed to show how incredibly cool he is, but it's just cringe. That's um, classic. Are you goofy. <laughs> Part of what makes it goofy, I found, was his expressions throughout the whole scene. They're like he was kind of like confused. Perplexed, yeah, he looks I confused, <laughs> curious, sometimes. And yet he and... kind of knows exactly what to do with rockets and stuff. Even exactly, this is totally unfamiliar. I don't get the sense at all, and that's kind of confusing. With the like, isn't this badass? With a guy who's like, huh? Is it, okay. Oh, I'll we'll put this here. Hmm. What? Oh, there they go. Haha, <laughs> You're dead. And then just also, he never moves this fast again in the movie. No. Well, I think he, I think he does. I think he does. Uh, yeah. A couple of times, I but there, know. there are times where he should have and doesn't. We'll get to them as well. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. That's that's probably more uh, apt. To um, the I'm fucking exhausted of hearing "Paint It Black" in media. Uh, I feel bad because I like the song a lot, but it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it is overused. Yeah. Not only that, but they kind of they they butcher the song in the actual edit. Oh yeah, like, they mix they it down into whole sections. Yeah. You can tell they want to get to the parts of the song. They don't care about how it like they start it up, which everyone likes to start, and then they just skip immediately to like <laughs> the explosions yeah. match. It's like <laughs> no, yeah, no, yeah, no, whatever. Yeah. Uh. Oh yeah, he, uh, he, I just he, found it cringe because it's just like, oh, paint it black, get it black, Adam, paint it black, uh, uh, and I'm just like, mm -hmm. it's suicide Don't squad yourself. again. Yeah, it's, well, it's funny. It's, yeah. um, that's what Call of Duty, like Black Ops, the series, has used a lot of songs that just have the word black in them because it's like, ah, see, Black Ops. Because I'm pretty sure they use this for one of the trailers, this song, and it's like, ah, see, yeah, Black Ops. You know, Except I kind of like it. I don't like it here. Westworld was recently cancelled. Season 1 had a cover of Painted Black that yeah. was like piano. I liked that. That was nice. That was pretty cool. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a really good end credits song to Full Metal Jacket. That's probably the best use of it in the movie as far as I'm concerned. Great. God, that must have a really long Wikipedia list, right? Like, how many <laughs> yeah. times it's been fucking used. Anyway... Uh, he walks up to our uh, Uncle Chungus and lady who are in van and have crown, and uh, they start winding up their windows. I think that's in the trailer. Um, this is kind of a fine joke. Yeah, that was a there. There's there's a number of mildly amusing things in this movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. So like, oh, they like they'll they'll get us. They'll make you go. Hmm. They like smile a little bit, but yeah. And then Uncle Chung is like, look out! And a uh, guy fires a rocket with Eternium flames in it, and it actually fucks Black Adam up. And the first thought everyone has is, hey, why didn't you open with it? <laughs> that, was, that, was, that, was, that was what I said when we watched it. Yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, you should have you you started with this. This is what you should have begun the engagement with, especially if you knew that this was what you're going to be potentially fighting mm -hmm. i think the why guy, didn't you open Mayo with that did. is one of the most common this, this that, that's like an umbrella like flaw for movie or just <laughs> yeah, writing yeah. why didn't you open with that every fucking time because because the fight scene's got to start out in a particular way and end a particular way that's why and you're like okay i'm telling you, you can man, do it you, you can do it a desperation is a common way to do it um but these guys just start out it's it's your it, rocket it's, it's one super it's bad he's annihilate everybody you're gonna want to fucking use it he destroyed two helicopters. Those those things are fucking insanely expensive to when maintain. When he's eating the normal rockets, so... 
Yeah. <laughs> That's like, like you've only got one more one. thing to even try. Yeah, all right. Anyway, uh, so, but then we get another uh, moment of, Rise, you really need to open this school for villains, okay? He's, uh, <laughs> th we have our, like, I think it's the one of the British guys. He's like, eh, bleh, I'm dying. Oh. And then um, uh, Evil Man, who was a good man, he walks up to him and he's like, I told you to make it look real, not to actually hit me, and then shoots him and kills him. So, so like, yeah, he's, he's we, literally we, killing his it. own man because he made it look too real. <laughs> what a dick. It's, it's just like, I'm just like, oh, fuck uh, off. Why, like, why would anyone ever work for you? You're you a under prick. Any illusions, just in case you were under any illusions that he wasn't evil. I don't know. <laughs> it's such a trope. I'm it's not even it. though, but that's the thing. They want you to come away from thinking like, ooh, how evil. But I just come away thinking like, oh, he's an idiot. You just yeah. a d you're just a dumbass, and you're gonna mm -hmm. get stabbed in the back any day by people who don't want to put up with your shit. Ooh, that's annoying. Um, so that's... you know, I'll say who's way better. I there are multiple. One of the things that's I guess I started talking about it, but one of the things I really like about Casablanca is Ooh. how there are antagonistic characters that are very interesting and who that you that you like to see that have good dialogue and behave intelligently people who are <gasps> not good but you know that you were like oh like i mm. you watch them and it's like oh man they knew how to write literally as world war ii was happening they were writing these characters and here we are like nah just have them shoot the guy to show he's evil that's 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 concise that'll save us time and talent with writing it was time to meet the Justice you know, you, Society. Do you know you can be evil and like still value your men as like nope. resources that nope. you can use? Exactly, yeah. Um, we see Walla. She's showing up again. She seems to be one of the unifying elements that argues <laughs> that this <laughs> is an actual connected series of soft. movies. Amazing. Thanks for using the soft art, you know. Um, she says, like, just society, go, take down Black Adam, and it's such a, like, it's whiplash enough for someone like me, but anybody who's, like, the average person, it's like, just, is that, is that the, the one Is that a thing? The Batman? Is, is, yeah, what's going on here? What yeah, was it? I, it was so disorienting for me that I was like, wait, was the Justice League Marvel? Like, I, it, it me <laughs> <out so much. laughs> we have the Justice, yeah, because you think they, they wouldn't have the Justice League and the Justice Society because that would be a funny <laughs> meme, right? Yeah. They wouldn't actually do that. That would be crazy. But yeah, they, uh, you see, and how, they do it. How it's meant to work. Uh, as as uh, I, I think Meme kind of alluded to it earlier, but they, they do it in such a way that's like, you've had their movies already. And it's like, but I haven't. I haven't had their movie. I don't... This is... This little, you know, like when Guardians get... They show up get, like we know them. Yeah, the Guardians, when they show up in Infinity War, it's kind of the same treatment. But like, yeah, there's there's like movies for them that you can watch uh, and that you would have... There's an implication that you probably should check them out before seeing Infinity War because it's a big ensemble movie. But yeah, with this one, it's just like... So, who's in the team? And he starts, like, labeling them as if there's not a set team, I guess. He's just, you just pick whoever you want to, to, to assemble it for whatever job you've got at the time. Um, and they're going after someone who they, from the limited information they have, is basically Superman. And they're taking, um, well, I guess we, we can go through them one by one, right? So the first person is Cyclone. Um, and he lists her as, like, she's got wind manipulation and she's really smart. Yeah. So that's probably not worthwhile. Um, maybe keep her on the ship, but manipulating wind, that's really not going to do much against Superman. We're going to need something different. Yeah, you don't want to get her killed because... Yeah, and then you're like, okay, number two, uh, Atom Smasher. He can grow really big. Like, yeah, again, Superman's I probably going to annihilate him... him, though. I guess that makes him super resilient, but I guess not because he gets punched out. And he gets yeah, knocked out. He gets out punched out. And, so, eh. and then she, she, she her response is they, they seem green. You know, what else have you got? And, and I was just kind of like, oh, yeah, just FYI, this is the first time they've been on a mission, both of them. They fight in Superman equivalent. This is a trial by fire organization. I don't remotely it understand even seem like this. It is. It doesn't seem like it is an organization. I don't know how they're called a the society. They seem like they throw people together 
kind of yeah like what was so if they didn't have these two joining recently then is it just two of them that have just made yeah hawkman and dr fate we live in a society society. that's like a justice (laughs) yeah it's like a justice craigslist ad it's a bunny cop movie but that's that's like the, a help the, wanted. That's when this part gets funny, right? She's like, you know, do you have anyone else? And he's like, oh yeah, I got Doctor Fate, who has basically god powers. And I was like, well, that that's the <laughs> oh, guy you oh, need. That, <laughs> that's, that's maybe the, maybe that's lead good. with that. Yeah, <laughs> I'll lead with that. <laughs> uh, also, that's like, a promising start. <laughs> and then they don't they don't give you a rundown of Hawkman's powers because he's he's like the leader, I guess. Um, and it it would be they couldn't find a way to. Get that in without they'll they'll just show you it. Um, well, well, I suppose we can talk about that a little bit later. But yeah, you see Pierce Brosnan. He's got his little helmet, and he touches it, and then he sees a bunch of visions like do 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 explosion and Hawkman yelling. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the, the implication, of course, he sees things through his helmet. We get more information on that. I don't want to give any more than the film does, so that we can sort of take it for what it because. He's a comic guy. They're all comic peeps, but uh, depending on execution, you know, mm-hmm. I've heard different things. Um, so yeah, they say we're heading to Kandak to apprehend and contain a Class A rogue metahuman. Um, I, I, I guess that that would mean more if it was this was like a thing that had happened before and stuff. But it's whatever. It's it's just dialogue. We're gonna get to, to kind of move us through because. Yeah, we're trying to run a Suicide Squad movie, kind of, at the same time as a Origin movie. Because um, it kind of feels you know, that way, with Waller being in charge of it, too. Which yeah. I strikes me as really odd, considering that Hawkman is, like, your super, like, altruistic paragon. Yeah. And Waller, like, killed a bunch of our own people, remember? Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, she, and, and remember, she's a, a terrible, I mean, horrible she, murderer. She wanted to let, she wanted the, su- uh, the Suicide Squad to abandon that country, um, to be destroyed by Starro. Yeah. Why is she, why are they trying to make her, like, Nick Fury? I don't, I, like, I, I honestly thought it was because, be like, it's because it. they asked her and she agreed, like, and they were like, sweet, yeah, we can bind the films a bit better if and you come in. And it's the thing that can bind it. But the thing is, like, Nick Fury is obviously to some level duplicitous, but, like, Waller is pretty callous. He's a horrible person. Not, she's <laughs> evil, why yeah. Would she be, why would she be, like, why would the Justice Society, led by a very altruistic Hawkman, why would he cooperate with her at all? Why, he, he, surely well, he, he wouldn't, she kills her. her own people. Yeah, like, he doesn't, because, I mean, we're jumping the gun, he doesn't like Black Adam. <laughs> um, why would he like her when she's when she's killed in her own people and doing all these crazy evil things? And Waller, if you have the JSA on tap, why did you need to form the first Suicide Squad when that wow, was to take yeah. the Superman that. level threat? This, this they, happened they after that, but it's also been around for ages, <laughs> so... Because, yeah, mm-hmm. Hawkman probably could have done some good there. I mean, he would have been more powerful than any of the people that they have. More than sensed. Harley fucking Quinn. No, in her baseball bag. bat was crucial. She is essential <laughs> to the team. She needed you know to what I'll say? baseball bat. I'm very glad there was no one that useless on this team. We'll say that. You know, wind <laughs> manipulation is not the greatest thing ever, but... Uh, but it's all right. No yeah, there's a lot you can do with it. They don't I really genuinely have no idea if this is all sarcasm or not. I can't tell. <laughs> no, I'm no, I'm serious. Actually, okay. I, I don't. I don't think anyone in this group is as useless as some of the people in. I, uh, I will absolutely America. concede no one's as useless as Harley Quinn, even though she's the one that cuts Enchantress's heart out. For uh. fuck's sake. <laughs> Her heart's out. We can end this. <laughs> 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 I'm sure that I uh, no. this is <laughs> What what a crazy fucking adventure the DCU is, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's it's like that. it tried to find itself along the way and never did. I never will. And I, I genuinely <laughs> I genuinely can't tell how much this movie is trying to reset things to, for a new way of going about it, or whether it's just more of the same. It's. Uh, it's very confusing. To me. Um, this feels like a. I think it's just more. It feels like it's more the same, but slightly better than some of the other stuff. But I guess at the end we'll get to yeah. where we would put it in our ranking. Well, they're on the little, little X Men ship. Uh, they're like the ship is made entirely from nth metal, making it entirely indestructible. 
down yeah. to the screws. And I was just That's like, pretty oh, okay, <laughs> whatever, fine. Nth metal. It's metal a thing made that... in It's a the plane is made of the N word. It's indestructible. <laughs> <laughs> After everything else they've introduced, it's like nth metal is indestructible. But you, you guys, have you made weapons out of that? I don't know. Whatever. Is it better or worse than eternium? I don't know. Whatever. Can you make a plane out of eternium? Do you know what people Probably say not. when you bring this shit up? Their first response is like, "Well, actually, it's from the comics." It's like, yeah, I know, I know, all this shit is probably from the comics, but they contextualize zero of it. They're just like, "Yeah, it's nth metal, what?" It's world building spam. It is pure world building spam that is not given any larger context or meaning. I mean, the fucking JSA is meant to root itself in World War Two and shit. They're not doing that here. They just so like, "Hey, guys, another super powered team that has justice in the day." Hey. Here's all these guys we've never heard of before. Let's go. Well, hey, they well, tried, shooty time. tried the Justice League a couple times. Didn't work out. Okay, so they're trying the Justice Society now. See if that goes. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> to see if that society sticks. Of justice. Um. So yeah, then they're uh, gonna try. They're gonna try the Justice Union next. We're they they try, try and do try and do some quick. So you have um Adam Smasher and and Cyclone see each other and and she's like, oh, he says, what do you do? And she goes, wind. You? And he goes, I grow. And she goes, cool. And I was just like, what? neither of those answers would be satisfying at all. Wind? What the <laughs> fuck does that mean? And then, I grow. I turn into wind? What do you mean you grow? You are the atomic <laughs> farts? What are you talking about here? Like, He's a grower and not a shower, okay? You, you, you know. want it, they want it to be like, um, oh, fuck. I, I, want to, I want to say, what is the, the movie that there's, there's another movie, it could be Marvel, that do that. Um, we're, we're like heroes... Um, I, for a second there, I thought is I was thinking the, of... Is it like, what's your power, I'm rich? Is that what you're thinking of? I don't think it was that. I could have sworn it's a Marvel one. I'll keep an eye on chat to see if they have it. But I could have sworn there was like a... I'm also thinking of No Way Home, where they say like, oh, I fell into a thing and became a thing. And it's like, I fell into a different thing and became a thing. And it's like, wow, don't fall into stuff, huh? Just like that that kind of conversation. It feels like they're trying to do it here. Oh, in Avengers, yeah, it says uh, he's fast, she's weird. <laughs> That's a good line though. Uh, so I like it. anyway, yeah, I just I was just like, oh, they tried, but like that conversation would go that way at all when you say I do I I I wind. That's my thing. Like okay, that's your fetish. Mm. I like that he has to eat a lot and he's hungry, asking where the snacks are. You like you that? Like that I, like, when they did it with I the like flash. The, I like the idea well, that he like, has to eat a lot. Yeah. However, I don't like the fact that if that's his like a requirement for him to keep his energy up and he asks if there are snacks on the plane going to the mission, he yeah, like, like is, he it's say, I need snacks yeah. on this on this plane. I'm yeah, he probably like, breaks some. You're right. Well, because yeah, it's right. set up and paid off. It's uh it's a quick joke. He he wants food, he likes food, and then later on he's got like a bucket of chicken and Dr. Fate zaps it out of existence like, oh you with your food. It's like, he probably should eat the chicken. Well, that's, that's the thing, right? Because he's like, well wait, does he need it? If, <sighs> Whatever. Yeah, um, I think there'd be like a compartment on his costume that was like, oh, here's like a, a specially made protein bar that has all the all the things you need going to battle or something. It's made out of nth metal. Important. It's basically uh, nth metal protein bar. Want. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we go back to the Rock. He wakes up and zaps, like burns the head off a picture of Superman, which feels pretty deliberate. Uh, <laughs> I'm not exactly oh, sure what's God. going on, you know. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, even with everything that's happened in the DCU, I would still rather see Henry Cavill Superman show up than Black Adam again. I'm <laughs> just saying. Absolutely. Yeah. Easily. Um, and then he heals himself. He, he's got a little, little mark from the Eternium Blast, and he just, he heals it in this exact same way just... that Iron Man heals himself at the end of Infinity War, if you remember. Where it's like, it's almost like the yeah. same area too. Um, not he the, the, shoots lightning at himself and heals himself with his lightning. Which, just add it to the fucking list of powers he has. Add it to, yeah. I have the power to, to heal myself. Just do all the shit. Um, it's like they wanted they wanted it to be Krypton, like uh, Kryptonite for him, but also he can just heal his own wounds from it easily. So it kind yeah, of, kind of like, right, I guess. Okay, sure. So um, he looks in the mirror... He's like, whoa, and then the kid is like, did you really not have mirrors back then? I guess a lot does change in 5,000 years. And um, it was weird because 
when you know the full context of the movie, it's fair to assume uh, Adam, Adam, Black Adam, whatever, he never would have seen himself that way Has because... Has he never seen a reflection in the mirror? Oh, no, no, wait. Right. He had so water. I'm getting there. Water, so, like, the, like yeah. he would have been Black Adam, so to speak, for very little amount of time before going into prison. Yeah, maybe like a day. And so he may not have seen any reflections of it, right? But the thing is, I'm not sure sometimes with this movie because the dialogue's not so great, where it's, like, wait, did they think there were no reflections 5,000 years ago, or are they just trying to make the kid say that because he's he doesn't understand what's meaningful that happening here i assume i don't know i don't know if i'd give him that much credit that's what i mean i, <laughs> I can't tell uh we we've said this before when you can interpret dialogue when something's really well written we're like oh that's deliberate i'm sure of it but when you deal with something that's this floomby you're like uh, that's, the, uh, that's probably know. an accident yeah well and that's the awkward thing i i feel like when the writer wrote that someone might have been like you know the there's many ways to have reflections, right? And they might be like, yeah, oh, like, fuck, yeah, yeah, right, sorry, yeah. And they scribble it out, and you're like, oh, God. Um, but then he's like, my home is gone. Because he looks outside, and it's all different. Um, yeah, and then let me cut over to the, the, the other room, because he's currently in the in the lady's house, sleeping. Um, and she and Uncle Chungus are just sort of doing some stuff, and she, she's looking for the crown. She's like, oh, God, where is it? And she looks over at him, and, and Uncle Man is wearing it. And I legit was, for a moment, like, wait, I thought that was, like, the... So he's invincible now, right? Yeah, is that, like what, what are the rules? And... and then she says, you know it's cursed by demons, right? And then I was like, well, I'm wait, I'm so invincible, did, bitch. Why? Did nobody say anything about the nature of wearing the ancient evil demon crown? Like, did yeah, you just... No. Why the fuck would you casually put that on? That's, and doesn't the the villain in the end just put it on? He doesn't do anything special, uh, does he? Uh, he no, well, he has to taste the Bach. You have to not only yeah, you have to die too oh, while yeah, holding it. You know, so it's the, the whole oh, thing. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Sorry. I just it's still worth highlighting that any normal person would probably be like, I'm probably not knowing everything I know about this crown. Probably not going to put it on. Probably not. Yeah. Um, yeah. but then then and this is the thing when people said they got some smirks out of this movie, I, I think I had a decent tally. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep trying to point them out, but. She she's yeah. reading the crown. She says the only path to death is life, and then it just pans over to Uncle Chungus and he goes, "No shit." And I thought that was funny. <laughs> yeah, just that like would be my first reaction. It's rare I hope that this isn't all the wisdom of the ages. Yeah, that's what it, offer us. it's rare that you'll read something <laughs> that does kind of sound like it would maybe come off a transcribed thing, and then just be like, "Yeah, obviously." <laughs> like who wrote that? Fucking idiot. You that's know. ancient Kandakian <laughs> wisdom. Like, yeah, sure, um, Aristosthenes would calculate the size of the Earth within 10% accuracy thousands and thousands of years ago. That's fine. It's not very impressive. Have you heard of the old Kandakian uh, parable or the old saying that, you know, you need to live to die? Ah. Ah. Oh. ah. It's a deep, that's a, it makes you, th it makes you think. That's what I'll say. It makes you this think. This is a movie for thinking people. Ooh. This is this is the movie for thinking people, like Rings of Power. It's the show for. No, uh, kid says Kandak needs a hero. The Justice League don't do shit, and then he's like, "I'm no hero," and then he's like, "But you're our only hope," and then he just walks off and bursts through the the wall. It's just, I don't even know what you're supposed to conclude from that. Because um, he's rude. Uh, not to always suck the dick of Civil War, but when you have Vision walking through the wall and they're like. Dude, you know, you're not supposed to do that. Bad custom. Knock on the door. And he goes, yeah, well, the door was open, so I figured... Okay, anyway, it just, just like, that's a fun little thing that he has already been told to not come through the walls just because he can. It's rude. But that he would be like, if the door's open, then surely I can walk through the walls. Like, it's just like a little... Bit, okay. With Black Adam, it's like, why did you do that? Why did you just destroy everything? Why wouldn't he do it by going outside? Why would he go to a different room, you know? And if he's going to go to a different room, why not just use a fucking door? Well, and, and he doesn't I, I, just do that. He he also starts pushing the table along with his thigh like he's a fucking uh, video game character. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty... He spent the vast majority of his life, like the vast, vast, vast majority of his life as a regular dude who had to go through doors and couldn't walk through walls. Exactly. But he was mm -hmm. superhero yeah. for one day, well, superpowered for one day, and now he just doesn't understand... Wait, this is a solid matter before me. I can't. Why would yeah, you're you right. They treat it like he's an alien, like he doesn't understand how walls work. Is this a door I see before me? Actually, he's he's a human being. Like 
He lived essentially yeah, sure, he lived yeah. a long time ago, but he's a human being. I think that's a big failing of this movie is Black Adam is this guy from 5000 years ago, but he never in, in virtually no way does he play that part because yes. it's the rock and he's playing the rock. He's not playing some person who's, you know, out of time who doesn't doesn't speak the language, doesn't know the customs, is you know, bigoted in his own ways because he's from a different time and who he, he thinks certain ways, who thinks that everything is magic and this has to come to grasp with all of, you know, the stuff around him. It's a huge missed opportunity that just, it never happened. We never got that. Yes. When he was yeah. just some guy. Quick question before we move on. Um, I just want to go back to the kid talking about how the justice league or the justice society i can't remember which like both they don't do shit they don't help the people here and it's like but he has all their merch and he's super into superheroes yep. but he feels abandoned by them it's like uh doesn't feel quite it? right does it no it doesn't especially how like annoyingly political this kid is yeah like, you i don't think... think he would like them yeah you know what would have happened is the mum would have shat on them all the time and he would have been completely convinced that they're not actually good people that they just do it for the fame they do it for where it's convenient for them he wouldn't be worshiping but they really them. want him to be a kid who's into superheroes yeah they needed that for many reasons um, many stupid reasons so when he walks in to the next room he sees Clint Eastwood doing cowboy stuff and he he watches it for literally like a couple of seconds and then he like draws his Pistolero, and so then he zaps the TV, and I, I'm I'm so lost because I'm like, why would he understand anything about any of that? Wouldn't he just be like, what is that? Like, it looks like a guy, but it's on like a screen, or well, he wouldn't even, you know what I mean? They they completely skip all of it, and he's just like zap, and then he, I think he says like the wizards or something. He assumes yeah. it's wizards, <laughs> and it's just like, yes, uh, what are we doing? <laughs> There was a little tiny wizard in that box, and he was going to shoot me, so I had to destroy him. <laughs> and like, did Teth keep... Adam have a disability before he became Black Adam? <laughs> <laughs> and you got to oh, keep no. that in mind, right? Because they're gonna they're gonna pay it off soon enough, and it's gonna be so great when they pay it off. Him seeing that little thing on the TV. Oh, good, so good. Um, so then, yeah, then they start having a chat, and he's like, "Those men in the tomb, they were your enemies." He goes, yes. And he goes, then your enemies are vanquished, condemned to the eternal sleep of the damned. Like, what the f <laughs> What is this? <laughs> what? <laughs> Isn't he supposed to be a normal guy? <laughs> like, what? No. Why? He is alien. This really feels like no, this is, years ago. this is approachable edginess. This is how you can be brooding and slightly edgy without being really any of those things. I was legit starting to get confused because I was, I was like, he really doesn't feel like he's from Earth. Like, that's the idea. No. But, uh, okay. And then the kid is like, we still have loads of enemies, and they have all kinds of amazing weapons with Eternium, while we, we just have my mum. And then, like, the, I think the movie thought that was very funny. I, I thought it was fine. Kind of weird. It is weird that your resistance movement is just your mom. Like, that's yeah. She's doing, it, she's doing her best, alright? She's doing yeah. her best, yeah. <laughs> Um, and then they have what they thought was very, very funny. I'm curious what you guys think. Where he's like, uh, she says, I don't want you teaching my son violence. And he's like, of course, you want his father to teach him violence. And then they're like, the uncle is the father. And he's like, no, whoa, that was gross. No, I was... And he's, like, and he's like, so who do you want him to teach violence? And then he's like, yeah, mom, who do you want me to teach me violence? And then she says, nobody. I want a champion to free us. So, like, uh... I think they thought that was funny, the whole teach me violence thing. Then it gets really confusing at the end because she's like, I don't want any violence. I just want you to free us from our oppressors. Like, uh huh. Using uh, how? <laughs> <our> <laughs> <method> <laughs> for, with an excellent, we're going to teach you to be a very strong debater. You're going to be, <laughs> you're going to be the a Dalai master Lama. master of debating, if you will. Yes. But like, I was, I was yeah, a little can... confused because I was like, I mean, this lady is surely, you know, mature enough to know that you're going to need some violence to, to do this. Uh, yeah, she no. didn't seem too broken up about any of the people he killed already. But simultaneously, she'll argue that we don't need to do it with violence or something. It's like, okay. Strange. Yeah, you. God. The only thing I liked about that little exchange was the, like, oh, oh, no, I understand. You want his father to teach him violence. That was kind of funny. That felt like something maybe a so person from a long time ago would say. 
Like, oh, yeah. I understand. You don't want to be the one to, to uh, his father. Yeah, because you're the woman. His it's his yeah. father's you know duty to you know. misogyny. That's about women can do violence too. Got to like an, an old fashioned worldview out of this character. <laughs> Um, with, with that scene, it was. I, I think that was like one of the moments where I was just like, "What is the fucking dialogue in this film? What's it's really is, what uh, awkward? The, 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 really, the, I don't think it's consistent because I like some of the lines and I don't like some of the lines. And some of the lines, I'm like, "What the fuck is that even doing there? Like, it's a weird collection to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is usually like a bad result overall, of course. But I still want to try and compliment where I can. Um, yeah. So he leaves because he's like, I'm out. I'm not doing this. And the kid is like, but wait. And and they show that the kid uh, catches up to him by going through like a secret exit in his room. So they're, they're in like an apartment building and the kid has a little like thing that he can he has a, climb into. Like a the, shelf, yeah. but it's a fake shelf that hides essentially. It, it's like a laundry chute or something that he Puts jumps him into, into the vents and... and then he can get out into the... Sort of yeah. main area through it. It's like, I guess it's not a bad thing, thing to have in case yeah. something really bad happened to you, I guess. Yeah, it's just kind of strange. Um, yeah, he's he's like, come on, be a hero. Also, you should have a catchphrase. Because you should you should say, tell them the man in black sent you when you kill people. It would be really cool. And then he says, I don't waste words on the dead. Which is probably uh, exactly how he should have felt throughout the whole movie, actually. That, that, yes. that line. But he changes his mind. He doesn't stick to that. No, and it's dumb. It, it, it would be very strange if he, like, on a whim, decided all of a sudden that that catchphrase was really cool. Like, that would be a very strange thing to happen, I think. It would be. But it's a good thing the film doesn't do that, right? Um, no. And then there's a line from the kid that I was genuinely like, what the fuck? Um, Adam's, like, is kind of looking out the window, and then he goes, everyone you've ever known is dead. What else are you going to do? And I was just like, why? What? <laughs> wow. That, um, you've really resorted sorry. to that. You're like, well, you know, if you really don't believe in the cause, you don't care about us, you don't want a free conduct, can you at least agree that this is something for you to do? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> okay. No. I mean, that, that, that argument is pretty much good for anything. It's like, I may as well just take over conduct. It's something to do. Yeah, so I don't know. It was weird. And then he, he just smashes through the, the wall and starts heading toward a statue. Um,. Cut back to the Justice Society, and uh, uh, Pierce Brosnan is like, Wallace file leaves a lot to be desired. A day ago, this guy was just a myth. And uh, Hawkman is like, he's a bad man, Kent. What more do you need to know? Which is really not reassuring to hear, by the way, uh, no, from the Justice Society. I was like, wow, guys, that's, uh, that's not yeah. a good start. Um, Do you think yeah. maybe Ma Waller's not telling us everything? I don't know. She seems pretty trustworthy. Yeah, I've only known <laughs> her to be trustworthy. There's no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, Kent says, yeah, when you've seen as many futures as I have, you cease to believe in absolutes. I was just like, well, you, only, you haven't got anything. You've got the, this is a guy from 5,000 years ago that's been reawakened and is like, like a nuke waiting to happen. So that's it. That's, what do you even make of that? You don't even know anything. And uh, the information they have is that he destroyed the city, so that's what they're working with. But it's just like, well, you're gonna probably gonna need to talk to him, I guess. We'll talk more about that soon. Uh, yeah, he says I missed having you around to spout cryptic shit like that. Uh, which I'm not actually clear exactly on what he thought was cryptic. Yeah, not on. When you've end. seen as many futures as I have, you cease to believe in absolutes. And, he, and if he's describing Pretty that as cryptic, really. I feel like that's not very cryptic. <laughs> yeah. Just be like, yeah, a lot of stuff happens, a lot of stuff changes. You know. <laughs> it's like, do you need me to? I could go even more granular if you, if you need it. Understood. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then he says, I've missed having you around to ignore all my advice. It's a bad plan. There's better a bad plan than no plan. And uh, Rag, I, I, I think I you, you pause that. on that because, yeah, I think that's worth pausing on. It's like, better a bad plan than no plan. Is that I true? I mean, you should <laughs> just charge straight at the enemy across this empty field with no cover when they have machine gun emplacements and we have no armor. Well, it's better I mean, than a bad plan is better than no plan. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> better than just not doing that. Well, because the problem yeah. is that. Let, you know, let's say I do have a selection of weapons that I can attack a bear with because he's coming right at me. Is a bad plan picking like the shitty weapon, and then no plan is just standing there. 
Is that is that how that would sort of shake out? In which case, I guess the bad plan is better. But then a bad plan could be that I grab a weapon and shoot myself in the face, and the no plan. That's is a bad plan. Me. Better so, than no plan. Yeah. And that, that's for what instance, I mean. Bad plan can be so many... strategy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah, as as lines go, that was just like a bad plan. But I don't know, man. All right. You didn't think about that very hard when you wrote it, did you? It doesn't. Yeah. Um. And then uh, Peace Bronze was like, perhaps we could have a third option. If only, if only there were one. Um. And then we see Cyclone and Adam Smasher hanging out again, and uh, he, Adam Smasher is going to pick up. Uh, Dr. Fate's helmet, and then she goes, I wouldn't touch that if I were you. The helmet is from another planet. It chooses who is allowed to, like, touch it, who's worthy or whatever, and it's millions of years old, and Kent is literally possessed when he puts it on. And it's, it's clearly their way of trying to bum-rush fucking exposition for who mm -hmm. Dr. Fate is or how he got to that point. But the first thing you think is, why the hell is the helmet just sitting there if if, <laughs> if it's that? And then the guy's like, what happens if I touch it? And she says, you'll experience soul-crushing terror. At least that's what, like, Kent has, has expressed. And then he was like, oh, someone should probably put a towel on it. And it's like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, what the hell? <laughs> I don't know. It's, 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 I mean, yeah, I mean they, no uh, thing, do not I mean, touch. It, the man's got some ideas. That's he all does. I'm saying. He's he got does. some ideas. He's got some ideas. Um, <laughs> so then, yeah, they all they all come back into a room together and um, one of them says, like, Adam is a weapon of mass destruction, and then, uh, I think Cyclone is like, how do we stop him? And Pierce Bros is like, if we can get him to say the word Shazam, um, and then have him sleep off a few thousand years, maybe we can negotiate the terms of his existence. And I was just like, slow down. The only way you can think of defeating him is making him say a word. What if he doesn't? Yeah, do you well, have like hold him down and make his mouth make the movement <laughs> while he's screaming? <laughs> like start trying to contort it do around. Do we trick the wizards by using a ventriloquist? <laughs> I just uh... I, oh that that kind of reminds me of something. I I suppose we should have talked about it earlier, but so Black Adam gets his powers because six wizards who are just hanging out somewhere, if they see someone who does something like really cool really awesome, they will grant them the power of Shazam, Shazam or whatever, right? So, you should have a lot of Shazams out there, right? Like, yeah. a lot of them. You've got a planet two. with... Two. You, you have a planet with billions and billions of people over time, right? And if, like, think about all the crazy... St think about World War II. If How many Shazams would have been created in World War II, how many people went through incredible, daring, brave, you know, rescue missions and, you know, courageous acts of sacrifice to, you know, fulfill a mission and to save the world? And do the wizards give it regardless of the side? So if you have some <laughs> plucky chum in the Wehrmacht, right, and he is a, like he's a medic and he and he saves all of his German comrades in the middle of the battle and he like gets shot and is almost killed by crossfire while he's trying to, you know, help his people. And he's he's kind of a good dude. Could that guy get shazammed even though he's on, you know, the, the German side? Like there's a lot of there's a lot of questions that I have regarding Why? the who who is given the power of Shazam. This is a pretty obvious question, but like, why didn't they actually get Shazam to like help them? Oh, dude, all of them, all of the characters. Where are they? They didn't only... account for them at all. They didn't even do Whoa, the thing of they're off world. They're busy. They didn't do that. They just not didn't. only is there there Shazam, like Zachary Levi is Shazam, but he's also his whole family is Shazam too. They they have the same. They were doing on their a sh chest. Shazam like, they're, two. They're the Shazam two is happening at the exact same time. They have the same powers. Like, and he's interacted with the wizard. Like, why isn't he? Why didn't you get him? Shazam 2 is happening at the exact same time. They can't do it. Shazoom. I, maybe, maybe it is. Shazumbo. Who knows? It's just... Shazumbo. Uh, don't we'll think get... about it. Just yeah, we'll, we'll get it. more on that. This, time. this is a very cohesive universe. I don't know why you'd think they wouldn't account for well, that. Well, I mean... I mean, who knows if they're even going to have those characters interact. It seems like they want to set up Black Adam versus Superman rather than his arch nemesis. The second half of what Pierce Brosnan said, that whole 
will make him sleep off a few thousand years and then negotiate the terms of his existence. What a strange, like, intention. Why wouldn't you just talk to him now? Yeah. What's this whole, like, make him sleep it off for a thousand... Like, he's already been sleeping for thousands... Of, uh, whatever. I don't know, man. It's just, it's just strange. They all seem so confident about this. Like, we'll just make him say the word, this, this literal walking WMD. It'll be fine. Yeah, he'll want to give up his powers. Um, so anyway... <sighs> Well, I don't even know how exactly we're going to go about explaining the issue here, because it's a little bit complicated. The kid is, like, annoyed that Black Adam isn't going to liberate Kandak. That he's busy having a look at the statue. So the kid pisses off one of the guards, hoping the guard will beat him up so that Black Adam will kill him. I don't know how to we feel to about a, this. We need to have a discussion about morality. Complicated. <laughs> I, don't have a... I have mixed feelings. Yeah. I don't know about this. This is really, this is, um, this is a weird one, guys, uh, uh, to, uh, this is really strange. I'm not sure. Uh, how do you start? Yeah, that's the, what I mean. The like, idea that, like, that's just a thing that you do. Like, I, I understand that these are, like, the bad guys, but are all of them bad? Are they, like, what, what's this, what's the political situation going on here? You know, like, what? Well, What's happening in this world right now? What what's sort of the state of things? Because this is just it's just really weird. Um, um the uh, the idea that a kid can essentially sick his dog, right? His his is is invincible superhero on people and just have them get killed without even a chance of fighting back, uh, and that it's done so. It's it's done without any kind of commentary like no one comments on this no one it's not held against him it, it's if anything it's like oh yeah the kid's having a, a moment he's fighting back it's like ah it's like people are getting killed and i mm, don't know about this one i think there don't are know. ways to execute that are a little bit cleaner um including but not limited to the kid is running after black adam and then bumps into one of the gods and the gods like beat him up for it just because they find him annoying, and then Black Adam's like, what are you the fuck are you doing? And then they could be like, who the hell are you? And then, you know, because, like, they do, Black Adam waits for them to attack him first. So the, the film is, like, clearly trying sort of that. But, like I said, it, it felt weird to me that the kid recognized, like, hmm, the only way I can get Black Adam to start, you know, liberating Kandak is to piss off my captors so that they attack me and then hopefully he'll kill them. There's just something about that that doesn't feel quite right, but um, you know, sure. Uh, it's what is what starts the avalanche in a sense. Because that's the thing, if, if we saw more of them being super cruel, um, which they already are, it, it's just that uh, it, it, the series of events being cleaner as a start would, would, would be more comfortable. That's all. He's Because uh, the kid is just like, I'm going to go and get these guys killed if I can just piss them off enough, which feels strange especially because the kid is like super obsessed with paragon type heroes yeah which as we know uh the, the, you know the, the hawk man representing that side in this probably wouldn't say what the kid does there is a cool thing to do like i said no um, probably not could have been could have been cleaner just just felt awkward um mm -hmm, so yeah. yeah adam pretty much kills them all um Spins up and he's like, pachow, pachow, pachow. Uh, and then and then they all unload their like machine guns into him, but they run out, or at least one guy does. And then they all start setting up to do um, Mexican standoff. And it's incredibly bizarre. Yeah. Weird. Is I've... it just because of the thing he saw I on TV? It's... Yeah, I think so. I, I think, think that's that was the idea. The setup and this is the payoff. But it doesn't make any sense make any sense <laughs> like, whatsoever yeah um so if you empty your entire rifle into superman and then you don't draw and fire your pistol which is one thing you threaten to you imply to you set up the mexican stat off as if to say hopefully i can get my shot off before you do anything to me superman <laughs> which is like as if what the shot's gonna do anything you know as if the bullet's not just gonna bounce off his forehead yeah, and, and, and you know the obvious thing we need to count immediately is like, but it's really fun. Like, uh, not really. N no, 
I don't know. Is it is this still fun when you like it requires all of the characters to go brain dead for a second? Like no nobody's decisions here make any sense. I would say that saps the fun out. I of think it saps the fun out. <laughs> yeah. It's just oh, this is a reference to a thing that is good, except that none of the context allows for it to work in the way it did in the thing that you like. So it's just here. Remember that? You remember that movie? Yeah, and then um, kills them all, and it's like, yep, yeah, yeah, that, that's, what would, yeah, that's yeah, what would, that's what would happen. It's gonna yeah. happen. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, would be surprised if he didn't effortlessly kill all of them without any issues whatsoever. And then he says, that "Tell them strange. that the man in black sent you, but the guys are dead." Oh shit! I got, I got to get, I got to do that when they are still alive. He's not an alien. That's <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> human person he should know Ugh. so uh he then grabs two guys oh he grabs he, like it's, other people are shooting at him so he jumps over grabs uh, two guys and he's about to drop him and he sees the justice society turn up and then it's kind of strange he sees them then he drops the two guards he's holding and then looks back at the ship and shrugs as if to say yeah what are you gonna do about it but he has absolutely no clue what this thing even is, the ship, you know? It just turns up. And he already wants to, like, interact with it as though he knows the personalities and intentions of the people on it. Because they're not happy that he drops two people like that. Like, the, uh... Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, he, he's, like he's, yeah. he's aware of the situation already, and it's just like, how? He shouldn't be. There's a million things he should not be aware of at this point in the movie that he just is. He just understands the dynamic. And so Hawkman jumps out immediately to save the two guys, which is kind of like, okay, neat. That's that's pretty clear characterization. And Dr. Fate does a teleport, I guess. But before he does, he looks at a cyclone at Adam Smasher just says, be prepared. And For it's, what? It's exactly, it's <laughs> such a like, even I was just like, wait, what are they supposed to do? They had the same information as me. <laughs> like, <it's, laughs> what are they it's supposed to do? ironic, isn't it? Keep an eye out for the signal. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll get to that. Um, so just hideous prep, awful, but yeah, whatever, it's fine. I think a society geared for justice would be better at. You'd think. Um, You'd think. Has he said the man in black line yet? Uh, while I was gone, or are we yes. still ramping up to that? Yeah, he said it to the guy who was already dead. That's the one we done. So yeah, because well. because that was kind of the moment I realized. Oh, they 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 didn't realize they were riding Black Adam. They thought they were riding the T eight hundred from Terminator Two. <laughs> this is they've they've somehow con confused the two, and now he's being written like this robot who needs to. It, it, as much as I agree, himself, the, uh, the execution in T two is so much better. Oh yes, it is. It is much better. Uh. So yeah, um, Hawkman says, I don't know these men's crimes, but they should face due process. Uh, and then Adam just fucking kills them and says, let the gods make their judgment. Um, I, I don't mind that exchange between the two of them. It expresses their, their core values pretty easily and how they're very opposed to each other. I, yeah. the, you know, I don't yeah. know if there's anything else to say about that. I was just like, it's pretty quick because you know we haven't had much. I think we're like halfway through the film already, by the way. That um, feels weird. It does. It does, doesn't it? Like, because there's not much we've had to talk about. Um, yeah, or at least it doesn't feel that way. Happened. Then again, yeah, we've been going for two then... hours, so I don't know. Maybe it. Maybe. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Then, then Hawkman says, oh, one of them says, uh, we're here to restore peace to Kandak and we will use force if necessary. And then Adam's like, force is always necessary. Which is a weird line. I think he wants to sound badass, I guess. Because um, it isn't always necessary. No. I don't... But I guess he thinks that it is from his is experience. He talk... Is so. he talking about the, like, the threat of force is always necessary? Because that's a little bit different, but like you could make a stronger case for at least. Well, he said the use of force, if necessary. Okay. And then he says it's always necessary. Okay. Um... So one thing that I don't... Sorry, just to backpedal quickly. The one thing I don't really like about Hawkman coming in, like he just says, like, oh, these people need to face due process. And I'm, I'm not convinced that he understands 
the like the political goings on of he definitely life. doesn't he sees well, himself I, sure no clue. I sure as fuck don't yeah yeah I, exactly he doesn't so i mean he pretty much he, says that he says like i don't know what these guys have done but they should face due process so i guess his idea of due process versus conduct's idea of it yeah and uh, he gave me a little bit of like team america vibes you know just showing I, up i don't think the film's unaware of that they have criticisms of them in that degree right yeah. that they only show but, up at the worst possible time ever like to control them yeah. i think the but film is aware no, the film is aware that he's showing up and he's being like the Team America kind of person a little bit, but the film doesn't make clear for us what the actual situation is on the ground here in terms of who runs this country, who these soldiers really are, who they work for, what they're doing. Like, what is the actual political situation here? Because they don't tell us. We don't really know what to think about whether Hawkman is right to say these people like I, I i'm just so confused like I, I can't make a judgment on like how we should treat these soldiers because i don't really understand what the world building is it could be handy to have more about them yeah yeah, yeah it would be very helpful because from their perspective it might be that like the reason they were trying to get the crown in the first place with i just who knows there's so much i know so little about what's going on in this country and the situation of the country is such a a big point of the plot that it, it's not fair, damn it. Now, um, th that exchange at least means that Black Adam is talk to and that he seems to have a grievance with uh, the people he's just killed. So there's clear motivation. You can talk to him, and that's probably wise because he's pretty powerful. But then Dr. Fate rolls in. Again, I want to say I like Dr. Fate in this movie, but he says... Death Adam, we know who you are and what you're capable of. There is no place for you in the world of men. You have two choices, kneel or die. They're stupid. I don't think They're that's helping. Stupid. I really don't. I think that was a really, really... Uh, that's just not wise. <laughs> like, not even close. I hate how they approach him, because if you watch the movie at all, it seems he's very... He's actually rather easy to convince of things. The only thing you he's can't chill. convince... Is that violence is useful? Like you're not going to be able to convince him that that's not true. But everything else, like he seems to just like, oh, these are the bad guys. Okay, cool, I'll kill them. You know what I mean? He's very easily manipulated, almost even. Like you could convince him if you talk to him. I, <laughs> just... I find it weird that he said kneel or die as well. Yeah. Um, but and yeah, also, what are like they must be anti-killing, aren't they? Like. It feels a bit weird that he's threatening with death when only a few minutes ago he's very, they very explicitly showed they were anti-death. It's, it's, I, I don't think it matches even slightly, that whole no. line. It's all like, wait, what? Dr. Fate comes across as like, oh, he's the, he's the smart one. He's going to be the one that has the most mature things to say about the situation as well as the most wise. And he just walks into this situation and just says, I'm going to kill you if you don't fucking obey me. Like, okay. Comes across as a weird evil tyrant for some reason. Yeah, and, 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 and said there is no place for you in the world of men. Like, wh why would you say that? <laughs> like, yeah, that's something that really, really annoyed me about the film. I have no idea why they think they can't make a hero out of this guy. Or like someone who's useful to their cause. I have no idea why they just assume that's impossible from the start. And then antagonize and, and remember, it. Remember, fucking Dr. Fate is the one that said there are, there are no absolutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. So, no. and uh, I'm not going to entertain, like, oh, he did it because it's not something he actually believes in, but it facilitates the future he needed to have facilitated or some shit like that. You know, it comes off to me like, because they mention that he's possessed when he's wearing the helmet, yet that aspect doesn't actually come up too much in the film so that feels like that might have been a larger part of the script at some stage i was gonna bring like that up shrapnel from that idea I get that impression i so, totally get yeah. that impression that they uh, changed well, like the, the helmet was, was we gonna have now? I had several praises for dr fate but one of the big criticisms i think is to have told me that he is possessed whenever he puts that helmet on you cannot show me him taking it on and putting it off casually all the time can't do well, that. the thing is, um, the the uh, now me might be able to help me out with this. As I understand it, the whole idea with Doctor Fate is that, like, yeah, essentially when he puts on the helmet, there's like a different, you can almost say persona that is uh, involved there, 
and there's kind of like yeah, there's like a god living in there or something. I think yeah, and they have like competing interests at times. So it's like two entities that occasionally cooperate and occasionally clash with one another. That's not very present here. I still like it, it but it seems like it might have been something that they had, but then they changed their mind in reshoots. Because I imagine it's pretty easy to well, yeah, change that kind of thing in a reshoot. If that were mm. the case, we could stack some references. Unfortunately, it's not really complete because. Him no. saying there are no absolutes, and you know, and and maybe we need more information on this guy. To then, when he's Doctor Fate, say kneel or die. That it's like, oh, so that is a big difference there. Okay, cool. And um, he, you know, just diametrically opposed. Yeah, uh, but approach. they don't play into that really at all. You know, like when he says, mm -hmm. um, "I will crush his mind" or something like that in reference to interrogating somebody as Doctor Fate. It's like that sounds a bit more aggressive than Pierce Brosnan ever sounds in those scenes. So. Maybe you're right. Maybe that was an idea they had at some point and it got dropped. I don't know why they would have dropped it. That would have been really cool. It also, yeah, it's it would like have been one cool, of the cool it would make you, It would have been cool, but it would make you question why he's along for this mission if he's... Um, yeah, Well, he maybe, works for the Lords of Order, be, right? Well, so this would be about fighting... This would be about um, working for order. I yeah, think. Adam's like a WMD, so yeah. it makes some sense. Well, yeah, like, yeah. okay, well, no, because I, I disagree. I think because Dr. Fate's approach, if, if we're to believe that possessed Dr. Fate with the helmet on, is going to come in and see uh, Black Adam and say, kneel before me or die, that that's not actually going to help your mission. You know, that's, that's not fair. a good strategy. Yeah. So you might be, yeah. if you're putting this team together, go, yo, well, yeah, this guy, he's, you know, he's got God powers, which is really cool, but he's a very different and very aggressive person when he puts the mask on, and we don't really have a way of controlling that. So maybe he shouldn't be on the team. That is honestly something that it's so casually mentioned. Like he gets possessed, but it's just like, is that a problem? Is that something to worry is that about? Good? Like it could <laughs> be. Possessed by what? Possessed <laughs> by something that can understand people and humans? Uh, huge, huge missed opportunity here. What a shame. That could have been really interesting. Especially if he had almost like another voice that was in his head while he was doing his stuff, or he would so like just don't do much with it. And as much as I really want to like the, the character's aesthetics are so cool and Pierce Brosnan Brosnan's awesome, but a lot of missed opportunities here to to really make him something great. Well, and like I, I said, should have had his own movie, really. Yeah, yeah. I would have been a Absolutely, watched the doctor. Yeah, I would have done that. I would have way preferred that. <laughs> oh, for sure. So um, the fight begins, and he's like, "Fate, give me a distraction," and he does cool spellcasty things and makes Black Adam see. Undark as it originally was to distract him. And they do something I think, uh, first of all, that's a power that I understand. It's pretty straightforward. It probably has a level of maintenance that's going to draw power. And then they do a little cool thing of I think Adam looks off in the distance and he sees like a bird. And then it comes closer and closer and bigger and bigger. It's and it's Hawkman and he punches yeah. him. It's like, oh, that's kind of neat. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, he punches him through a series of buildings. And oh my yeah. god, the Man of, Man of Steel oh, flashbacks no. immediately. I was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. hey. <laughs> and the thing about it is why does this happen so much it's like of all the characters to have do that you chose Hawkman why he would be the least <laughs> per the, the, him, like he wouldn't do it he wouldn't stop it, no. you can't tell me that he is or, a paragon of justice and virtue and then have him do that it doesn't if you work. have him do it then you have to have him go oh fuck oh, oh, sh oh no no is everyone okay well the, the building was cleared guys <laughs> there was no <laughs> one in the building guys. it's abandoned yeah, just Definitely have Anderson abandoned. Cooper come on the TV and say, actually, it's abandoned at night, so <laughs> It's, it's totally it. chill. ADR it in later? Yeah, um, uh, what? Um... <laughs> um, but yeah, they're just, they're outright trying to fucking kill him, and they have the kneel or die line, and I'm just like, you guys, really, you're not even going to try to talk to him. Okie dokie. Go ahead, I guess. Um, and then uh, we see our humans, who are annoying, and the lady is like, Amon, where are you going? And if I don't know if it was ADR, but there's a couple of lines much later in the film that, that are delivered this way, and oh my god, it's some of the worst lines. He goes, "To help him," like, oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the delivery is consistently awful. Why? Yeah. Why couldn't you have him? You could get an yes. adult to do a better. Get the voice of fucking Lisa Simpson. You know, there's people like that where they could do kids' yeah, voices. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> um. He gives a really great rousing speech later. We'll talk about it. We will talk about that, yeah. Uh, We're not there yet. Oh, I think I've repressed that. I'm, I'm, I can't actually remember the speech. I think I. And you not remember it. 
Really? <laughs> I, think, I think I've repressed it. Oh, I remember I the tone of it, not it. the words. Uh, no, I don't remember the words, but yes, the delivery is, is yeah. So then um, Cyclone is like, well, I'm off I go. I Actually, I think uh, uh, Dr. Fate says, uh, Atom Smasher, Cyclone, now is your time. And it's like, yeah. do what? Just Jump off the <laughs> fucking plane, Mahler. Okie dokie. So they do. Uh, Cyclone jumps out and she just whirls up loads of debris of different kinds, like poles and bricks and all this other stuff, and just fires it all at Adam. And I'm just going to be honest, I feel like, yeah, I mean, you, you can do that, but like, it's, it's not going to do anything, right? Like, why would that do anything? He's Superman. Yeah, not much of anything. Maybe distract him momentarily. That's really all you can hope for with her. Uh, the only thing I kind of like about it was that it was firing down all the poles around him. It looked almost like she was trying to avoid him. Not many of them go into him, but maybe she was trying to create a trap. We I have more questions about this in a second. But for a brief moment, when she puts all the poles around him, it makes like a uh, prison cell imagery. And and he looks through it and he gets even angrier. And I was kind of like, oh, that's, that's neat enough, you know, because he's got the slavery history thing. That's, that's wicked. In, yeah, some, in some way. Um, and then... Yeah, so th this is the thing. I wasn't sure exactly what happened here. It gets weird. So she's sort of finished her move, and there's Lady and the Kid. Think about this logistically. Lady and Kid, and then go a few meters forward, and you got Adam covered in this debris, and then a few more meters forward, and Will Wind Girl is doing a thing. And then you got Dr. Fate off to the side, who spots the situation is going in a particular way, and I think Will Wind Girl, I can't tell detonates where Adam is. There's like a blue explosion. I don't know if it's Adam doing it, or if she's doing it, or if someone else is doing it. Either way, that happens. And so all the debris is about to spread in all different directions, and so Dr. Fate teleports the lady and the kid out. Which, um... I had, I had an assessment of this at first, but now I'm not sure. What I thought was happening there was that Will Wind Girl is a fucking idiot, and she nearly killed two civilians because she's not thinking straight, and that Dr. Fate had to save them. But I'm not sure if he did the detonation or if it was Black Adam that did it. I thought if it was like a blue explosion, that would have been him, right? Because he's got the blue lightning powers. I think that it, the blue would go to Adam before any other character. So it, does that mean yeah, he did? Yeah, because I don't know. I don't know that she can do that, right? Just like but that, that doesn't. Everything. Is is so that that could actually be a a point to the film because that could mean then that he's. He's getting angry, and the because I was about I'm to say I'm pretty sure he knew that the lady yeah. and the the kid were there, but then again that's going to play into why he thinks that he is too too ragey, right? So I'll I'll benefit of the doubt. I'll give it to the film. I on think that it one. was him. I think it was him. Yeah. All right, cool. And that that does add to a to an arc. Okay, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be saying there's an arc in this film. All right, cry. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah. No, go for it. Go for it. Um. But yeah, and I also like just Dr. Fate saving them. I was like, yeah, I like it when superheroes save people. Uh, it's neat. That's nice to see. Yeah, you don't see it very much these days. Um, but it's a bit of a coincidence too, because he saves them and then he sees that her bag is on the floor. And I think he legit is like going, he's, he goes to pick it up to hand it to her, I guess. But then feels that the crowd is in there and flashes to the evil six demon princes of hell. <laughs> Which I was just like, oh no, there they are. Um, and he's like, you have the crown of Sabacc? He takes his helmet off to do that, by the way. And then again, you think about the possession thing. It's like, wait, does the helmet want you to take the helmet off? You know? Like, wouldn't the helmet be like, no, I I'm I guess right. it's okay with it. Do you understand what I mean by that, though? So say, for example, you're Dr. Fate, you're doing your Dr. Fate stuff, and then a development happens, and you take the helmet off to express your thoughts on that. It's like, wouldn't you keep it on? You well, know, um, here's another then thing. Then we can't see Later Pierce on, Brosnan's face. That is exactly the yeah, reason true. they do it. So yes, uh, that's where I was going with it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and later on we have the Iron Man vision, with the Iron Man close-up inside the helmet thing. What, what's, and, what, and... Why is everyone so mean to that? What are they supposed to do? They keep taking his helmet off throughout the whole movie. So like, they try to have one view of him that's from inside the helmet. Because people are like, wow, just doing the Iron Man thing. It's like, I don't know, it's different. It's the sparkly. So, uh, I guess, oh, so, so, unfortunately, I think I'm a bit Halo did the, the in-helmet thing, and I hate it. I just, I think it's just part of a broader thing which I don't like, which is, we need to see the actor's face, we can't have, like, the intentionally designed costume, an outfit, or armor set just exist as it is, and then find different ways to have the character express their emotions through, like, I think, language. I think, 
I mostly agree with you, but part of the problem with Dr. Fate in this movie is that his mask doesn't really have eyes. He doesn't have the eye things for some reason. Well, it has it one because... time in the whole movie. Yeah, yeah it's it does, strange. But I, we can talk I, about that. I don't have the eye slots for the whole... Well, I assumed that that like was to be like, it's a reference and that we're not actually going to do it fully because it's too goofy. Maybe. I assume yeah. that's what their angle is. I don't Which is it does movie, make it... But... It does make it a little weird because there's no expression in his mask now. Unlike some of the other heroes who wear masks, at least their masks have a face to them. You know, there's some level of expression possible, you know, with Spider-Man and his eyes and things like that. I don't know, man. I might have to go as far as saying I don't even need that. I could even... Because you got the voice. I really like Dr. Fate's voice, so... No, yeah, it's great. You need, I don't think you need stuff on that. You can, you can achieve, like, having emotions with no face at all. Uh, it's body language and voice and stuff because again so, that's um, the, with Halo the, the, right they're like we gotta see his face we gotta take off his helmet and even when he's got the helmet on we gotta do because I can't tell that he's angry when he's like punching this elite I need to see him <laughs> screaming yeah. I, I, I do not like that show I really don't like it <laughs> Uh -huh. um, so the main thing I wanted to point out with the Iron Man thing wasn't the fact that they were using the Iron Man thing but the fact that we are seeing him not uh, uh, as Kent Nelson inside the helmet speaking as Kent Nelson. So the, um, yeah. As yeah, that's Dr. the thing. Bay There's no really difference strange. at points like that. There is just, but, but you know what I mean? When it's we're saying references in favor of the idea, it's like there's loads of references against the idea. Yeah, he's yeah. just She-Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> why would you say that? Why would because, you say that? So because rude. I'll, t I'll, I'll explain why. Because... Is he Bo it's one person, even though they have two forms in She-Hulk. Jen as Jen, human Jen, and She-Hulk Jen are the, yeah, no, the same person, that. even if they have completely different forms. I think he looks Why really cool you... in this image, by the way. He does. He's Dr. Cool. Fate looks cool. I want to say I, liked, cool. I like him in, in the look in the movie as well. Um, I, yeah. I mean, th this is just cooler, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> look, he has a book. That's just look how much cooler that is. He has a book. Yeah, he oh, reads. Oh my gosh, he this is like a book. he does. He's got a little satchel for his book. I he often has a book. I've always found that cool when a book is like a weapon you have yeah. in the terms yeah. of like if you're a magic user and you have a floating book that like the pages light up or the the runes on it glow and you use that as a way to like channel your power. I, I always thought that was really cool and kind of scholarly and you know dignified in a sense. I, I always yeah, really like liked that. Like Hocus Pocus. Weapons. Someone said Doctor Strange equal no Doctor Fate equals Doctor Strange M O M. It's like no 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 no. 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 So something that is neat about Doctor Fate in this film is that he uses a smaller set of abilities. Like he he you. It's not like every time it's some bullshit. He tends to use like four or five moves that have mm -hmm. like a function, which they, makes they definitely like, went the opposite direction. Power. Of uh, that interviewer that said we needed a new move every single time Doctor Strange casts a spell. No, Doctor Fate yeah, uses the same case, set of five pretty much throughout the whole movie. Yeah, he uses illusions um, of like tricking, pe you know, tricking people with imagery. Yeah, he creating uses the glass trap thing. Yeah, yeah, the glass like, crystal. With that glass trap. He yeah. duplicates himself, but they're not super duper strong. Teleports um, he and goes invisible. Yeah. And teleports and goes invisible. That's basically it. But he uses them in different circumstances, which is that's probably the way to do it because it's like he's just way more understandable. He doesn't mm -hmm. just do anything. He's super powerful to be sure, but in a way that's more comprehensible. And the point being made is, yeah. as much as we've been shitting on the possession side of things, I think they do capture the uh, this man's lived a long time and seen a lot of yes. futures. Yes, yeah. uh, he's the best character in the good. movie. Uh, I think so, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I can't I wait really to see more of them. I'm really excited to see more of Dr. Fate. Um, <laughs> as much as I feel like they could have done more, what they did was pretty good. Uh, more on that later. <laughs> Unlike the multiple spells thing, you would even if you have access to thousands of thousands of spells, you would think that each wizard would specialize in only like five or six because no, you know, as a human, head. we don't like choice. Oh. <laughs> well, you want to get really good at a small set of spells, but then yeah. the problem is that you can't do the thing where it's like, yeah, there's a cat head, and then there's demon hands, and then there's magic sheet music. Like you Fucking gotta, hell, yeah. you can't, you <laughs> so can't. Stupid. And remember, everybody said that was cool. Nobody talks about it anymore, or that movie in general. Nobody should. Uh, Go away. 
I mean, I doubt many people are going to be talking about Doctor Fate like from this movie in a little while, but that's that's a shame. Mm. Mm. Maybe it would be different if he got his own movie instead of being in this movie. Yeah, he's not especially well served by the story around him, but I do like him. He's he's definitely the most interesting character. It's just it's uh it's like Meme said. There's too many movies in this movie because yeah. yep. it needs to serve as a Black Adam film, and it also needs to serve as a Justice Society film. And even amongst that Justice Society, you've got somebody like, I mean, really, like Hawkman and Black Adam could both get their own story, you know? Both of those yeah, characters yeah. could get their own movie, and that would be worthwhile. It would be worthwhile to Absolutely. see a Hawkman I, movie. How does he operate on his own, and what are the problems he, that he has to navigate through? DC has spent so long trying to jumpstart the car, they should have just started it normally. <laughs> Pretty much. Because yeah. at this point, it's been, it's been nearly a decade since Man of Steel. And That's crazy. we're not in a good place. Yeah, no, it is. It's no, we're in a terrible place. Yeah. Well, it's oh, like I said, like... they they just never found anything along the way of value, but they kept going. They they never had that. Whoa, timeout. Hold on. We need a plan here before we charge for it. <laughs> but they thought that a bad plan was better than no plan. <laughs> they did. So they just kept going and going and going. Well, 2008 great. to 2012, and so Marvel true. were already rolling completely, and it's like four years. You really don't need much more than that to have your whole cinematic universe no. ready to go. But again, it's probably not a great idea to have your cinematic universe essentially go Iron Man, Captain America Civil War, Thunderbolts, uh, Thor, or Captain America 1, mate. No, Thor. Uh, and, then, and then you do Avengers. Maybe that's not the best order to do your first set of Maybe films. Maybe not. Maybe the not. DC universe. Um, so Atom Smasher uh, comes in, and um, yeah. I don't know why they, I, I don't know, sometimes I just don't get what the film's trying to say. He starts it up, and he's running forward, and there's this car heading toward him, and he gets real big and just kicks it, and it just flings away, and it's like, who was in there? Dude, I hope George. nobody. I hope it's nobody, because jeez. <laughs> um, mm. And he's just, he slams down into Adam, and to the point where Whirlwind Lady has to put up a protective shield over her before she dies. And I was just thinking to myself, like, so, had she been knocked out, because she'd just experienced a big old blast from Adam himself anyway, um, he could have just killed her. And so I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. feeling annoyed. I'm like, you guys are very reckless. And, 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 but then again, mm -hmm. in my head, I was like, but this is their first time out, so maybe, maybe we can get some, like, you guys, you know, you, you're really bad at this. You need to you hang need to, back or yeah, you need to, something like that. They're not working as a team and I have to learn to work yeah. as a team and coordinate their powers or something that, unfortunately, something. At that very moment, Dr. Fate flies up, takes off the helmet and goes, I think for your first outing, you both are doing great work. Bravo. <laughs> oh, I was just like, oh. I guess it's just him being he's encouraging. Just trying to be yeah, the supportive one. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hawkman will be the one to reprimand them. I guess after so. punching him through the the building. Fair enough. Um, yeah, and Adam just knocks out Adam Smasher. Rip, and then they go. We're not strong enough. <laughs> it's just like no shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like probably should have called Superman. Yeah, that would be useful. Probably. Maybe, or, or alternatively, Shazam, the one who has the exact same powers and might have some insight into how to deal with himself, um, but This is like a, a lull in the almost non-stop action at this point. It's kind of, the film goes action, non-action, action, non-action, action for the rest of it now, and the non-action parts uh, are very yes. quick. Um, yeah. It's, uh, th this pace could be described as pretty erratic. <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> like yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Whiplash and yeah. boosting, but, um, dare I say? Yeah, the fight is now over, and uh, uh, Lady is like, Why are you guys trying to stop Black Adam? He's our champion, and you come here when he's saving us, but not when we're invaded. And then they're like, We need the crown. She's like, Fuck you guys. And then uh, Hawkman is like, I assure you, he is not a hero, and our team is going to be willing to. And then in the background, Adam Smasher knocks over a statue, and it, you hear people <laughs> screaming. And Hawkman is like, When we get back, me and you are going to have a conversation, or something like that. And I, I just remember thinking, like, Dude, did he just kill people? Did he? Please don't tell me he's killing people. Oh, he'll just cause some damage. That's all. Yeah. Fucking hope so. <laughs> 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 God, I'm so tired of my heroes part. casually killing people. Stop! <laughs> yeah. Well, there's I also think... 
No. Yep. Yep. Oh, yep. 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 what? Yep. 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 <laughs> um, I think he was just casually <laughs> destroying a a very revered statue, and you know, still bad. The implication. No, yeah, yeah. still bad for sure. But I don't think anyone died. Like I said, the yeah. screaming is what, this, is what made me worried. <laughs> there's also this other part where um uh he's yeah, I think it was during the action scenes where he's in where he's um I think he's trying to do uh Adam Smash is trying to do crowd control with all the cars and he starts moving them around and stopping them like the little toy cars and all I could think was wait 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 did you just stop a car with a person in it with like a just toy, to yeah. a stop with your hand oh no Oh, please tell me. Oh, like, it wasn't like a, a gradual stop. It was more like, no, I'm grabbing you like you're a toy See, car the, moving out of control. And so people understand the scaling here. It's like, these things, they're like complaints and we're trying to figure out stuff, but like, it doesn't, it pales in comparison to lasering embryos. You know, it's just, it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We're fine. We're not, we're not at that level. Yeah, Adam there's Smasher's a scale. Adam Smasher's just kind of clumsy and not very good. Yeah, they want... He's not Gookster, he's the wacky comic relief character uh, in this Woo game. <laughs> um, bu -bu -bu -bu. Yeah, and so turns out the crown has been she, Lady gave it to Kid and Kid is running back to apartment with Crown. Uh, I guess because she thought that Dr. Fate might try and steal it off her, which he could easily have but like, done. But didn't. But like, I don't know, man. Maybe he should. <laughs> You know, well, you know what like, I mean? Like, he can teleport. Um, so he when he well. knew that that yeah. crown was in the bag, that they show it. Uh, uh, he 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 looks up and he sees Hawkman fighting um, Adam, and then he looks back at her, looks up, and then decides to go and help him. And it's like the bag, dude. Grab it. Just grab the bag. Teleport yeah, it back into the ship. No, no, it's, it's like a satchel. I think just put it on your. I know it won't match the suit. <laughs> I know it what? doesn't go with your <laughs> gear. But Dr. That's Fate fine. is flying around with a backpack on. <laughs> <laughs> His cape looks kind of floopy because it's underneath the backpack. Um, oh damn! But yeah, then they explain this. I think we should have had this before the fight. They say that um, Adam destroyed Kandak and he did not save it, and that he can't possibly be a hero, and the reason we're here is to stop him from destroying the city again. I was like, okay, that's a little clearer in terms of why you think, why you approached him the way that you did, but I still don't think it justifies it, because he was clearly willing to talk. So, uh, yeah. but, but still, why did you not bring this up before? Like, to the audience, I mean? Because to us, you guys just went, fuck this guy. <laughs> like, we didn't yeah, that, that's, that's the modification, is you needed them to try diplomacy, and then Black Adam was like, no, fuck this. Yeah. Like, get out of here, I'm killing you. And it's like, well, we yeah, can't leave, we gotta talk. And then, punches. like, he needs to throw the first punch, basically. And then Hawkman can go, like, okay, I guess we're doing it, you know. I guess this is happening. Yeah. It's just the little things, you know, because we even got the little thing where he saved those guys and he's like, they deserve a trial before they got zapped. You know, <laughs> it's like the little the little things of heroes saving people and doing hero things. Trying to have the, the Punisher Daredevil yeah, thing. They are trying to have it. It's not as gripping, but it's not, it's not worthless, <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, baby's first Punisher Daredevil. Uh, so they tried talking to him, but before that... Kid goes back home, and Evil Guy is there, but he's still pretending to not be Evil Guy, which is kind of pointless. Uh, I don't even, like, gives it up straight away. It's just like, eh, whatever. But uh, Chunky Uncle is like, it's fine, you don't have the crown, you need to leave now, don't you? You need to go back to your mom. And it's just like... And <laughs> Chunkle? Yeah, Chunkle tried. Um, but he didn't. Yeah. I like it. This, this got me major points for Chunkle. He, t he grabs the guy with the gun and says for the kid to run, he actually takes a shot to the gut. And it's like, yeah. oh, you're a, you're a good lad. I That's... like Chunkle. Uh, Chunkle's good. Chunkle mm -hmm. is, I approve of Chunkle. Um, but the kid then runs into his room and goes through the little secret exit so the evil man can't get to him. Meanwhile, we're having a little chat with uh, with Black Adam and, and, and folks, and it's basically like, surrender. And he says, no. And then, yeah, it feels like it's the same conversation as we had yeah. before. <laughs> like, Peace Brosnan's like, your powers have given you nothing but heartache. And then the response is, you have no idea. And I, uh, I, I was just like, so neither of you really cared to address each other there. I guess, fine, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And then she she gets a call from the kid and she's like, I know you said you aren't a hero, but you're not a monster. You saved me. You didn't know me and your first instinct was to save me. And I was just thinking like, his first instinct was to fucking vaporize all the men yeah, in that room. Just, yeah, just <laughs> like, eradicate the people around him. Yeah. I don't know. I get that she would plead that. It makes sense. It's just funny because he killed everybody in that room except her. Yeah. Um, yeah, she says, please save my son. And so... We then cut to the kid getting an action scene. The way that it's... you said, please save my son, was just the most uncompelling, <laughs> dry <laughs> delivery. He's like, please save my son. Please do it. <laughs> it's like, please do that. I do not want him to perish. Uh, That's one thing about much. me as a character is that I don't want my son to die. I do not want my son to well, so, I mean, go to the funny thing the is, like, place. she was fine. I just don't have any feelings about her as a character. She was lady. She was there. Uh... Mm -hmm. I don't know. Fine. Was... What does it mean? What does it mean? What were you gonna say? You mean cap? Meme. Or cap? Yeah, cap meme. Song. What were you gonna say? Meme. Meme. What were you um, gonna say before dildo. you interrupted cap? Racism. Um, you think? Well, you think of her as a dildo racism. Yeah. Worst yeah. Kind of racism. Exactly. Anyway, uh, all I was gonna say is that I don't know if I consider her character fine. She's kind of. Uh... I think. I'm oh, sorry. No, I was referring to a performance, not the character. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I guess the performance. Cap, I, uh, I'm inclined sharp to contrast to her son. The more that I've thought now about the the whole what I would say is like a conflict between like the her mode. Yeah, I don't know if I'd call, I. Yeah, she might be bad. <laughs> like as a in terms of being consistently written. I wasn't even like I said. I haven't thought necessarily yet about what I think of her overall as a character in the storyline. I almost forget mm -hmm. she's there. I just meant the lady. Which is funny. Actress is so prominent. Like she's such a yeah, big part of the story. Sort of I think chunk. the son is a great sin in that regard. He is such a prominent yeah. little fucker, and I hate <laughs> him so much from the Speaking, bottom of my heart. That's this, that's what I was trying to get to. Is the the next scene is we get the kid action scene where he like outsmarts and outplays all these fucking mercenaries. And Rags, you were like, oh, why? So cool. Why are they still? They got so many scenes of him doing these awesome. He like. You like the three of them are coming at him from like a staircase, and he like throws like a plant pot or something at them, and they all fall down. It's just like, oh god! And he like he puts his skateboard on like a washing line and cycles all the way down. It's just like, oh yeah! It's like oh, stop. he's kind of. I don't know if the director, or the creator, or whoever was in charge of these decisions, is he the Rock? I, I why would <laughs> why would you is is the idea that you want to have a a fun kid character for like kids to relate to or I, whatever my guess would be that if they were going to make a real case it would be ah uh, see it's the innocent child who like allows black adam to essentially discover how to be a hero and that there is good in the world and to and to try um, and pursue it even if he does that in his own way that would be my best faith well the film's a little bit more of it than that in terms of what i think is doing anyway is at the end black adam says he's not a hero the Kandak has heroes, and then the, it just pans to the kid and the mom. Yeah, to, to those two, <laughs> right? Yeah. So they're heroes, and you know, if they're heroes, you at home sitting there with your Cheetos, you could be a hero you too. Fucking <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Cheeto that's man. Probably, that's, that's probably the the that's a probably stronger way of reading it. Hey, you at home, you like boat. superhero movies? You like to skateboard? You know, like, hmm? you like you know, I'm a hero. <laughs> And see, so someone says, but the kid is such a bad influence. It's like, yeah, because he kind of, he coaxed him into uh, killing those guys in that standoff. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, he encourages him to be pretty violent. Like, it's, it's, um, because I think, I mean, we are jumping the gun. I don't know what the, the, the film's conclusion is on, like, Black Adam and whether or not he's a good guy or a bad guy. Well, we're definitely, like, where he I'll give that yes. Yeah. No, I know. That's, yeah. He's an edgy are... guy. Um, yeah, pretty much, <laughs> at the very least. The weirdest thing I found about that kid action scene was he avoids all of them for ages, and then he's foiled because someone bursts through the fucking wall in a motorcycle and grabs him. And I was like, what? Like, uh, as if to imply, like, yeah, the kid's that good that they had to cheat <laughs> to get him. <laughs> and it's they like had to cheat with the motorcycle? <laughs> and how was that coordinated exactly? Like, yeah, dude, just right, run through the, the through fucking wall. <laughs> I'll count you down. Five, four. Ah, crap. He's right there. All right. Uh, uh, yeah. Can we try that again? Can you just go back up the stairs and so, try that again? Bear in mind, they're all hunting the kid because the kid has the crown. And so he grabs the kid, slumps him over the motorcycle, and starts cycling all the way up. And then Black Adam is there. 
and he says, release the child. And he goes, whatever you say, and drops him down, like, Joker style. And it's like, Kevin, you need his Kevin fucking crown. Why would you just grab the bag? He's evil. And He's evil. Joker so overplayed. Stop it. Very poor but choice it's of words. Set up and pay off. It's a setup and payoff because later on, yeah, uh, it's gonna it's gonna get paid off, and it's real. <laughs> this movie's pretty silly. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit <laughs> silly, just a little so, bit, tiny bit. Black Adam grabs kids again. Th this story made like I don't know how to describe this clunkiness in in terms of just events happening, but. He sets him down, and, and he's like, oh, thanks, you know, you did, he's like, yeah, yeah, and he's like, all right, now I'm gonna go just, just beat up all those guys, and he flies up, and he starts doing brr, brr, brr. and then the kid is just grabbed by evil man, and he's like, right, let's go, and it's just <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. This, uh, this kind of criticism, I've, I've highlighted it before, I still don't really know exactly how to frame it properly, but it's, it's the, it's the Ray Shields thing from Revenge of the Sith. Like, how did this happen? Like, that's just so arbitrary. You're just here. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, fine. That's happening now. And it's just like, yep, he, he, the kid was like escaping everybody amazingly, and then someone burst through a wall to grab him. But then Black Adam was there, and so he's not. But then he was. You're like, Pfft. that wraps it up in a neat little boat, don't you think? Yep. And so now he's captured. It's like, oh great. But then it, it, it keeps going. Black Adam is beating everyone up. He bursts out of a wall, just just a, just a wall. It's whatever. And he looks down, like very specifically far away and down, to see a bag on the floor with comics hanging out of it. So he knows the kid's been kidnapped. <laughs> I had to like double Neat. take on that because I was like, wait, so he he like flew up, attacked everybody, burst out of one of four walls, and then happened to be in the right position to see that the bag had fallen out, meaning that someone must have taken him because he wouldn't have left his comics behind. He would never leave his comics <laughs> behind. I would never go anywhere without my comic books. I would and, not leave them at home. And if the director, writer, whatever was like, well, how else can we translate to Black Adam that the kid has been captured again? It's like, you just have the kid scream his name. I can't, Black I, 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 Adam! I, I, <laughs> Black Adam! <laughs> <laughs> well, at that point, I guess he'd say, is it Teth Adam? He's still called Teth Adam. Teth he Adam. He yeah. yeah, Teth Adam. Because they do... Yeah, he hasn't decided on his cool superhero name yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh... He's gonna call himself Mordor. <laughs> Mordor. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if he if he tried to come up with the name? It's like, oh, that's already been taken. Like, I'm gonna call myself the Superman. It's like, oh, fuck, man. Sorry, I hate to break this to you, but... Uh... Like, what do you yeah, mean? That but I am taken. a pretty stupid man. It's like, no. You just... uh, it's like, yeah, no, sure, but like, you, it's <laughs> not, you know, that's not, it's, you gotta try something I don't know, else. I'm pretty, I'm pretty hulking. Um, Maybe I could be called the Hulk. Wow, is that, does Marvel exist in the DC universe? Because we know that DC exists in the Marvel universe. And, and we know that DC exists in the DC universe, thanks to those comics. Yeah, the comics had the DC, because they were actual DC comics. Like They, they were, were all Rebirth comics, and like there was underwear Superman and everything. It was yeah. quite weird to see. Um, like, <laughs> and, uh, That was the first sign as well, because there was no black Superman suit. And it's like, oh no, he might not, oh wait, no, we're jumping a gun again on that. <laughs> oh no. We'll get, we'll get to it. Oh no. Well, we'll get we'll get there. We'll get to the thing that uh, may may have gotten a few blood vessels to boil. Um, he starts funnily. chasing motorcycles, and then he's holding one of the dudes, and he's like, the dude is like, "Let me go!" That he's like, "You should choose your words more carefully," and drops yeah. him. Whoa! See, uh, got him. Corporation Chekhov's. Yeah. You should let me go, please. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, whenever, whenever a character <laughs> says "Let me go," they must drop them to their death. That's the rule. It's gonna be a, yeah, like a subversion to hold them after they say it. You'd be like, "Oh, that'd what, be the when crazy they say, thing." Let to me do. go, and they're like, "Well, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you down gently." Okay? Or, or please Check let me go. The they go, "No, I will not let you go." And the whole I audience is like, "Whoa, <laughs> yeah. that's crazy, man." And yeah, uh, as the guy is falling, he's like, "Tell the man in black sent." Oh, and he's dead. And it's like, but it's this. too late. You know what? That got a little smile out of me. What do we think? Oh, cast of that joke. Um, yeah. I didn't care for it myself. Neither did I. I was. I, I think you're trying to do the against. catchphrase thing of it too much. And yeah, and, and it, I don't know why he would fit. care about the catchphrase at all. 
Same. I I kind of liked it. It's I don't think it's very good, but it kind of made me smile. Very very straightforward. Yeah. In a very um, horrid way. Tell them about. Oh, man. <laughs> like it's too late. He realized too late that I he think that, get it all out. I'll give it that. I think that's the funniest one of the lot. Um, the fact that um he's like he's remembered it almost in time but not quite and so he has this like uh, uh, fuck well whatever yeah. yeah well when you say your favorite because my favorite joke in the film is not that there's That's another joke not that what i, I said like. i thought you said you said it was your favorite of no it's probably uh, the of best like... of that joke because the, oh, sure. there's like three yeah, 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 okay. payoffs for that whole thing and i think most of them suck <laughs> yeah i'm inclined to agree uh, but, 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 yeah, so, the, so now he's, well, yeah, we're about to reach what I think is my favorite joke, actually. Um, so they, oh boy. you got, Black Adam is, uh, starting to, he needs to find all the motorcycles that are flying around, rip open their backs to see if they've got the kid in the back, and then, I guess, kill him. Um, and so they're all flying around, and then they bump into Hawkman, who jumps on the back of one of them, and he's, he's like, activate infrared to check if the kid is in there, but then he gets knocked off the thing by Black Adam, who then just pulls out the back to see if he's there. And um, he's like, what are you doing? And he says, I'm searching for the child. He goes, no, you're murdering people. The boy he child. Says, he says, how else do I find the child? <laughs> and uh, while they're having this conversation, the, the the guy he's breaking the motorcycle off is just shooting him with a pistol over and over again. And that, that, is, that is the most I had fun in the whole movie. I thought it was pretty hilarious. That <laughs> like, while he, yeah. he says, what are you doing? He's like, I'm searching for the child while there's just sparks and bullets coming off of him. Like, because he just couldn't give less of a fuck about that guy doing that while he's trying to explain why he's going to be murdering people. Like, I thought it was pretty good, yeah. I like it. No, I, I gotta say, Mola, your description there is a lot... It, it, it conjured imagery in me that's much more violent than the actual scene because when you say he tore their backs open to look for the child, I'm just imagining oh. that he's tearing their spines God, out to look spine. inside them for the child. It's like, what? Oh, no. <laughs> did, he, did he reload? Like, Because I, I feel like that would have made the joke funnier if he was still shooting and then he reloads the guns because he's got to keep trying. <laughs> he just has to keep going. I don't think it lasts that long. In fact, that's, that no, probably would have made it funnier if it did last longer, but... Yeah, like if you just kept doing it. <laughs> yes. Because uh, there's an extra layer of like, you know, stop murdering people while the guy is shooting at Black Adam. Like, yeah. it's just funny. Uh, yeah, you know, he doesn't care. And he says, uh, I can help you, but no more extrajudicial killings. And he says, I don't need any help. And they just leave. Then uh, Adam Smasher and Cyclone are sent out again, and they're, they're trying to destroy these motorcycles, I guess. And. You got, um, you got another joke, I guess? You, you, we'll get ratings on this one. So you got um, Adam Smasher right. almost swipes Black Adam and says, Hey, dude, look out. I almost hit you. And then he hits uh, Hawkman as he's saying that. And Hawkman says, Me and you. Me and I, you. I approve. I think it's all right. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I think it's okay. Mm. He's a big clumsy it guy. It fits in with the level, it, it's the appropriate level humor that I've come to expect from this movie. I think that's fair, that's fair writing. Uh, so then, uh, Adam is chasing someone who decides to fully hyper-engage his Eternium or whatever, and goes at a speed that legit looked like he was traveling around the world, <laughs> just like, instantly or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And it's the it's it creates a shot that people making fun of where Adam's face is like right <laughs> up to the screen. Uh, <laughs> it does look kind of funny. It's really funny. <laughs> I, so, I, I oh, hate uh, really good memes as well. movie discourse is so fucking annoying because like someone will post that and be like, "Holy fuck, this is an actual shot for the movie." I can see that and go here. This someone will quote to that and be like, "Wow, fucking film bros being like, oh, this one shot ruins everything, even though the Calm film is down. intentionally campy." Okay, and it's like we can. It's okay. You can you can laugh at this it's shot. A funny meme. It's funny. It's yeah, funny. You don't have to take it so personally. <laughs> and then someone else would be like, wow, the fucking film bros trying to defend Black Adam. Go watch something other than a Marvel movie for once in your life. And it's like, oh my god, you guys hate each other so much. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just saw, saw the image and thought, yeah, that's pretty funny. That's Wait, it. can you Stay share it? Because I can't remember it. Um, I head. need to find, there was a really funny meme. If you can I find saw. it, I'll, I'll put it on screen, yeah. <laughs> I'm just looking for the memes. Oh, here it is! <laughs> I assume he's already yeah. found it. it is the meme Someone said I it saw. should have been the thumbnail. I will make it the thumbnail. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Nice. <laughs> Very nice. No, you, you got to show the context. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds how come I'm thinking about Megamind for some reason? I think it's, 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 it's like a close <laughs> angle or is it a wide angle lens or something yeah, close yeah, up yeah. on the face? Because it's it, the no bitches one. That's what you're thinking of. It makes it yeah, yeah. I think that's why. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty brilliant. That one's great. I love that stupid image. Usually the best thing to come out of the movie. This is where I just like, we can just have fun with it. We don't need to be like, the, the whole exactly. movie sucks or is great because of this one image. It's fine. Uh, yeah, it was pretty funny. So, um, he catches up with him after a while, then they both like crash. And I remember Rags, you were like, so wait, he thinks the kid might be in the back of this motorcycle. That kid is fucking dead. <laughs> it's like, yep. Yes, the kid is definitely dead. Um... Which is even weirder As because pesky brain. I guess I keep forgetting to turn it off. He um yeah. he opens the back of it and it shows the kid getting revealed, and then it shows Adam like oh damn it, and then it shows that the kid isn't actually in there. They just spliced someone else opening something else that the kid was in to make you think for a moment that he had found him. Um, it's, I found this incredibly annoying as an editing choice. Yes. Yes, it's this very yeah. cheap sort of uh, rip off of the the Silence of the Lambs fake out at the end of the movie. Yeah, well, not the it very is. end of the movie. Yeah, yeah, it's that thing again, but worse. Because <laughs> uh, oh, it, it basically only serves to confuse. I think you get you get zero benefit yeah. almost from people doing the whole like oh oh yeah oh no oh like that, that's what they're going <laughs> for. That's not happening. Most people are like oh yeah. They, they, Huh? Oh, it's so quick to yeah. like it's make not anything of it. fantastically. So yeah, it confuses people. It confuses me as well. Um. <laughs> anyway, Adam's upset, so he tosses the bad guy, and then Doctor Fate shows up, and he's like, "Adam, we can uh uh bring me the prisoner, and I can break his mind." And he goes, "Um, because you killed him, didn't you?" And then you just hear, "Up," and he goes, "He didn't make." I didn't mind that one either. Was right. Mildly amusing. <laughs> All right. it, it, it's that level of mildly amusing that fits in with the rest of the movie, you know? Yeah, it's it is. kind of joke. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's kind of joke that I think I would have liked better under different circumstances. Um, if I was more engaged with the film, I think I would have found that one really funny. I can. Also, the longer yeah. I look at this, that, that that funny shot of the rock, the more I realize that it looks like his head is about ten poster. times larger than his body. Yeah, it really is. Kind of gives that <laughs> Mega Mind vibe, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, someone I forgot to mention that one of the ways he kills one of these guys is pulls him off the bike, throws him real fast, real far forward. And then tampers with the bike so that it speeds off into the guy and blows up into him. And the first thing you have is I mean, like very technologically yeah, advanced. Yeah, Adam knows how to use the bikes. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, man, he's super smart too. He probably would say that. I could see the rock being like, yeah, he's uh, he's a very quick thinker, quick learner. Also super strong and super fast, and has lightning powers yeah. and can fly. Heal. He's really great. He's just he's, yeah, he's, he's pretty really all rounder. Great. Yeah, it's pretty good yeah. stuff. Well, um, so then Doctor Fate. Guy. Goes into the apartment and he's like, uh, I am Dr. Fate and Uncle Chungus is like, oh god, how bad is it, Doc? And he's like, I'm not that kind of doctor, but don't worry, because I can see the future and this isn't how you die. He says, oh, how do I die? And he says, electricity. And he goes, but I'm an electrician. And I think that's kind of funny. Was yeah. Mildly amusing. Yeah, I like, uh, I can't remember his name. What are we calling? The Uncle Chunkle. Chunkle. Chunkle, right. I like Chunkle. I like his bit where he goes, how bad is it, Doc? Yeah, that's kind of funny. He says I doctor. like him. Yeah, And he looks like, like a doctor, kind of. I mean, minus yeah, and, the outfit. And then we know from later that Pierce Brosnan gets him onto the ship to heal him. So it's like, okay, cool. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. He's like, but I'm an electrician. That's good. I like it. Approve. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, then we get, um, I think... Oh yeah, this is the, uh, so they tell us that like Chungus was saved by the nanobot stuff, but there's this conversation that happens um, where uh, Adam Smasher is like, wow, those nanobots are really impressive. And nanobots is how you do your wind thing, right? And then she says, the wind thing is aerokinesis. 
and that happened because a scientist injected me with nanobots when I was 15. Then he says, like, wow, that's, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then, it, yeah, it, well, I just, because I want to get the whole thing, because it's really quick. He, she, he's like, oh, I'm sorry. Then she's like, well, no, you know, it's, I, I, I do this now. And he's like, yeah, you found your calling. I hope this is mine. And th that is it. Um, for them, like, his characters. That's about it for the whole movie now. Yeah. Yeah. She has, she has the ability, she's a airbender because she was injected with nanobots. People How say, else would so, it be done? Wait, people are saying <laughs> ex exposition. It's like no, it's just, it's just really shitty dialogue. I don't even. I'm not even aiming for exposition. I'm fine with them explaining to us what the hell's going on. But to say like, oh yes, nanobots. That's how we're healing this man in front of us right now, and also why I control the wind. It's like I'm sorry. Okay. Excuse me. And it's like, oh, no. oh yeah, you probably don't understand. I was injected when I was 15 by a mad scientist. You're like. <laughs> <laughs> just... You just dumped a movie on me. God, stop. That's what I mean. It, 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 wow. And then, you know, what do we do? Like, that's his. What are we doing for him? He's like, I'm hoping this is my calling. Okay. Oh, I'm cool. hoping. Yeah, that's that's it for uh, those two, more or less. And I would go as far as saying that's almost unacceptable. It's like, these two deserve better than that. They're characters. Come on. Yeah, and they're, like, main characters. They're part of the main superhero team. And then you go back and to... And this film um... is long enough, you know? Just, yeah, two hours. Nano machines, right? son. <laughs> uh, you have lady who's really upset because her son's taken, and then Pierce Brosnan's like, "Your thoughts are better spent on things you can change, not those you can't." We will save Amon. It's what we can do, or what we will do, or something. And I was just like, "That's that's better." <laughs> <laughs> you, do you understand? Like, like this already me with my relationship with this film's dialogue. I'm, oftentimes, I'm like, "Ugh," and then I'm like, "Okay, yeah." Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. That was right, fun. Then. The writers were 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 uh, intermittently somewhat talented. Well, I was looking at people. Right? I think so, yeah. I think there are three writers, so I do wonder if maybe one of them is good. <laughs> one of them is okay. Um, yeah, because uh, turns per line. Adam then arrives. He bl blasts through the fucking roof, and uh, uh, Doctor Fate is like, "I suppose you didn't have doors in your day." And he says, "Of course we did. That's how we entered rooms." Which, <laughs> this, it's, like, it, it, makes, it makes me think, because like, he's like, uh, yes, that was called sarcasm, and it's like, yeah, but why isn't he entering places normally? <laughs> like, what, yes. what is with this guy? Like, he just loves property destruction. Strange man. Um, yeah, it's, a also, funny, it's, a, it's a funny enough line going, haha, you, you don't understand things. It's like, of fucking course we had doors. But then the earlier scene where he just walks through the wall and exactly, pushes the like, couch. Well, uh, well, like that's what I mean. I feel like the joke would have worked in other contexts. It doesn't really work here because it's like, but does he understand doors? Like, he doesn't seem to. But like, all right. It just seems. It just seems to imply that he does. That he's just a dick. It's yeah. Like, oh, I guess that's better. That's what we're going for. Because uh, Hawkman drops in two guys ready for interrogation, but Lady starts beating them up, like just give them a little slap and stuff. And so Adam looks at a uh, Hawkman and Doctor Fate, and he's like, okay. I've learned in this modern world that we shouldn't hurt our prisoners. We must treat them with dignity and respect. They're both like, what? and then he just grabs them and flies up into into space. That's <laughs> probably like, I don't know, the closest I've come to at this point in the film to being like, mm -hmm. you know, Adam's like a little bit more aware and fucking around, but at the same time, I'm trying to figure <laughs> out if there's something I'm enjoying there. <laughs> like, is, is that what's <laughs> happening? I'm not sure. It's like, hmm. Uh, or is it just tolerable? Yeah. Most of the time, I'm just tolerated. I'm like, yeah, that's there. Yeah, with me, I was just I was caught up on the sarcasm thing because I, all I could think was like, you know, sarcasm's not a new invention. Like this, uh, I, the my mind went immediately went back to um, ancient Sparta and how um, it was like one of being very quick witted was one of the characteristics that was really valued in that culture. Um, it's just very strange that they're doing the fish out of water thing with him not understanding sarcasm, which just it, it doesn't feel right. If that makes sense. Um, yeah, I know. the only it's... problem is like, with the way this film's written. For a moment, I could be convinced if I were in this universe, like, oh no, they had doors. They've they've had doors for a while, dude. And then they'd be like, oh, like a character. I could believe a character is like, when did doors get invented? Like year one thousand, maybe. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Why not? Why not? 
Um, so he drags them all the way up and, he, and they end up in a storm. There's like a full-on lightning storm going on. And the first thought I had was like, oh, this will be a cool, like, you know, the longer we're here, the more likely you guys are to be struck by lightning, which isn't going to do shit to me, but it's going to fucking annihilate you guys. That's not the scene. He drags them up there with the threat of dropping them. I was like, so why is there a storm? Uh, because it looks cool. Get is fucked. that literally it? Because we did the the dropping thing before. Because it looked cool. Get fucked. Remember, like ten minutes ago, he did the thing where he dragged them up and dropped them, and Hawkman had to drag grab them. Why is there just a, a storm cloud suddenly in the middle of this like bright sunny day? Just, okay, but then secondly, Hawkman Wind. flies up to uh -huh. him to be like, "Don't you dare drop them." That man is like wearing a full on metal. He's like a pipe. Like, shouldn't he get struck by lightning immediately? You'd think so. I was just, I was waiting for it to happen. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but uh, it just doesn't. The, the fact that it's a storm is literally just to look cool. It has nothing to do with anything. I was like, oh, okay. Um, and then the other thing is that he's holding the two of them. He says, I'm not going to drop them. I'm going to drop one of them. And he says, the, the first person to start talking lives. And so he's, uh, one of them says, uh, I'm not telling you shit. And so he drops him. Then the second one sees that happen. He goes, oh, okay, the, the, they're in a desert. They're in the blah, blah, blah. They're in the, and then he just drops him in the middle of explaining, like, where the kid is. I thought that was so yeah. fucking weird. Because, like, uh, Adam then takes that piece of information he got to the lady. And then the lady's like, oh, fortress in the desert? I know where that is, yeah. It's like, probably could have found out where that was from the guy who was telling you everything. Hey, yep. But you just dropped him That's for no reason. <laughs> like... He might have had more to tell you about how well it's guarded or something if you asked. Yeah, was, you know, uh, weird. And then Doctor Fate is like, "You said you wouldn't hurt the prisoners," and he says, "That was sarcasm." Because well, it's technically just a lie, which got a laugh out of my cinema <laughs> yeah. and myself. So good uh, job. That, yeah, that was one of my. I think that's one of the better ones. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was just a lie. He just it was lied. just a lie. <laughs> yeah, he was just he just lied. That was a sarcasm. Like you see, what happens there is that they switch Schwarzenegger films for a second from T two to Commando. Oh, that's a good, great one. Everyone, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Hawkman's like, "I told you to stop killing people." He says, "I did it your way. I, I waited until you were there to save them." And then Doctor Fate says he has a point. No, he doesn't. And I was just like, "Dude, what are you doing? Like, what are you stirring the pot, bro? <laughs> like, what?" Coward, <laughs> He's like, did "Oh yeah, that was totally the good thing he did." Enjoy the meme. <laughs> um, that he's, he's a good man. And then Adam's like, "You call yourself a hero, yet you'd let these people go free to hurt more in the future." And for a moment in the summer, I was like, "Oh, we doing we doing the thing? We doing it? We doing one of those doing things?" It? Oh. And this then is uh, Hawkman is like, "Heroes don't kill people." And then. I'm pretty sure this is the trailer thing, right? It just goes, I mm -hmm. do. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh, oh my no. god. He's not grandpa. He's cool. <laughs> he's oh, not, no. he's oh, not, oh, he's not your grandpa Batman. superhero. He's, yeah, he's your edgy. He's definitely not my superhero. grandpa. Whoa. <laughs> you and the rest of the Justice cool. League. And then they fight. It's not really, but no. Uh, yeah, they and they fight. fight so hard, they knock out where the crown was hiding, which is incredibly convenient, but whatever. Uh, fine. They, they, they happen to move their... And this, this, at this point, by the way, I was just like, what is Hawkman power set? Is he as strong as Superman? Because, good goddamn. Not meant to be. He, uh, he tanks fucking everything from Black Adam. And keeps... Yeah, uh, I respect weird. the whole, like, a lot of people bring it up. They nailed the part of him that he never gives up. And it's like, no, I got that. They even say that in the movie. Um, it's just that it's it's not as impressive when he's just apparently invincible. Uh, yeah. Yeah, my, my whole mind kind of glazed over during that fight because I knew nothing was going to happen no. to either of them. Even Dr. Fate didn't knew. He didn't care. He was, he was teleporting around <laughs> the room, avoiding them, which I thought was fun as well. Uh, I'm here on Wikipedia, um, Hawkman's page, and it even says in the powers and abilities things, Hawkman is known to have slightly enhanced physical strength. Oh, slight? Oh. He's, oh. he's, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's a strong in boy in this one, which oh, yeah. is fine, but, you know, a little more than slight. Hmm. <laughs> He also has a, his little weapon. It's like it can like phase into different weapons. It didn't look like it was mechanical. It looked like it was magical, but I wasn't sure. Kind of, yeah. It had that yellowy glow about it. That mace. Mm. At, at this point, the DCU definitely doesn't give a shit. It's like whatever everyone's doing. Sorry, yeah, I I, I, I mean, fucking 
went over it without even probably... They healed the gunshot wound to the gut almost instantly with nanobots. It's like, oh, yeah, that That's might just revolutionize the medical yeah. industry. No. No. It's, it's just like Wakanda. Oh, they're going to keep it to themselves. Because they're cunts. Fair enough. <laughs> it's unacceptable, but like they'll they'll probably. I imagine that's what the Justice Society would be like. They're like, you know, it's, this is our tools, and we don't we can't just we can't just we can't just give that to a hospital. That would be crazy. That would be madness. It needs to be our special thing that we do. We want to feel good about ourselves going around the world saving one person at a time. Yeah, we deserve <laughs> it. <laughs> Alrighty, Chunk Chunkle deserves it. The the regular human. I'm glad they it. spent it on Chunkle. Especially because the Justice Society is like apparently two people, maybe. Oh, another good joke. I'm, 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 I'm staked on it now. It's too late for me, like, uh, to say that. I, I hope this is a good one because I'm pre. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna go as far as saying this is one of the best ones. Uh, they, they're all meeting up again. They've got the crown, and they read out the thing that says "Life is the only path to death." And uh, Pierce Brosnan's like, "Seems a little obvious. Could, could it maybe have another meaning?" And Adam Smasher says, "Well, how about?" Life is short, and you gotta you gotta hold on to the ones you love. And there's like a gap, and then Hawkman just goes stop. Like, <laughs> okay, his delivery is better. Uh, but I thought it was pretty funny because like they're all like, what fucking bullshit nonsense is this? It has nothing to do with the crowd. It doesn't help us in our mission. He's just saying a thing. <laughs> yeah, that's why I find it. It was amusing. It was mildly amusing. Uh, ba -ba -ba. So, where are the rest of the 19 members I'm assuming the Justice Society we did go over this <laughs> it's, it's like two members if not one it seems to just be Hawkman and then he employed yeah. two children off the street and some old dude who's friends with from a war that yeah, they and fought yeah he dropped the old dude <laughs> out of retirement essentially that's how it felt that was the vibe yep um, so they agree, so, yeah, the, the crown, right, is what leads to, like, you know, hell on earth or whatever, potentially, and so they want to, like, get rid of it or put it in a vault, you know, that sort of thing, while she says, no, he's got my son, and he wants the crown, so we'll use the crown to get my son. Very much like a, mm, um, we've been through this before in a couple of other things, I think, is one I'd reference, but I don't want to, um, but... It, it, the scene doesn't very much earn it, is kind of what I'm getting at. She's like, you all need to work together to use this crown to get my son back. When Pierce Brosnan's whole thing is like, that crown is incredibly important and we need to keep it the fuck away from evil people. And mm -hmm. she's just like, no. And then they go, alright, we'll go save the son. It's like, mmm. Okay. I don't think so. I don't actually. think so at all, no. <laughs> mm. It's funny as well because she picks up the crown and, and Hawkman is like, hey, give me back the crown. It's like, you motherfucker. <laughs> you guys are like hyper strong and fast. There's no way she's just teleported out of her. The... Doctor Fate can wave his hand and teleport items away or to him. Like the, they just pretend that they don't have these powers sometimes. It's like, oh, she's holding it. She might throw it away or something. I don't know. How scary. Uh. So yeah, the the they're gonna go try and get the kid, and then Hawkman's not liking this plan, and Doctor Fate says to him. A wise man once told me a bad plan is better than no plan. Oh, this is like oh, oh god! <laughs> it's it's funny because this is even worse now. It's like you have the crowd. Like what? No. <laughs> um. Yeah, and then and then Hawkman says he's a murderer, Kent, and if he turns on us, that kid is as good as dead. And that really, to me, was like, that is not the primary issue. The primary issue is the crown falling into the wrong hands. We've been over this. The kid dying is what's going to get sacrificed. That's the idea, right? But now we're like, no, we'll save the kid. I don't know. I really feel like I, I understood what the characters wanted more than the person writing the dialogue did. Um, and it gets confusing when that sort of thing happens. So anyway, Hawkman's like, who's going to die on the mission? Clearly someone's going to die. Who is it? And, uh... He says, when it's time for you and I to say goodbye, you'll know. All I can tell you is that there's still time to change the future. These these are the these are the neutral lines I was talking about. Sort of like Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a very good meme. 
<laughs> oh, it gets better the more you look at it. Uh, oh, good times. So they arrive and they start making a plan. And Rags, do you remember how you felt at this point? Um, incredibly you, you know. disinterested with no, 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 no it's not that. Uh, oh, so okay, they, it, was, it was the other way I felt. No, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> talking about they. So think of the plot. They arrive at okay. the fortress yeah. and they start devising a plan. Yeah. I do remember. I do remember this moment because this is at the big quarry place. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You you were like, why are they devising a plan? Just go. You guys are all because like Black hyper Adam is. Yeah. Yeah. You Black got two Adam people who can pretty much teleport in and out. Indestructible. Yeah. He's, he, like I, while I appreciate your willingness to create a plan, I feel like in this sense, a bunch of mooks with submachine guns are probably not going to pose much of a threat, considering that you're all basically impervious to all damage. And so yeah, I think it's even worse. Doctor Fate can just poof poof, and you'll have yes. the kid. So what is the problem here? What is tough about this situation? And uh, yeah, so they start devising the plan, they're talking about it for a while, and then Black Adam just fucking rushes in and destroys everything. And they're like, oh, and they play it for a big old joke. It's big, it's funny that they're trying to. Make, but I'm just like, well, he's right, you know. And the more time you spend not saving the kid, you know. Jenkins. Yeah, pretty much. Um, until he bumps into a energy shield made of Eternium stuff. No, no, nobody can get through it. But I was just like, can Doctor Fate? Can he teleport through it? No? He teleport through it? Yeah, I, don't I was like, I don't know. I just, what if I he cloned know. himself forty times and just kept punching it? Yeah, I could do it. Very true. Um. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that's where the other pop song is, by the way. Really well placed and not at all cringe. Yeah, oh, they said the Saints Road threed his way through the quarry. Um, I don't know the name of the song, but uh, I recognize it. Like I said, I think I, I probably do recognize it from Saints Row 3, of all the places. <sighs> so anyway, they all arrive. It's kind of awkward, too. Adam, like, smashes through fucking everything, then appears at the shield, and then it, like, cuts, and all of them are at the shield. It's like, did you... I didn't... Was that a montage? Yeah, they're just sort of here. Know. Yeah, it was, it was a little confusing. And um, they start bickering. And evil man is basically like, give me crown and I'll give you kid. And so the lady's like, hmm. And then I can't remember if it's Dr. Fate or Hawkman, but they're just like, we don't have the crown. And then she's like, yeah, I do. It's right here. Hello. This is the crown. And they're like, what the fuck? And then uh, Black Adam is like, Dr. Fate, Hawkman, this isn't your son. This isn't your country. You don't get to make this decision. And it's like, you... Hell on Earth, you back. moron. Yeah. Not Hell on Kandak. And even if it was Hell on Kandak alone, that's enough reason to be like, uh, no. <laughs> like, I don't want any part of Hell on this planet. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, it's it it's treated as such a, like, yes, let the mother decide what is the fate of his son. Also, it's like, hello, fate of the world. What are you doing? And nobody, Hell is bad. Uh, it's, yeah, it's really stupid. But not he make the choice? I feel like his character would just take the choice into his own hands. Yeah, probably. I do think that as well. Yeah, he'd just be like, no, I'm making this choice, sorry. Um, he does everything. That's how he does everything. Basically the entire movie. As he is saying, by the way, not your son, not your country, not your decision to make. Um, how do you imagine she can pass the crown over, right? How does she get it to the bad guy? He's probably going to need to stop the shield to let her in, you know? And then re-put re it up. And and that's literally what he does. It goes down for a couple like seconds, and then he puts it back up again. And it's like, wow, Adam, you can travel at like the speed of, the speed of a speeding speed. <laughs> speed of fucking thought. So, <laughs> Just fucking go. And and Doctor Fate is obsessively trying to get at this crown too. And it's like you can teleport, my dude. Like, yeah, just grab it, go get it, yank it out of him, for it, pause him with your your little prisony glass shards that you know hold people in place. Oh well. Nope. So yeah, he's got it. An evil man just starts like monologuing about how evil he is, and he's gonna be so evil, and he's gonna take over the whole <laughs> evil with all the evil. And then aims his gun at the kid, and I, I think you at the time, Rags, were like, "Wait, what? Why? Why? Why?" And um, the the bigger part to clue you in on something that's weird is that he opens the shield up as well. And it's like, why would he do that? And it's like, oh well, he looks like he wants to die, which no character puts together. I always because uh, when I first saw it, I was very confused about that. I didn't know why the shield went down. But they do show him closing it himself, and then all of the heroes get to do shit about it. And it's like, nobody brings that up, that 
he took the shield down himself. Why do you think he did that? Think about... Playing... But anyway, mm. super evil. And so he, he threatens to kill the kid because he's trying to provoke Adam into killing him. And he's successful. Adam does a Spartan rage and he blows up because he's so angry that this is all happening. And uh, you have... It's a big old slow motion. Um, and it's, kind of, it's sometimes a bit funny because some of the faces people make in slow motion. I know they want it to be badass, but some of them kind of like, you know, screaming. Yeah, sometimes, and sometimes you just want things that can't happen. So, <laughs> you know, so Adam Smasher protects Wind Lady, Doctor Fate protects the kid, and Hawkman protects the lady because Adam just explodes and like essentially vaporizes the woman. And that's when Adam realizes that he shouldn't have the power that he has. He's out of control. Which I think if we match that with the part earlier where Dr. Fate saved the, the people from him exploding there, it's like, yeah, you know what, there you go, that's enough references, and it's a, it's a part of his history we, we find out pretty soon enough. So he's willing at this point to understand he's, uh, he's, he's kind of out of control, he's a, big old, he's a big old weapon. And Eelman's dead anyway, right? They got him, even though his skeleton is like holding the crown, it's kind of awkward separate but... Um, but he gives his backstory finally, Adam. You get the the true backstory, not the fake one they told us in the beginning. True one is his son from that opening. That was that was that wasn't him. That was his son. He's super cool and heroic, and became a Shazam person. And then, uh, I guess in response to him doing cool Shazam things, the villains killed his mum and his dad at the time, which would have been the Rock guy. Only they didn't, well, they tried, for some reason they really hurt him, they didn't kill him. They killed the mum, but they injured the rock real bad. Kill him. Which, man, if they had, actually, this would have changed the whole story, but... They didn't, and so the son, in an attempt to save the dad, passed the power on to him. With the whole Shazam thing, and I forget if they made these rules in, uh, in the Shazam movie. Because, uh, he duplicates the power over, right? He doesn't, doesn't transfer he it. He does. Everybody. Yeah, he duplicates. In uh, which, by the way, I'm I'm less of a fan of. I actually way prefer the idea that you could pass it over, not duplicate it. Yeah. Um, seems like that could be a little bit broken. I am a. But yeah. Uh, he passes it over to his dad. His dad is saved, and then he is sniped by an archer. I think it goes right into his heart, killing him instantly. And so, uh, the rock with his newfound powers, rages the fuck out and annihilates all of Kandak. That is the actual history, and then the wizards imprison him because of that. Okay. Uh, thoughts? Thoughts and feelings on this? What, 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 do, we have, what do we have? Mm hmm. Really? Okay, well, you know, that's controversial, but I'll allow it. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Okay. I'm so very. Com I'm confused. <laughs> so I just described his entire backstory and asked for your thoughts. I didn't realize that was so confusing. <laughs> like, I didn't catch it. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'll I, just. I'll do it myself. <laughs> fucking <on>. Thanos style. <laughs> I think this backstory is pretty okay. I don't actually hate it. I think it's kind of neat. We talking mean, about Black I don't think Adam? there's any reason to dislike it. I don't really think it's... that there's anything like that's totally wrong with it or flawed. Um, yeah, it's fun. It's talking about Black Adams, yeah. It functioned would be the most important thing to say about it, which is not yeah. high praise, but you know. Oh, I'm gonna yeah, have to fine. preface. I have no idea what his actual backstory from the comics is. Okay, so if it's much worse than that, fine. But I, I'm just going from what they told me in this, and so uh, it, it reminds me of Kratos. It's unconventional. I like the idea that the power is passed on to someone to save them, but they're probably not the fucking guy for the job, and uncontrollably detonate several times and kill a whole bunch of people as a result of it, but simultaneously don't really care too much to be a hero, but at the same time, you know, they're not like an evil person. You know, there's, there's, there's something going on there. And at this point, I was like, you know, I get it, the whole, like, he's not like other heroes thing, because this is definitely, like, he's kind of in his own camp at this point. Because he's not even Punisher doesn't really even count like this. This isn't the same thing. Because he's not really motivated to like save the world. He's kind of just around. He has power and he hates some people. 
but he's also yeah. not evil. You know, that's a, that's a different thing that they've got going on. The unfortunate There's... thing is that he's played by The Rock, and I like The Rock, but I don't <laughs> think this works. Uh... No, that's my what, problem. You mean you too. don't think it works in terms of his performance? His acting? You're not convinced of it? Well, because he, I mean, I'm assuming it's pretty much agreed upon, but like he didn't play a character here. He's pretty much the rock. Oh, he played he's the rock. Yeah, normal. I was. Not he's at all. kind of like not interested in him at all. More standoffish. More alieny. He looks a rock no. with an alien variable, which is not at all what yeah. they told us this character is. An AI generated <laughs> well, rock. I mean, it's. I think uh, before the film came out, there was a well-founded perspective of Dwayne Johnson as a Black Adam. Hmm. And I think after the film, it's like, yeah, <laughs> you know, like maybe this wasn't the best choice uh, to play no. this character. I so think it, I, that's probably fair to point out how incredibly inconvenient that they got him right after he gave up his powers. If they knew that was something he could do and would do. I don't know. Maybe that was a trap. They were hoping he would do it. But then that really didn't work out for them, huh? No, it didn't. Sorry. Blasted the entire city. <laughs> yeah, so everything. there's there's yeah. definitely a weakness in there somewhere. I just need to figure out exactly what everyone's up to in that scene. Um, so I, I have a couple problems with the backstory and how it lines up with his characterization that go a little bit beyond his just sort of lackluster performance. I think the movie tries to frame it at least a couple times in the movie tries to frame it like, oh, so his character is motivated by revenge. That's sort yeah. of sort of how frame him destroying the evil king is that um the problem with black adam and what makes him not a hero is that he is motivated to he's he's not motivated by justice he's motivated by revenge um but then with this twist in his backstory that he wasn't the son who was the revolutionary wanted to be a leader for everybody mm -hmm. um i just i don't uh, they, they feel like different people to me um because I, I'm just confused. I think to, to maybe help you out, something I'm starting to realize in real time is it seems like a really good opportunity, narratively, to have... You have a character who wanted revenge, and he got it, and now he's in this world. What's his... What's he gonna do? What's his plan? It, like, he's so, he's so divorced in terms of time from the thing that created him. What, what exactly is... You know, what is he, what's left for him to do? Is he totally empty, you know? Like, that he, he just, he doesn't really care much for life in general? Like, is he hyper-apathetic? I don't think we get a good grasp of how he feels about all of this now, and what he's going to do moving forward. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I find all that much more interesting than with what they conclude on this movie. Um, but I still think they they, yes. they conclude on something. They do. It's just that I don't. Ah, uh, they do. Yeah, it's just not very not great. Because okay, so part of it is that his performance, anyway, or at least his direction, makes it such that like while he's going around kind of obliterating people in the beginning, he's more or less kind of confused or at least apathetic. Mm -hmm. He's not. He's not a rage monster in any sense. He doesn't seem motivated by vengeance. He's just kind of killing people. That's actually what a fair thing. I think that we he he wants to play the hyper subtle rage man, which is basically no rage, <laughs> like compared to Kratos. Yeah. yeah, there's basically no rage at all. And then the movie, I think I, I can't remember any specific lines right now, but I think the main woman makes some passing lines about how he's fueled by rage and vengeance and things like that. Um, oh, I can help you there. Hawkman says that the legend said that his rage almost destroyed Kandak, and then the woman echoes that while talking to him. But I guess the thing is, is in what direction now? The rage fueled him to destroy Kandak, but now what? Yeah, like, that's kind of, the, that should have been the question of the film, is like, now what do I do? I did what I I lost the thing that I valued, and then I got my revenge. Now what? Like that's yeah. probably what it should have been about if we were going to explore. We've got a character who well, is he, and out he gets of time he gets like one, fucking you know? you know used by some kid basically. Yeah, yeah like how do you feel about that. Like, what is his? Does he? I mean, here would be a really important question. What does he? So he cared about. We don't know if he. I guess he didn't really care about conduct in the past. 
Is there any reason why he would now? And if so, why? And I get the impression the film would be, oh, well, there were good people there. It's like, yeah, but there would have been good people in conduct back then. So what changed? Now they tried to steal that old man's attorney. Why why have we concluded he didn't care about conduct? Uh, Oh, well, I mean, I, I don't. I mean, he basically encouraged his son not to, like, be a hero for conduct, right? Oh, yeah, well, so that wasn't because he doesn't care about anyone there. Uh, or no, anyone. no, no, no. Like, uh, yeah, maybe maybe what I mean is it's not that he doesn't care, but that he's not motivated enough that he would go out of his way or put himself in peril to save it, you know? Like, well, yeah, but, that, that, but I now think there he's are... going to embrace it. Yeah, he embraced it now because he's got the... He has that moment of his son telling him to... And then he has, yeah. and to be fair, what Doctor Fate says, there's some things that Doctor Fate says in his final speech to him that I quite like. I think we'll go over it when we get there. We're almost there. Um, uh, there, there there's, guess, there's some stuff. Yeah, I guess the one thing that what, that threw me about the change in his backstory is that it seemed that most of the first half of the movie was kind of setting up this idea that okay, you are a and you're oppressed by these, you know, a, a tyrannical king or some sort of foreign power. And like you're like, what do you do? Like it, it, setting, distinguishing between a hero and a villain in that sense, being the person who's motivated by vengeance and the person who's motivated by justice. It's sort of a, di- a dichotomy that they imply in the first half of the movie, and then when they when they change his backstory such that he wasn't that kid at all. He was the guy who said, "Oh, keep your head down. It's how you'll stay alive." And then he's motivated by vengeance specifically for them killing his son but then like like Pringy said like now that he's here i don't understand what he wants at all like really and that's what the i think i think as we sit here and talk about this the way mm-hmm. to make black adam a more interesting film is to put a lot more thought into that question black adam he was a man who essentially failed and the opportunity to be a hero in the past uh, and instead, that caused him to get very angry, and it destroyed Kandak, kind of, and it destroyed him. And now, he is, like, 5,000 years removed from that event, not in terms of his personal, you know, feeling on it, right, because it would have basically been yesterday, but the reality is that he now has these feelings that are rooted in something that felt very recent to him that are totally irrelevant now, like, in terms of the broader machinations of this world. And that this is, like, the the struggle that he has to deal with. The thing that is upsetting him and the thing that's holding him back is, like, long gone. He needs to figure out how he's going to maneuver through this world, what he's going to value now, uh, how it comes about. And, like, that should be the struggle, is basically finding a place in this. And I think that the film would say, well, yeah, that is what the film is about. It's about Black Adam figuring out what his place in the world is. But all I would say is, I don't think that that comes through very consistently in the film. No. And when yeah, it does, it I don't think it's particularly strong. Like, Wait, this he's, is actually... He's wandering around for his I'm first half. I'm getting a little half. bit upset. I'm getting a little bit upset, because, like, I feel like there's a really good story here with what you... Even the premise itself, that there's a really good story here that they didn't identify. Um... Damn. Well, yeah, because like um, <laughs> ah, we've damn. had like people get given power that they didn't necessarily want, but this is slightly different. Of you didn't necessarily want it, but yeah, I'm happy to have it. Like th- th- there's a lot going on Pretty here much. that's like different. Yeah. And usable. Yeah, exactly. It's a uh, it's an archetype that actually isn't very present uh, amongst the roster of DC characters. Mm. But just having him be like a slightly edgy superhero that makes him very that doesn't make him very unique at all. Fuck, there's like a story there, and that would be really cool to contrast against um, Hawkman in a much stronger way. Uh, Hawkman knows what he wants to do, like he has an objective and he he works towards it and he's very determined to do it, but Black Adam doesn't have that. Maybe that can be something that he struggles with. Maybe that's the kind of guidance that... Maybe that's where the guide... Because I think by the end of the film, I'm not sure what I would say in terms of the resolution between Black Adam and Hawkman... But maybe that was the opportunity, is that from Hawkman, he can gain some, he can gain perspective, essentially. That he can find some motivation to fight. So it's like, oh, you know, in a world that's filled with so many shitty things that happen, what motivates you, Hawkman? And then he just gives him, like, his core motivation. And maybe that's something, maybe at the end of the day, it's that Black Adam may not gain the methodology of Hawkman, but he gains similar motivations like a motivation that's more altruistic and rooted in in something that is um unshakable 
Damn. All right. I'm getting a little bit sad now. <laughs> I feel like there's a story. I feel like I even mean that story specifically, but I feel like there's a story that was that was there that they didn't identify. I mean, there it's rare that we'll come across something that's like unsalvageable, you know? No, I don't think this film is unsalvageable at all. There's potential. I just don't think it was realized. So he gives himself up and uh, they head over to... I don't know, it's like Task Force X black site prison place and uh, Harcourt shows up because she's dating James and, uh, Gunn and uh, I, oh, oh. <laughs> like, why Ooh. else is she there? Like, <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny to think because uh, we, were, we were talking about this before, it's like uh, by dating the guy who's now in charge of DC, it's unfortunate you got Harcourt because at this point he probably could have given you something bigger and it's like, he'll make her bigger he'll push Harcourt into like all these films for no reason bigger. at all Ah, uh, nice. Not even shots fired. It's like I, I imagine that the, she would probably even admit. I mean, they they would both have probably agree. Yeah, yeah. They have a healthy sexual relationship, I imagine, and they probably like each other a fair amount. I think it's a normal thing to say. It's fair enough. Um. Not yeah. I'd be curious if she ends up leading the Justice Society. All right. Let's see. We'll see. Oh, cool. Yeah, She'll most... get laser eyes. Uh, oh, it's laser eyes. <laughs> um. Yeah, and then uh, Pierce Brosnan says, sure you can handle it. And she says, you're the one who can tell the future. You tell me if we can't. Mm. And it, it, I don't know, it's something about that line clunked as fuck to me. Yeah. There's, there's a way better way to say what that line is instead of that. That's like, oh, so badly written. Why can't you get James Gunn to write it? <laughs> he probably would have come up with something. I can write everything. <laughs> That's his job. Um, funny that the first time I heard her say it, I was confused. I was like, the point is that he can tell the future and that he'll know, right? That's what you're trying to say? I don't know, the words you used, I got lost by the end of it. You could have, yeah, as someone just said, it's like, you could have just had her say, why don't you tell me? Like, and that's it. Because cause he can tell the future, we know. You know? We yeah. watched the film. <laughs> um... <laughs> Film. Yeah. And then as she's walking off, she says, You know, they say the gods created us, but we always end up burying them. Um okay. Oh, shut up now, please. So I was I was like, first of all, <laughs> are you talking about Superman and that's it? He came back. <laughs> like so. Yeah, he came back from the dead. And also he could destroy the earth if he wanted to. Also, so, Superman's I mean, not a god. He's an alien. Stop, he's a man. He's a well, he's a he's man, a man, not a god. And then, ah, that's the reference, Jesus. <laughs> but then, Kondog Man isn't a god either, that's just a dude who was bestowed powers by wizards. Isn't that, like, known? I thought that was, like, a thing in the mm -hmm. texts and stuff. So what does she even say? What, well, like, shut up. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Um, so then they kid the kid a cape, and it's really cute, and he stands in the mirror looking at him with a cape, and the wind gill makes the cape flap, and I legit was just like, is this actually just for children to say, wow, Black Adam makes me feel like I could be a hero. Oh. I don't know it what else it's for. for. This kid this kid is so, like, jaded about... I know. <laughs> Someone needs to shoot this child. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't gonna go that far, but I can see how you got there, because he was all friendly and... Right in awesome. his annoying mouth. Not in his cape? Not his cape. Fuck the cape. Can't believe he's riding around on a skateboard wearing some goofy cape with a fucking sweater tied hey, around his save waist. Save your hatred for his worst moment in the whole film. We we're almost there. Ugh. So anyway, Satan arrives. Yeah. So anyway, Satan arrives. Always an important plot point that cannot be. It's uh, it's quite funny. Uh, um, evil, 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 bad died with the crown because he figured out that that's the way it's supposed to work. You need to be killed while holding the crown to access, I guess, super crown Satan mode. And it's so funny because... How did they, they figure that out? Okay. I don't fucking know. I don't care. They read the thing in a mirror or something. <laughs> um, they, so you have this really, like, you know, you go to the wizards and there's this, like, this mystical place and they shoot their wands at you and you go, oh, I'm powerful now. They try and make the equivalent underworld version and he, like, wakes up and he's, like, upside down and it's, like, raining, but also there's fire and brimstone everywhere. And then these, like, horrible demon creatures are like, Blah, you are the new king of the demons. It's like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? I, I love the idea that he thought he was dealing with, like... The king of the demons! That's right, like, like he, he maybe didn't realize what he was getting into. <laughs> like, you oh, wear the crown on the back? One of us. 
this like we've been wondering become... where that fucking thing's been for five thousand years. <laughs> How the fuck did you get it? Where was it? Behind and, the sofa? And one of them Can says to him, "Take the throne and unleash hell on Earth." And I was I had to pause for a moment. I was like, "Does he want that?" Does he <laughs> want that? Yeah. Also, you can't do that yourself. He's I like, get. Oh no, I want to rule like a nice place. And like, no. I know that he hell. Uh, he wants power. But why would he want to unleash hell on it? Doesn't he like Earth? He lives on no, Earth. No, he wants to swim in lava. Yeah, there's that meme that <laughs> so the God is a Gauss meme. To mention that this villain is incredibly thin. Well, um. I, I, that's kind of where I was leading into. I was like, what is his motivation again? It's like, power? I guess. And power corrupts and all that. Well, shit. yeah, because the character <laughs> that is Satan isn't even close to the guy that we've met in this movie. So, like, he's like a new character. Oh. Um... We can talk about him soon because he has some credible dialogue. He has some Ant Man and the Wasp. No, not fucking. It is Ant Man in there. Yellow jacket. I'm going to disintegrate. He has some yellow jacket level dialogue. Yeah, that's the top notch dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> Your existence is insulting to me. <laughs> does he say something uh, like, I'm going to kill everybody you love or something like that? Yeah, he, he does because he's evil man. Because he is he, evil he, man. He makes sheep. The sheep turns into goop, and he's like, "All right, next sheep." That's, That's how you evil. Can tell yep. he's a piece of shit. That was it's way true. worse than when he he turned that actual human being into goop. The oh, sure yeah. is interesting when the guy who gets the mirror version of Black Adam's powers that he just turns into a different person entirely. Yeah, basically. Are you excited for how Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania? They're going to be going to a place that is smaller than particles, but they can breathe. Yes. So excited. They shrink the like, particles yeah. too, yeah. idiot. Fantastic. They're in the quantum realm. An How oxygen do molecule breathe? could fall on them and crush them to death. What is the, what is the temperature <laughs> in the quantum realm? Like, Three. is that... Is that it's about, oh, it's is, really like, cool. What is the nature... Because I don't know if you've seen the trailer rags, but like, there's a whole I'm civilization not. in the quantum realm. Like a what whole civilization fuck? with spaceships. <laughs> yeah, there's like a, there's the a little bunch of aliens and stuff, yeah. Yeah, and, and Kang is... And Bill Murray's in there too. <laughs> he's, he's in the quantum realm. <laughs> so that's like in-universe Bill Murray. Just <laughs> out Bill Murray's just chilling out. I yeah, shrunk down to the realm. size so that I wouldn't get thrown out of a window by a ghost. <laughs> he went to the quantum world to escape Ghostbusters 2016. Yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know if I could fault him for that. You know, Marvel is uh, We've all been man. There. There's always a new thing because we're in Black Panther. It's going to be there was an underwater civilization that didn't yeah. care about Thanos. Now it's going to be that there's a whole civilization that lived in the quantum realm, and Kang was there just hanging out. Was little tiny Kang. Uh... Tiny Kang. Um, but anyway, Dr. Fate is like, man, I was trying to avoid a horrible future, but by locking away Adam, it didn't change anything. And he says, my vision has always showed me a world in flame, but we can stop it. Uh, and he looks at Mr. Mr. Hawkman and he's like, but you're gonna die. And then he says, oh, you should have told me sooner. I have no fear of death. He's like, precisely why I didn't tell you the world needs you. Which, um... It's interesting in my head, because I'm like, does that even line up? Like, telling him he's going to die wouldn't change fate of him dying. Like, like... Well, maybe, I, well, I guess it doesn't, right? Because you just told him. So exactly. <laughs> like, um, that's kind of where I was going to go. This is, you know, it's a bit 50-50 to explain my issue with that line. It's just that it's him saying, well, I have no fear of death. And he's like, that's why I didn't tell you. And it's just like, that doesn't really... Mm. Eh. Yeah, that yeah doesn't... I don't know. You see, what I thought they were doing there is because Hawkman's supposed to have this reincarnation thing going, right? So I thought they were going like, oh, are they leaning into that with the I have no fear of death line because I'll just get reincarnated into another life or something, but that just never comes up just, again. So I think it's just that line. he isn't afraid of dying. He's yeah, a he's, super brave boy. Yeah, he's just, fine, that's fine. Whatever. I've yeah. done it before. Mm. Um, um, and, and I know it was kind of funny to breeze past it, but I do want to talk about how they discover the the correct way to read oh we haven't the... i i yeah i sorry i've done it sort of weirdly and uh, i've said we're, we're not quite there yet because the, that's oh, we're, a oh, we're not there. yeah it's soon oh, okay i got Don't confused worry. Cause one confused. last thing for this scene is that uh uh the dr fate says um you know i remember seeing my first airplane raf deployment heading to the western front everyone came to see them off but i didn't cheer i knew where they were going even as a boy i knew what awaited them 
I've lived longer than I could have hoped for, and the scene changed more than I could have ever imagined. I'm still a sentimental old fool. I just don't want to see my friend uh, die. And I was like, oh, I like that. I like all really of that. Like that. Yeah, scene, nice. actually. Neat. Yeah. Yeah. Where was the films leading into that line? <laughs> I want more. Well, I just want more of this guy. It's like, this is, that's super interesting. You've been movie. around for that Come long. On. You've... Before you even got the helmet, you you you're a person who has a bit of perception about where things are going and what things are going to happen, and you yeah. you have opinions about it that are un that are controversial. It's like, oh, there, there's a whole movie. Yeah, you're right. There's a whole fucking movie there. What are you doing? Character no, here. Just yeah. Just it. How did this get here? Yeah. Also, his delivery is is great. Um, oh yeah. So yeah. Uh, the next next thing is is that. So go ahead, Kath. Yeah. The the how do they find it out? Oh, okay. So they're they're trying to determine what the line could mean. Uh, what's the line they think it is at first? That life leads to death or yeah. something like that. And then uh, they're spitballing and it's like, oh, well, maybe it's like backwards or something. And then out of nowhere, this expert in their the this country's lore is like, oh, they have a mirror dimension. So maybe we have to look at it in a mirror. <laughs> they, they I think I think it's even worse than what you just said. Like it's, the, it's that the hell is the, like reversed or something. Yeah, the yeah. wind lady I think opens with saying maybe he read it in a mirror, like for no reason at all. She just yeah. says it that way. <laughs> it's like oh yeah, maybe that's oh my god, that's it. Oh, it makes sense that he would just read it in a mirror, really. If you think I about think it. so, but it's it's so strange because it's if, if you think about the sentence "life leads to death" or whatever it is. Like, Allegedly. you, you Allegedly. don't literally read it backwards. You just replace the two words at the beginning and the end. Yeah, but have you considered the Kandakian proverb, backwards leads to forwards? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I, I mean, I guess you have to assume the word order is strange, that it allows for that, but okay, fine. So they... Yeah, like anyone picking a blat, it's like, insula magna est. Pff, what do you mean island big is? That's fucking retarded. <laughs> they detect big evil. I think their ship even says like Prince of Demons detected or some shit like that. I remember it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's like funny. we detect the <laughs> demon. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, it they, he pops up out of the ocean wherever he comes and the he's scanners like, were calibrated to demon. <laughs> yeah. Um and so yeah, they the sign of the demon and like how on the nose it's, it is with Pentagram, upside down pentagram on his chest. Oh, it's and ridiculous, and and I love how they just they just head over to him and start shooting at him with a machine gun. They just that's just what they do. They're just like I don't know. He looks pretty evil. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me this guy's not evil. Come on, go on, okay. yeah. Uh, the, it does nothing. We ask for and then he like grabs the part of their ship that disconnects that they are in and tosses that over into the city, and the other part goes into the water. And they fucking crash through. I don't know if that place had been evacuated at this point for all the bullshit that's been happening, but they would have killed a shit ton from that part. Not their fault, they were thrown, but still, it just. You always expect, like, maybe they'll have one shot where you can just see the bottom of the ship where it's just covered in flesh and blood from all the people they splatted across the floor. And no, like, oh, not when no. it's PG 13. Blood of the shield, damn it! It's there. Oh, uh, yeah, there was there. never blood before. Not like many. Can... Whatever. The real tragedy is Sabak is not Shazam backwards. <laughs> um, and yeah, so they all get out, they're ready to fight, and it gets like a tight shot on Satan, and he delivers one of his lines, which is, Now, prepare to die. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, and I was just oh, like, oh, no. <laughs> I will kill you with my evil. That's what you need to do. Repeat again, Buzz I will Lightyear. steal your doom for the <laughs> last time. <laughs> Not today, sir. No, no. You even uh, sir, I can't. You're yeah. such a bitch. This is this point part where <laughs> Doctor Fate is like doing his flism stein up against about to fight Satan, and then it cuts over to the kid. And he's like, "Where's Uncle Kareem?" He's like, "Shut the fuck up! I want to just I'll just watch Pierce Brosnan fight Trunkle. Satan. Why would I want to watch you running around complaining about everything?" Uh, to think that you even can begin to compare to Pierce Brosnan exactly. is <laughs> what what folly. Pierce you Brosnan fool. as Doctor Strange, you the fake fuck you you twat kid, you damned fool. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they're all like trying to beat him up, Satan, and and 
They vaguely look like As they're getting do. somewhere. And then he goes invisible. And Hawkman is like, activate infrared. And then he's like, come on, Satan, what are you doing? Come out. You, you should you're have being a little dick. Uh, should have activated infra dead. Is Satan dead? He died and came back as well. He died and came back as a zombie Satan. The undead? I guess so. I assume so because he died and came back from hell, right? I assume that puts you underneath the broad umbrella oh. that is undeath. Because vampire, like you know, they're undead. Did they go to hell? I don't sort. think so. He did. Not yeah. all vampires. Mm -hmm. I mean, because being a vampire is morally neutral, I would assume. But it depends on what prick god you worship. Well, it depends you on know? your uh, your law, right? Yeah, it's like does is, does your whoever sets the rules of these things, be it God or otherwise, you know, do they think that oh you're you're a you're a vampire, so you're just going to hell. No context necessary. Well Giga Chad. He fucks them all up. Beats them up. They're all getting slaughtered. Oh, oh my God. Like boom, 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 boom. Oh, real Christ. quick, real quick. It's a really small nitpick, but oh. I don't like that this movie thinks that infrared means x ray vision. That's not what infrared light is um, are you a scientist yeah what would you know about this yeah do you uh, have a phd in vision or x-rays uh, <laughs> it's not x-rays those are much higher visionology faster. are you a visionologist you can, have you even you used look... a camera yes okay fine so that's one thing Did you study done. truthology no but you can actually like you, can, you can look up infrared photography and stuff like that it's actually really interesting looking it's Madness. not x-ray vision I already did. You know why I know that? Because Hawkman did too, and that's why he's right. <laughs> the C is always right. We haven't had Maybe. a debate in a long time on this show, and that there, there you go. One. Yeah, you got me good. So. I am the only optical engineer here, as stated. So. Optical engineer. So, uh, I'm yeah. the only visionologist with it's... a master's degree in seeing. Well, if you knew anything about cameras, you'd know that there's a whole spectrum of colors on there. And when infrared refers to detecting reddish type colors, and Satan is like made of fire, which is red. So very true. And he uses it earlier to like try to look at the motorcycles to try to figure out which one the boy's in. I'm just like, that's not what that is. Uh, stop. Well, that's because the boy hate. was wearing red, so he would have detected him with red. <laughs> Very true. Again, ah, that's why it's like a Robin. Robin this thing. is in the director's commentary. You need to check it out. It's really good. <laughs> they talk about the film and why it was written, uh, or how, or why it was written, money. just in general. <laughs> <laughs> just, what motivated you to put these words on the page? It's like I don't know, man. How could you? I, I don't know, man. Money. <laughs> like, I ask myself that every day. <laughs> uh, so yeah, then um, so uh, so he he beats them all up. And he starts heading off, and you're like, oh, where's Satan going? And, and we'll speed ahead and come back a little bit. Satan's goal is to get to the throne to engage the, the undead army assaulting Earth. He needs to sit on the throne to have this happen. Why? I almost no forgot idea. that there was an undead army. I don't know why. I have no I idea. This is, I forgot. This is yeah. clearly a matter of something got cut, because when I was uh, giving it the old, the old checkout with Rungo, um, I legit was like, That's wait, did they, did they explain this at some point that... Like the throne leads to the armies of the undead coming to Earth. No. Why? Why? It's just a th yeah, throne. It's not, it's not like a special. Th why is this throne like? So if you just if you just punch the throne and it crumbles, is that it? The hell, uh, hell armies can't hell do shit. Cannot, yeah, hell cannot conquer the planet Earth if you destroy the ancient Kandakian throne. Which luckily it wasn't in that five thousand year period of it just sort hmm. of hanging around. It wasn't, you know destroyed so, or dismantled or... but those are our stakes like you got to stop him from getting to the throne otherwise hell's on it it's like oh and then they have this shot of how you know they've all been beaten so it's kind of fucked now he slowly floats toward the building with the thrower did it really slowly floating he wants to enjoy the world before hell takes over he just yeah, wants yeah. to take a few last moments Breathing to it enjoy in, what know? he he wants to savor the sight of what he thought he was going to rule when it turns out <laughs> Yeah. Lol, nope. Rivers of fire and brimstone castles and whatnot. And uh, Doctor Fate realizes, oh boy, this is it. We're, we're coming to the end. Oh no. And uh, and then it doesn't matter, you know, because Hawkman's like, whatever. We're gonna we're gonna do what we can. We got to stop him. But then they realize there's a barrier oh. around the the building. What's going on? And it's, it's Doctor Fate, and he's like, I ain't. You guys can't come in. I'm gonna go in. Because I didn't tell you my whole vision. 
I found a way to prevent your death. And uh, the, the, the clear indication being it's going to be him that dies instead. Um, and he says uh, he's had an extraordinary life, always with one foot in the future. And that uh, for the first time in a hundred years, he can look ahead and see nothing. And it's beautiful. Which uh, I really liked. As a, I like that. As yeah. A line from him. Yeah. I am pro that line. It would have meant a hell of a lot more if we had like a whole Doctor Fate movie. <laughs> a whole Doctor Fate movie yeah, where he perhaps. tries to make that choice, but unfortunately, no. God, that's lame. Yeah. Oh, that's really very lame. lame. <laughs> so very, lame. Very, very lame. And uh, yeah, and he has a big old final fight with Satan that I quite like as well. Uh, considering you're dealing with two giant magical beings that seemingly have infinite power, I think they handled it as well as you probably can. Uh, he uses all of the powers we're familiar with, and he seems to be getting more and more exhausted as time goes on, which is probably the only way you can really do a character like Dr. Fate, like, that he's got a bit of a battery. Yeah. yeah. Um, otherwise, you just, you know... But uh, yeah, he says, um, I am Dr. Fate, sorcerer, agent of the Lords of Order, defender against darkness and chaos, but even my powers can't defeat you. And then, see, because that, that's, that, that's pretty neat, the way they do it, this, the, the voice, Pierce Brosnan's delivery and the, and the design of him and the, what he's, he knows he's going to die while delivering this. It's kind of cool. They have the evil villain man that say in response, there's no one that can defeat me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yep. Um, and so then, that's clever. Which, which I am fun. your father. Which sets up uh, him to say there is one, and Doctor Fate, while fighting Satan, wakes up Adam. He says, "You're the only one that can defeat the Demon Champion." I think that's actually what he's called: is the Demon Champion, and it's just what a lame fucking the, name. The Demon Champion. They couldn't have just. They could have just been like, ah, fuck it, we're gonna pull well, some. Well, Hawkman calls him Sab Sabak, but Sabak is the name of the crown, isn't it, or something? It is the name. It's the it's crown, the crown of, of Sabak. Oh, right, okay. Well, so. So Sabak belongs to. Demon so Champion it's, it's very simple. is said you... a couple of times, but so is. Do you think oh, that, okay. like. Do you think they just didn't? I wonder if they changed their mind or they didn't clean well, up the script. They, they, they didn't. They also they also call Black Adam the champion of these people sometimes. Oh oh, you're right. There's a line that refers to both of those. Actually, we'll we'll get to that. Oh yeah. Well, fuck it. It's it's it it's, it's relevant. Like Angel season four vibes. It's relevant it's because we're talking about his shitty dialogue. Part. Once Adam comes back, ugh, fuck. He's like, I'm a, I'm a fight you now, and Satan says to him, "Let the fate of conduct be decided by the true champions." Oh God! God. <laughs> Every <laughs> fucking line out of this creature, out of this dude's mouth. <laughs> Stop talking. Um, so while we're talking up. about uh, Black Adam's return, um, do, so so I, I want some input on this. So do we find it to be a bit bullshit that he oh. had to? Fight his way out. I haven't even. And then let me summarize it. Then you could, you could go for it. Uh, so because oh. I skipped ahead just for that line, I'll skip back. So uh, okay. Doctor Fate unlocks his his device that's keeping him in the in the black site, whatever it is, and then uh, some men that's attack. Convenient. Mr. Mr. Black Adam, and 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 then like I'll let you go. I'm just gonna say that. The, uh, describe as it happens. Many soldiers attack the non-powered Black Adam who has a series of devices all over him as well. Um, he defeats all of them and then tries to swim away but gets shot twice, I think. Once in the back, once in the arm or something like that. And uh, says Shazam because he manages to just reach the surface and with his last breath has, has the chance to do that and becomes superpowered again. That's the summary of that scene. Why don't you why don't you go ahead with with the seventeen problems? So there's a, there's a few things wrong. Um, and I, I'm trying to think of what order to do it in. I guess I'll just do it. As the order I in which think... they happened. Yeah. Uh, so for starters, um, <laughs> Teth Adam was not a a soldier. Um, he, like everything in this this film has been all of his action prowess has been the fact that he's just super super powered man that can just tank bullets and uh, things and stuff, but. He shows some 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 interesting competence fighting these elite trained guards um, as he's breaking out. Uh, so that's a, a little bit bullshit, little little tiny bit bullshit. Secondly, he jumps out into the ocean. Um, so there's a little thing called water pressure. 
meaning that as soon as he jumped out there, he probably should have been crushed in like a tin can um, under a, a hydraulic press. Like that, he should have just died immediately there. So that's a, that's another problem. But the, there's 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 another problem I have with this that um, is, is kind of kind of um, reflects like the the nature of the scene. The fact that he has to fight them as Teth Adam. The fact that he has to go out into the ocean, which is why doesn't he say Shazam while he's in the base? Are you telling me the magic lightning can't pierce water? The ma the magic lightning can't go down into the ocean. That's that's the limit. When was this established? Why is this the case? Like it's just taken as a as a as a given that he has to go up to the surface to get to get his uh, Shazami powers back. But really, he could have just as soon as he broke out, he could have just ripped the the thing out of his throat and gone Shazam, and that would have been all she wrote for that. So uh, that that those were the things that I spotted. But I get the feeling there's even more wrong with it that uh, you guys might want to go into. I, feel I mean, like, the, um, yeah, you pre you pretty much you got like a lot of the main ones. Basically, it's just a stupid sequence. Why? Yeah. How can he beat those guys? Like, I don't see him beating those guys. Yeah, they have guns and gadgets weakling. and armor, and there's a bunch of mm. them. And you know, he's just some guy from five thousand years ago. He's not a soldier. Not to mention what the shock of the water hitting him. He's probably never been that cold in his life. Um, not to mention, he probably doesn't know how to swim. Honestly. Um, uh, no. A lot of in a fucking desert. Of, yeah, he lives, looks like he lives in the desert. Who knows? Maybe he learned to swim in the ocean. It was a Kandakian pastime. <laughs> dumb, dumb scene. Very dumb. well. I will say, what I think the film wanted to 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 argue was that he couldn't get that face mask off until he was already in the water, and then in the water he can't speak, and so he had to wait until he's at the surface. I think that's what they want you to think. Still doesn't really... I don't see function. why. I don't see why yeah. he couldn't have just taken it off earlier, yeah. Um, and then I saw someone in chat saying, it's a superhero movie, of course combat skill is a given. No, oh, actually. No, it, lit it literally isn't. Like, so, is that a meme? No, I think they're very upset. Like um, the newbies the, are here. The, the way, so like, uh, you could even maybe see agreeing with the statement, maybe in, in a very s s shallow -y way, but it's like, no, there's lots of stories in superhero stories that we need characters who are not powered up and not skilled to make other characters matter and mean more by comparison. Mm -hmm. The whole idea with, with this is that he's like a shitty slave person, and then he got given incredible power to be able whoa, to fight whoa, through. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? Call him a <laughs> shitty slave person. It's it's person of slave. Just I <laughs> I am referring to the quality of the the <laughs> slavery. Like it's a really shitty situation. Okay? It's re yeah, it's uh, very low okay. quality slavery. There are really good it's slaves. Not like, uh, it's situation. not like Samuel L. Jackson and Django Unchained, which is very high quality slavery. <laughs> this is very low quality slavery. <laughs> It's not that <laughs> racist much. Is slavery now like it's it belongs to just one race? I or refuse. What is this? I refuse to give a, any particular race ownership of slavery. I'm just not going to do it. If you want to, everyone can be a do. shitty slave it. person in my world of freedom. I'm an I'm an egalitarian when it comes to slavery. Yeah, when it comes to slavery, everyone can be, be slaves. Slave. Anyone can be slaves. The freedom to be a slave. Anyway, enslaving continue. based on race is that's just it's so fucking basic. Like, ugh, no, you enslave people you conquer, you enslave to pay off debts. Come on, we gotta Pokemon, we gotta little, Pokemon little count, right? Here. <laughs> Absolutely, Pokemon are enslaved. Those poor little shits, even if they smile, gotta chain them all, oh, gotta whip no. them all. Sometimes eat them. <laughs> whips and chains, the, the, whips and chains. The slow, <laughs> slow poke tails, right? They eat the slow poke tails or something. Not really fucked up. The the shell, the shells do. That is, it's just a, wow. oh, it's like a delicacy in one of the places or something, and it's just like oh what no. What awful hell world the Pokemon world is. Yep, yep, horrible. Anyway, he gets, he, he does it. He activates. And he's like yo yo, and flies away as as. Uh, is Shaz no wait, Black Adam, that's it. Shazam's a different yes. guy. Yeah. Uh, delicious tail. Yeah, it's an item that appears in Pokemon Gold and Silver. That's what I know it from, yeah. The tail oh, of a slowpoke's been cut off or removed. They're considered a delicacy. Jesus! Oh, wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Cut off or removed. Oh my good god. <laughs> Wait, what does that mean? <laughs> Wait, yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> it could have happened naturally. They're just Ripped people off. Why they have, there's a whole legion of, of gourmands, and they are just sitting there waiting, watching all those slow pokes out there, just just ooh, ready to pounce just in case its tail falls off. Or is removed in some way. <laughs> well, They're they just waiting towards it like the zombies in Left 4 Dead. It just falls off. And they got to beat each other off with frying pans. No, 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 no. No, no, go away. This tail is mine. I've waited here the longest in this bush. Why, go away. Now, why, are they, why are they French now? What, what's happened? Well, of course because they're French. I'm, of course they're Everyone's French. French. Everyone's French. Your prejudice is just like that was... No, I'm saying that the French are hardworking and they're passionate for their craft. That's what I'm saying. I'm not insulting you. Passionate yeah, for they're... the craft of chasing <laughs> tails. Look, all right, the French... I'm passionate for the craft of chasing like tails. Cuisine, There's nothing wrong with that. All right? You know, they like delicacies, things of that sort. God, I don't Maybe like it's like a lizard's conversation. tail where you just hold on to it enough. Let's go back to the race. Them. Let's go back to the <laughs> slavery conversation. Yeah. Let's Eating slowpoke tails is fuck too fucked up. Let's talk more it's about too the real. <laughs> we're actually we're, we're close to the end, though. I'm just saying. Just yeah, saying. It's true. It's it's true. Get to that credit sequence. Especially to talk about Henry a little bit. Pretty neat. But yeah. Uh, Dr. Fate, this is the last thing he says to him is, uh, you don't believe yourself worthy because you weren't chosen, but fate does not make mistakes and neither did your son. Which, uh, I think is pretty effective to get him motivated. And, uh, probably cuts a little bit to what Adam thinks of himself being that he wasn't given the power by the wizard people. His son was. And then Dr. Fate's like, yeah, but your son believes in you, man, so you should go and do son stuff. Son a good thing, yeah. Yes. And and yeah, and I, I think that's sufficient to get him like, oh fuck, you're probably right, because he has a little moment of vision gleams with his talking to his son as well, and his son is like, hey, go do stuff. Go. You know, you know, that's what I'm saying. There's this stuff there to make him be like, okay, maybe I will stop all the zombies from taking over Earth. Maybe. Seems like something like. That. Um, and then he says, that sometimes the world doesn't need a white knight. It needs something darker. Don't you dare give up on us now. The world needs you. Needs um, a black knight. Like what you... <laughs> I think that one's. A, I think that line's a little bit cringy. It is. Yes. It is a cringe line. It is clunky, and it needs to be redone. Yes. I wouldn't also, even hesitate to not... say that you might not need it. You might. You could just cut all I of would, it. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, no, get rid of you it. You need to. You need to stop insisting that he's some anti-hero at this point. You know, like I don't know. I just find this movie so like confused. It's like, oh, you don't need to be a white knight. You just need to do the heroic thing and save the world from the evil demon, you know, like a white knight would. I don't. Yeah, but you don't have to be motivated by whiteness. You can be motivated by blackness. <laughs> wow, Mahler with the hard opinions. I see. Are, are you? You're telling can't this, be motivated by the, whiteness. The guy from Africa, Mahler. Are you telling me he's not motivated by whiteness? I in have Africa? no is clue. In Africa, I don't know where Kandak is. I thought it's it in Africa. It's, 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 it's in Africa at the beginning of the film, I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. Uh, another was... another secret African nation that's actually uh, cool. really amazing. We didn't know about it the whole time. Huh, that's and an a different movie. fictional metal that comes from there that's magical too. Huh. Crazy. How about that? So the thing is, it's yeah. not really Karen a secret because was... it's clearly got all the modern things. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess now it's not, not a secret. There. Yeah. Karen yeah. was motivated by her whiteness. That's true. Where is Karen too? Fucking Chad. Good Karen. question. It'd be so cool to have Cyborg Karen. They won't. Well, there do you go. It. Playing the race card again. <laughs> Chad. Those cowards won't do it. Won't do it. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I mean, obvious question. Hey, what are you doing, man? Why didn't you release him? Like, how does your future shit work? I guess you just because you should have released him ages ago. That shit should have been started. It sounded. It feels like his plan was known like the second he was he was planning on killing it like some of the barriers like you should have been saving adam then if he had he might have gotten to you in time you know yeah you should have done that quicker but um yeah the problem with a character like dr fate is gonna be like so he knew as much as he knew in order to do the things that he did instead of doing any of them earlier or knowing any of this stuff earlier mm, yeah is there any reason for that it's like mm. You get what you get. You can see the future sometimes to some degree. Yeah, um, I don't know. Whatever, I guess. That's the general take with a lot of stuff that happens in this movie. Like, I, I guess that's yeah. how that goes. Okay, sure. Um, 
And then he dies. He gets punched real hard in, uh... in the belly. And, and he looks up and all the other characters, they all have a reaction shot to it. And then he vaporizes. And uh, that is the end of Doctor Fate. Yeah, so oh, which... fuck this movie. Hey, man. I... I mean, uh, the very, very common take is, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why the hell did you do that? Uh, I, I'll just go as far as saying this would have been fine if we had had... Everything is fine about, like, the death, I think. It's just that, that we didn't get enough of him. We and that's frustrating. <laughs> yeah. With, uh, so apparently there was Fate. a deleted post credit scene that was going to indicate that there was going to be more Doctor Fate in the future or something. But well, I figure there'll be... I figure there'll be more <laughs> yeah. Doctor Fate, but will it be Pierce Brosnan? Probably not. It won't be Kent, right? Oh, mm, maybe not. Damn. Well, because I'm cool. to be fair, I'm fine with it. They introduced the helmet as a thing that you know searches That's people true. out to wear it. That's fine with him. me, but we should have fuck it. Do a prequel movie. Get me a Doctor Fate prequel movie with Pierce Brosnan. You can de age him. <laughs> fuck you. Do it. Uh, <laughs> or yeah, and we don't know how a prequel where he looks that way would be totally normal. Probably. Well, because he's he said he's how, lived for a hundred years, right? So yeah, yeah. True. you can go back to the. Make a period piece. Do you can like do World a, War II. Yeah, 70s, 80s, World War, World II, War II. Dr. Fate, that'd be crazy cool. Yeah, there's, there's, you can still do it, and you can retroactively make his scenes in this better, even, maybe. <laughs> so, I don't know. Just, yeah, uh, he dies, and, and pretty much everybody was like, mmm. Mm. <laughs> so he was like the one thing we wouldn't have minded taking from this movie and putting into like the universe, but he's gone. Yeah. He's the one person I wanted a solo movie from, absolutely. I definitely would want one. Yeah. I want that super sagacious, cool... Because you see his outfits, and he's got the mansion. He's kind of like a Professor X, Doctor Strange kind of character. And you're like, yeah, more of this. Do this. This is what we want. Um, and then a weird thing happens. All the heroes try to bum-rush Satan, and he detonates. <laughs> and then it, they're like, they're all, they've all fallen over when... From the shot, it looked like he would have killed all of them, but they're all just like, ah, you got me, I fell over. Ow. <laughs> okay. And so he sits on his chair, and it's like, oh, GG, everybody, he's that. And the legions of hell are unleashed on Earth. And it's like, holy fuck, what's that gonna mean? And yeah. you never would have expected it was round one on Nazi zombies. And that's as far as it goes. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. What oh, a... So bad. Hell is... I expect I expect better from hell. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was really disappointing. Hell, like, what are you doing? Where's Where's the big trolls or goblin armies? What was that? It was, it's like you see, I think a grand total, like like five of them individually getting attacked, and then like a group at some point that just get annihilated by a different group of people. It's just like oh, so easily too. They're so, they're like paper. <laughs> The thing done by just regular folks with like uh, baseball bats and <laughs> irons and just it feels like bar. um it feels like a like some kind of cartoon show joke where you unleash all of the armies of hell and you're like and what does that look like it's like well it's all the decomposed corpses all the people who died so they're all useless and falling over and barely able to swing their arm or something and they just go Bleh. and it's like oh but then you have like demons and it's like no. No demon, just the one, <laughs> just the one demon, like one whip cracking demon. <laughs> like, why don't go the, handle this? the six evil demons? Why don't they show up? They're all busy because they're in hell, but and hell's they can't just on earth now. Yeah, hell's on earth, idiot. Well, no, the process, no, hell on <laughs> earth no. is a process that has not been finished yet. All right, how long they can't does it just take? come to earth. It Why doesn't not? matter how long it takes. It hasn't it happened yet. It certainly does. It, it does not. Does. It does not matter because it's not finished yet. <laughs> you saying it's if like... it takes twenty-seven <laughs> seconds or eighteen years or a millennia, it hasn't finished yet. So they can't come to Earth because hell isn't on Earth yet. They have to stay in hell. But what until... about the legions of the damned? The, the... Well, they can come and go because they are using <laughs> a very specific. <laughs> In a spell? somewhat different, yet not part. A a spell could be an explanation, but they are so weak that they are able to get into Earth. But the powerful demons are too whoa, powerful whoa, to whoa, get into whoa. Earth. Well, it's like there's a yeah. If you're if you're tiny, I thought it was right? about if when it's finished, not about their strength. Oh, both. It's both. That's the, that's the glory of the whole scenario. That's what's that's what's so amazing about it. It's not just these things. 
It's that they're so strong, they can't just come to Earth, right? The little guys can slip through the cracks, right? And they could sort of appear. That's easy peasy. Anyone could do that. Except for people who are stronger, which is essentially everyone else, because the army of the damned is like really they're shit. shit, mate. They're shit. It's literally random people on the street with just like a, a pipe is gonna take on a warrior from hell. You know what? So, you so convinced so me. That's You're pretty right. straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, my interpretation. It was your my enthusiasm, enthusiasm is what did it. That's it. Yeah. See, my interpretation is that. It, it's like opening a McDonald's in another country. You, you know, this isn't hell coming to Earth. This is opening a hell on Earth. So you wouldn't expect the CEO of hell to show up for the, you know, the 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 remote hell opening. Surely would he would for the first one, though. The yeah, very it's the first. grand opening. Grand opening. You hell. would think so, but he's not a good CEO. Oh. How will That's you? My explanation. I'm sticking to it. Well, I mean, we do have to remember. This is hell. They're mm -hmm. probably not going to be great. Well, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, CEOs are evil. So if you, yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, they're, they're just, that, that's just a given that we could just run with. So I feel like if hell's always trying to come to earth, it's probably because hell, the earth is better. So I feel like they'd be, they'd yeah, want to. Yeah, they leave clearly hell. want something from us, like our grass. I want to touch it. Yeah, yeah. I want to touch grass. <laughs> Because there's no grass in hell because it's too hot and there's lava yeah. everywhere. Yeah. They spend too much time online. True. They need to touch Very grass. true. Well, they all they they fill up Twitter, all these zombies, but once they're released on, on Earth, oh no. Wouldn't want that. <laughs> um, that would be really bad, yes. The one thing I liked about that whole sequence, because I hate all of it, the zombies and them attacking it and the people wow. and the speech, like the one thing I liked was the crazy chunkle running around yeah. and they're like what are you doing and he's like don't worry i die by electricity i was like that's fun i like that <laughs> that is fun yeah, that is like a the, good that mildly amusing brave. comment i approve of you know he's a much because he waited in the car last time you know yeah like, he's now, had the park is complete what well he le what he waited in the car because he had a bad knee well does he not uh, have a bad knee now oh because of the nanobots they would have fixed up the knee would they have? Yeah. Fuck it, why not? That's such great writing. I love it. Black Adam has solved writing. We don't need to do it anymore. Braver than me. If I saw the spawn of hell appearing in front of me with like swords and shit, I'm running the other way. I'm getting a gun. <laughs> oh, I carry a gun with me. That's right. Why has everybody got <laughs> pipes? Sometimes Nobody has any it. guns in the city. Like the city. I think uh... it's it's fair that the the people at the the insta gang or the inter inter gang they wouldn't want the people having gun you know guns. They would implement gun control because they're tyrants. So the people would exactly why people would have guns available. They would have guns for the for the revolution. But, no, they don't have the guns because Intergang said you can't. No, have you them. would. They would have. There is no rags. revolution. As an American, do you really think when mom. someone says you can't have guns that you're not going to have guns? No, it's not that they just said it. They would have actively pursued you not. Then you hide guns. your guns. You put in a badger. It's e well, if you were going to send your badger to hell, <laughs> <laughs> you could put, you could shove a. Gun up your up your badger and send it to hell, sure, or through time. But I don't know if they had. I don't think badgers are native to Kandak. Okay, but Kandak had Eternium, which means they probably had time travel. Which yes, they would have similar rules with the whole badger situation, so they could still do it. Did they have badgers in Kandak? That's the one last question that's we had. Why, that's why it's called Eternium. Sure. Is it Eternium or Eternium? Like A E Eternium. Eternium. E like eternity. That eternity. Yeah, yeah that, that makes sense for the time travel. That it was called Eternium. Because eternity is a long time. What do you think of this meme in chat? I think it's pretty neat. Oh, it's yeah, the Spy it's Kids good. guy, isn't it? Well, good. I think that Shock Boy and Lava Girl. Oh, is it? That's you know you're probably right. Yeah. I think even I do that. I'm sorry. I haven't seen I haven't seen any of the Spy Kids or Spy Kids adjacent movies. I hear like they're machete? great. Dude, excellent. Machete. I didn't see Machete. But I did see the brisk tea commercial of Danny Trejo recounting the events of Machete. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really good. Up, up, up. Regions of That's hell. Brisk, baby. Zombies. Oh, the speech. So the kid delivers a speech. Oh, yes. And, um, <laughs> Here we go. It's like the most demonic combination of 
possible ADR and the least giving a shit. They encouraged him to sound awful. They really did. They were like, you have to not give a fuck. Like, otherwise we're firing <laughs> you. This is going to be a really good meme. Like, that's the only way I can explain it. Fuck, we're going to send you he, to hell. He's legit delivering it like, come on, everyone. We have to fight in order to get freedom for all of us. Come on. Let's go. I wish we could play it because it's that bad. It's it so awful, the whole thing. And I don't know what they were thinking. Like, anyone can hear that. Everybody I know who's talked about this movie has said that speech at the end was hideous. It's just like, yep. Yep. And there's a really they interesting contrast because as soon as he gives the speech, there's a guy, a random guy in the crowd who's like, yeah, come on, guys. And suddenly he has. He has like energy and emotion. And charisma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you added if you added stuttering into that speech, it would sound like Justin Roiland is doing it. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh gee, oh gee, come on everyone, we go. oh, we're we doing gotta, it. Yeah, all right. we gotta fight oh, for Kondak. Oh jeez, Rick. <laughs> it would be come on, guys. We gotta uh, we gotta fight for we got we got we got we got we got we got I can't. We got we got. <laughs> Didn't you want to die, Rags, when he showed up leading the army on his skateboard with his cape? <laughs> yeah, I repressed all of this. I repressed it. I wanted it. him it to so be... It's, we're, I dragging it out, babe. we're dragging it out of your subconscious. <laughs> it's, it's, this is happening. I, oh I wanted to be this little fucker, this little skateboard kid piece of shit, this mm -hmm. little lost in the 90s kid. I wanted to see him so full of energy, and he's so happy, and yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to fight the demons of hell. I'm going to go get him. And he picks up his skateboard or whatever the fuck he's going to use, and then the first first guy he comes across just fucking kills him, just right in front of everyone. <laughs> just fucking bisects him or cuts like off his... It, the zombie some shit. It hardcore like bites into him, just tears all the flesh apart, blood guts yeah, flying just, everywhere. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, horrific, draw it out. Terrible death. An, an yeah. Oh, you know what he should get? The death from Dead Space that shocked everybody when they finally saw it. It's one of those creatures that knocks your head off and then takes control of your body. Remember that shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was like horrifying uh because there's a lot of cutscene deaths in dead space but that was the one where it makes you walk around and you're like ah it's taking control yeah. of me keep going keeps going and going that's basically like, be like a superhero out. origin Great. demon yeah. child pretty soon list of protocols on the way too woohoo more gaming yeah, streams on the way ragnarok is the first one okay that's oh, oh yeah. so close now guys we're three days away holy moly mm -hmm. And I've still got a lot of God of War still to play. Oh, but you did the part recently that was really, really cool. I did. Really fun. So what do you guys think of this cancer I just found? <laughs> what is this? Wait, no, I, was looking at the, I was looking at the Dwayne Johnson and the Spy Kids. Movie. No, I found something else. It was, it, oh. it, it, it haunted me. What is this? And uh... it, that's so foul. that's like a, a a set photo or something. I don't know. Oh no! I, I, For Aya's Suicide Squad, something like that. I don't know. It might be a toy that might yeah. originally says, be in, in it, the film. It says, it says "Would it be amazing to see version. this?" Joker, Batman, someone and unironically wants this. Stop I think that's just a toy. it! God, never the again. Joker. God, I really wonder it. who's under that mask. <laughs> <laughs> Who could it be? I way Who prefer <laughs> Dwayne the Rock Black Adam Johnson yeah. as the yes, Lava Girl monster. That's way better. Yeah, that that let's let's stay with those vibes. Um so anyway, they fight. Um it's Satan and, and the Rock and the Rock wins. It's not a surprise, he just kills him. And it's it's the one fight where I was just like, just get on with it. I know you win. Come on. Boy. Yeah, I know Satan isn't gonna win. <laughs> just carry on. I know Satan's not gonna win. You're just gonna knock his block off, and it'll be great. You know what? I'm I'm really annoyed that this movie like missed an opportunity to do something more interesting with the villain. Because okay, Satan. the whole thing that they keep telling you over and over again is that uh, Black Adam is not a hero. He's not a white knight. But then the villain he fights is literally just Satan. Like, evil Satan. Satan. <laughs> demon why couldn't it be <laughs> some sort of villain who at least pretends like he's a good guy but isn't you know, yeah this is the most unequivocally the evil creature that they've ever yes. had in this universe <laughs> yes like he's not even the mirror version of black adam which is sort of how they set it up 
you know, the, oh, he's the evil version. But if, if he were the evil version, he would like be pretending to be good. And maybe he's pretending to be a savior, but he's really not. So that would be the opposite. It's not even a, a satisfying win. He just splits him in half. And it's like, you can do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. yeah I guess he can. Some, Some might argue, well, no, it's Black Adam working together with Hawkman. It's like, no, not really. Um, no, actually, they just let him do it. <laughs> that that part with Hawkman has nothing to do with the part later where he splits him in half. So, yeah. I don't know. It's uh, it's that just that sort of happens. Uh, Hawkman does duplicate himself with with the helmet, which is, I guess, kind of neat. He does. Oh. Pay off. Pay off. Pose. Not much of one, but you know, okay. <laughs> a little bit. Um, and yeah, we're all but we're like, yeah, well, that's it. We're all going home. It's like, oh yeah, we did it. And. Uh, and Hawkman says, the justice you dish out, it can darken your soul. Which is, is like, kind of, I expect that to be somebody who'd say, like, yeah, okay, fine. And then Lady says, it's his darkness that lets him do what heroes like you cannot. No. Which is Dude, he just saved, like, he just saved the world. <laughs> Come on. So it sounds like she's saying, because he doesn't have morals, he can kill Satan. <laughs> Like, you wouldn't have killed Satan. Yeah, you you would have. Even though he did. Oh, Hawkman. Right there. I just, you would have killed Satan. Arrest be, Satan it's not the, and then get ah, Satan a lawyer exactly. and put him through yeah. the justice system and try him in a criminal court of law <laughs> and then maybe sentenced him to a long time in prison. He just, he doesn't have the, he didn't have Black Adam's powers. There's nothing to do with his morals. No. Dumbass then, fucking thing to say. Day. He saved so, the day. He was right there. Yeah, so, he was the hero. He did a heroic thing. I don't know. This movie's so confused. It doesn't make any fucking sense. You can't pretend you know that he's not... what they should have done, what they have to do to make this point better. Oh. Uh, Fringy and Cap both know. Um, I'll be as vague as possible, but the idea of a character having to do something morally dubious that is going yeah. to have very strong results that a good character just cannot do. Um, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking the about. The fucking great payoff. And it's making the exact yes, same point that I think this lady is trying to make, but she's talking about killing Satan. It doesn't really, really work. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Especially when Hawkman was doing that the whole fucking movie. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. Well, you see, I think Not what fun. she's trying to say is the fact that he, that they, percent, uh, they possess a sense of morality, and he does not. Gives oh, him an no. evolutionary advantage. No. And as we all know, Evolution always wins. Stop it! <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, what's going on? Oh, oh that's God. a reference. It's a reference oh, yes. to a and to a so, master class in storytelling. <laughs> Adam Adam sits upon the throne, and I think someone says like, "How does it feel?" And he's like, "It doesn't feel right," and he destroys it. Because there is no ruler of conduct. They're a free people. I guess. I guess, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, he, he cares I doubt... a lot about democracy, I guess. Dude, we barely found out anything <laughs> about how conduct functions, who the intergang were, what like politically they mean to the world, and we never will. This was the most well, we'll ever get. As far as we Winter know, gang's meant to be a the Superman evil, thing. <laughs> before the evil tyrant in the flashback exposition scene, the conduct has literally never been ruled <laughs> as an independent country. It's always been ruled by someone else. So I don't. What, would they be a democracy, or would they have? Black black Adam I mean, have question. State, like, is he going to be the ambassador? Did, did Black <laughs> Adam not wipe the whole thing out with a big old nuke? Like, I know that they were like, oh, well, he nearly did. It's like, so how did the histories remember him so wrong? <laughs> like, yeah, that sounds know, like something you wouldn't fucking forget. I don't know, man. Like, yeah, we got, we pretty well understand even figures from that time and what they did, you know? You could wipe out the majority of the city. You'd be like, uh, yeah, yeah we're writing this down. <laughs> like, he, he exactly. was a prick. Like I said, because they had that information, but apparently the Kandaki people didn't. It's weird. Ugh. Quite strange. Yeah. Um, why was the crown where it was? Mm. You telling you me know. the wizards got the crown and thought, I know, I'll bury it with Black Adam in this thing. Why? I don't know. Throw it into space, you fools. Like, why would you do this? It's, to, it's collectible. You have to walk into a room and it's right there. 
Yeah, it's not even buried in anything like Black Adam. It's not, it's not in a tomb or a prison cell the way Black Adam was. Why? Because uh, it wasn't something I thought about when I first watched it, obviously, but then I was thinking about it, and I was like, hang on, what's the point of that? The wizards should destroy it, or store it in their wizard temple or some shit. They present yeah, like, it like it's a cool thing to collect in a video game. Yep. Mm -hmm. Stupid. I, I, you got me. Um, yeah. and then Superman shows up. Yeah. Yo, yeah. Uh, where were you, Clark? Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> help, does it? <laughs> um, but it, I was happy to see him. Uh, I, I, I am hopeful that we'll get something less cringe from him someday. Uh, That'll be nice. Maybe he, he, he's just like, "Hey, Black Adam, you're being mean," and then he's like, "Oh yeah, fuck you," and it's gonna set up. Uh, Black Adam versus Superman: Dawn of Justice. It's gonna be great. Ugh, pretty cool. I'm glad that all of their first meeting is gonna be off screen as well because it just cuts. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We don't get to see what they talk about there. Well, it that's turns nice. out it's kind of it was actually cool. Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor that brought them together, and they. Even <laughs> I love bringing people together. Oh God. Why did Batman vs. Superman happen? What was that? What a mess. Let me tell Why you about a man Manus named Zack Snyder. As well. <laughs> no, don't tell me about him. Enough. Army of the Dead was enough, okay? Oh, that was so bad. Not even the Snyder fans could, like, if, like, like talk about it. You know? Like, like, oh, we, that, yeah. oh, what a great movie that was. Uh, I've, I've seen a lot of people defending Army of the Dead recently, unfortunately. What? Why? Really? What's the point? There's no point. The people are saying how good it is. <laughs> It's such a I'm horrible so movie. Sad. It's legitimately I'm a terrible so movie. It's one of the worst movies. It's one of the worst ones. Sucked. Yeah, it's yeah, it yeah, literally exactly is one of the worst yeah, movies. Actually, Remember when they yeah. fed a guy to zombies because they wanted to just get like what even? Why did they do that? <laughs> Remember when the whole movie was blurry and you couldn't fucking see anything? <laughs> yeah. Remember the dead pixel? Oh, uh, Army of the Dead pixel. <laughs> Remember when there was a nuke going off? Or that was going to go off in like nine minutes, and our characters are having their little heart to heart because. Remember the parachuting into the zombies? <laughs> oh, that shit was so <laughs> funny. Man, that whole that whole sequence is so dense. That first one, where we get everything that sets up why the world. This, is by the way, the one of the dead, the the remake one. A lot of people are like that's one of Zach's best movies, and it's like ah, he directed it, but James Gunn did the screenplay. Not. Ooh. Army of the Dead is what happens when you give Zack both of those. At least, who yeah. wrote Army of the Dead? Was it Zack and someone, or was it just not even Zack? I can't remember. Let's find uh, out. Someone. Someone. Do -do -do -do. It was written by Zack Snyder uh, and then two other people. Some person named Joby Harold. Yeah, a lot of people like to forget Dawn of the Dead comes from... James Gunn more than it does Zach, as far as I'm concerned. This this directing oh. stuff I yeah, like wait, in wait, that wait. film, but still. <laughs> Joby Harold wrote all six episodes of Obi Wan Kenobi. Oh my so, god! Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ, does it happen? Ugh. And uh, and the, the other person who's credited as a writer on Army of the Dead wrote John Wick three. And oh, Day Shift. No. Well, we're not a fan of that here. <laughs> That's always, I always, whenever John Wick comes up in like any other streaming format than EFAP, I'm like, oh, right, yeah, everyone loves it. Mm, <laughs> right, that's right. This is where the wrong people hang out. <gasps> <laughs> it's always, well, because John Wick 4 and 5 is like, oh, hype. It's like the same fucking shit as 2 and 3 again. Uh, but this time it'll be 4. And it'll be a whole bunch of things you never knew about before, but are totally happening now. Clancy Brown's going to be an assassin. Wow. It's going to be great. Oh, and also and they're it, making like a spin-off, right, with Anna de Armas. Why not? Well, I mean, of course, why not? You know, like it's, it makes a lot of money. Why not? Anyway, that's Black Adam. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's that was a that's, like it. that's Black what Adam. What film it is? What yeah, film it is. I'm mainly liking that it's like, it, oh, how cute! You you kind of mostly a film, and uh, there's stuff I like in you, and I really like Doctor Fate. And and Very, yeah, yeah. and most of the stuff that I things. think is bad doesn't really offend me very much. Just there, and yeah. Silly and yeah, it's not well, it's terrible or bad, offensively right? bad. This is what bad used to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Remember when movies wrong. were just normal bad instead yeah. of 
soul crushing, <laughs> universe destroying, <laughs> cataclysmic, dis- uh, just just destruction fests. Oh, those were the days. Yeah. Not so, um, has it gone up or down for anybody's estimations from when we first? Uh, down, down, okay. uh-huh. down, which is not surprising at all. Um, no. it's it's gone down, but I think that its placement still hasn't changed overall. Yeah, pretty much. I'm not surprised it went down once you go through it as methodically, of course, right? It yeah, all it, just start to get revealed. Is there's uh, there's just there's a lot of flaws, and you start to wonder, oh shit, there's not much praise actually. Damn. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's still, I think, more to find of praise than in most of the DCEU. Uh, so uh, yeah, the Suicide yeah. Squad yeah. is uh, head and shoulders above this for character work. Of yes. course. Yes. Except Easily. The role, though. Easily. Um. Which yeah. I guess, which puts Black Adam as number two in the DCEU. Um, is its competition Justice League? Was that our second or something else our second? Uh, I think that the competition was. Uh, I, th- hmm. I think Mahler had it. <laughs> I think I the competition was Justice League for second place. <laughs> I think I think we gave it a four. If no, I don't think we did. I'm pretty sure that everything except for the Suicide Squad was a two or a three. That might be true. I can't. It's, it's hard to remember. I recall a four, but I could be misremembering. Damn. I still think there's more wrong with Justice League, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Is Black this Adam... the best one other than the Suicide Squad? I think Black so. Adam yeah. crawls in at second best in the DCEU <laughs> because, because right, I'm picturing the standard this, is the equivalent of those stupid fucking hell demons just slumping over at the finish line with flesh <laughs> slapping the ground. You're just like, you did it! <laughs> you did it! It's second place. Right. Virtual of no contest. <laughs> We're like propping Wonder it up Woman. onto Wonder the platform at the end. One. No, Wonder Woman was not wa- number one. Wonder Woman is deeply flawed. Yeah, no, we. <laughs> yes. Sometimes we undersell how much Wonder Woman one sucks ass. Like it, it, I'm sorry, it does. Go watch our EFAP yeah. movies, d- Double Bill. That's oh, that's a uh, sure good cover. Superman was the top contender, actually. I'm pretty sure Batman v Superman was. Uh, high yeah, because didn't we list. didn't we think the first act was like stable to some degree? Yeah. And yes. Then as it goes on, it deteriorates, and by act three, it falls. That's apart. the extended edition. Which everyone yeah, says is like a masterpiece, and if it was released in the theaters, then it would have been, it would have made like billions. No, no, <laughs> but it is better than the theatrical cut by quite a bit. It, uh, it, it's better, yes, it is better. Than it, the it is better cut. in that it had establishing shots. Oh, okay. Ooh. Well, no, I mean, like it explains how certain people get from A to B that the theatrical cut just doesn't at all. So I remember that better. being a thing. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, what's next for the DCU? Is the Flash? Is it? Uh, yeah, right. no, it's Shazam. Shazam. I think it's Shazam. Yeah. Then the Flash, then Blue Beetle, then Aquaman. I feel like Shazam Two is going to change nothing at all. Um, no, yeah. it'll just be a movie that exists, and so really, it will be the Flash that <laughs> the is. The Flash gonna is going to be the one that everyone's keeping an eye on. We'll probably Flash cover the Flash. We're probably not going to cover the Shazam Two. <laughs> the Flash will yeah, be hilarious wow. to cover because it's going to be an absolutely bonkers oh movie. Oh my god, I cannot wait. Yeah. I can't wait. It's going to be then, such uh, a like PR nightmare for them too. <laughs> I get the gross. impression that Aquaman is also going to be like nothing, and maybe Blue Beetle. Maybe that'll be cool. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Blue Beetle is kind and of a good don't, costume. Don't you guys worry? Marvel right. is coming in with Wakanda Forever in just a couple days. It's gonna be great. Oh shit, that's that's this week. We're closing out phase week. four. We're bringing in Namor. It's gonna be incredible. Yeah. No, it's it's. I think it's Namor. If that's how it's. Well, yeah, he uh, said no, he said Namor. that, and I was gonna ask about that. How does that work? What am I supposed to say anymore? I, I thought Namor was no. how you pronounce it. I but... It was Namor too, but well, in Namor. the MCU, it's Namor. Usually, it's Namor. Oh, but... oh, okay. What happened? <laughs> well, they, well, you see, they fundamentally changed a lot with the MCU adaptation from what I'm seeing. Like, they've just fundamentally gone with this Aztec thing, so they've changed a lot of stuff with him, from what I can gather. No, Wonder Woman is decent. No, it isn't. No, it <laughs> isn't. No, no. no. Watch, watch, our, watch the EFAP movies. It's a back-to-back, no, fun, no, fantastic no. extravaganza to be loved and cherished. We watch Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman 1984. 
or big revelation of that coverage is it is not the third act that destroys the film. It was already it was destroyed. <laughs> It yeah. was all of them, yes. It was, all really of the it was all of them all along. Wait, is good. So, no, it isn't. It is not <laughs> so, good. I would like to, someone pointed out in the chat, and I'd like to make you guys aware of this, that the new Flash movie forthcoming, uh, written among other people by Joby Harold of Obi-Wan Kenobi. And Here Obi we go. I don't understand. Joby and it? Kenobi. Why? Joby cool. Kenobi. I don't get it. It's not fair. God damn it. No, it's not. No, it really isn't. Yeah. I so yeah. I, I did a little dive trying to figure out who the fuck this guy is uh, when Kenobi was coming out. It's so strange. His very first credit in anything ever on IMDb is executive producer of Edge of Tomorrow, what? which tells me this is probably a nepotism, baby. <laughs> I don't. I don't <laughs> oh, if you, oh, I believe it totally. I don't understand how that's the funny. first credit you get is a producer on that movie. It's insane. And then so like his writing credits, for example, he only has six writing credits. There's some movie called Awake, then King Arthur Legend of the Sword, uh, Army of the yeah. Dead, Obi-Wan oh. Kenobi, Transformers Rise of the Beasts, which is apparently oh. forthcoming, and The Flash. Like that's just, it. Um, what a legendary yeah. resume. Was well, it's one of those things that gets concerning that one of the screenwriters, I think, on Into the Spider, uh, Across the Spider Verse, wrote uh, D Day of what was it, Army of the Dead? That's right, yeah, I think so. Anyway, it's like, oh, uh oh. I Ooh. guess I just don't. I, it, nothing beats Michael Waldron writing Multiverse of Madness and then getting to write Secret Wars. That, God, that that's gonna be fun. such a mess. It's gonna be terrible. Imagine trying to try to keep it's track of the fucking end. continuity at that point. Well, and, and and imagine if you actually gave a shit about doing that. Like, imagine if what? even the person gave a shit, it would still be really hard. You you got to be the ex he head writer on a television show about Loki, then you get to write a Doctor Strange movie that Sam Raimi directs, and then you get to make secret writer anyway. Forget the nepotism, baby. This is a nepotism boat. I don't. Uh... Nepotism <laughs> nest. Multiverse of Madness made money, I guess. So yeah. Did indeed. Oh yeah, I guess I guess the thing to round out the discussion is like what do we think that Black Adam is actually going to meaningfully change for the DCEU going forward? Has Buckle? the hierarchy changed? <laughs> well, what, part of what I find strange is like The Rock is clearly pushing his own stuff, but James Gunn is also gonna be trying to set out a plan and it's like, so who supersedes who there, you know? Well, they do. They're they're the heads. James Gunn and Peter Safran are ultimately in charge. I wonder because um, he's he's got that ego. You know? He does, but uh, I guess it depends on if Zazlev, who he will defer to, right? Will it be them? It probably will be them, right? Because he picked them, I imagine. So yeah, but it's the Rock, I dude. I don't know if this movie is, uh... is performing quite so well that they're just going to no, do whatever not. he wants. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. You're right. It's, uh, as I understand it, it had a pretty significant drop-off in the second weekend. So right now, it's it's at $262 million. I guess we've got to find out this weekend. But the remember, the film cost $200 million. So, mm -hmm. like, what that really means is that it probably needs to make, like, $600, $700 million to be a success. Yes. I would, it would be my, my guess. And as I understand it, second weekend is now tracking with Shazam, which costs a lot less to make. Um... And also, Shazam wasn't like a, sh yeah, it's it's budget really because Shazam made a good amount of money, uh, even though it didn't make a ton of money overall. Like it turned a good profit. This one, I don't know. And even then, it's like, well, it needs to be. You you got to compare it to like what it's competing against. Uh, Thor: Love and Thunder actually did manage to catch up a bit in the end. It got to about seven hundred, eight hundred million. Multiverse of Madness made a, nearly a billion. And the Batman made like seven hundred and fifty million, something like that. If you don't make more than five hundred million, that's not great. I've heard and... that this movie is probably going to show in China, so that'll do well for it. But uh, I, I don't think it is showing in China. I think it's. Uh, I don't think it is. Really? Oh, I thought. Yeah, I, heard of it else, I don't think there's not. any date. Um, I heard that but, too. That China was going to save it, but maybe not. Well, well, that's the thing. Is China saved Aquaman? Aquaman yeah. made a good chunk of its money in China, so will. The next one release in China, and if it doesn't, will it make a billion dollars? The answer is no, it won't, because mm -hmm. it didn't do that well domestically. Um, 
I, I, I guess the, the broad point of this discussion chat is uh, nothing changes ultimately in terms of uh, Dwayne Johnson getting power like in DC if it doesn't make enough money. They probably will make more films. I wouldn't be surprised if they keep making. Like, <laughs> They'll keep Adam trying. Oh, for sure. They will yeah. keep trying. In a decade from uh, now, we'll think... be talking about the reset entirely with the new star from TikTok <laughs> yeah. who's taken over. <laughs> gonna... yeah. I guess something else is that the Super Pets movie that he was significantly involved in didn't do that well either. So, who knows? Not exactly uh, doing gangbusters. Well, no, because this film opened at like 67 million domestic, which is appreciably less than like the Batman and Doctor Strange. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it didn't make that much of an impact, right? Nor did just having Superman in the post credit scene. That wasn't a draw, which of course probably wasn't, right? It's a post credit scene. Yeah. Um, yeah, apparently, The Rock intentionally leaked that so that people would come to see it, but um, didn't seem to do enough. too much. Not enough to no. get people to go watch a film. No, if he was no. in the movie proper, maybe that would be maybe. Helpful. And the thing is, how the is fuck if would you get him in the movie proper? <laughs> I'm just, uh, like, how how many more problems that creates? Yeah. But whatever. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that's something I wanted to say as well. This fucking movie is so ambitious. Um, as as are a lot of these, like Thor: Love and Thunder, for example, or, or Multiverse of Madness. Jesus Christ, your scripts are so incredibly convoluted, complicated, and insane, and adding so many new, huge, world-building implications all the time. You can never just calm the fuck down. Hell, no. simple origin story. No, everything's mm -hmm. gonna no. be crazy. And I mean, I feel like the problem is only going to persist going forward with DC. Like, yeah. next year, there's four films. There's four DC films. Um, you got Shazam, which has its own world-building implications. The Flash is gonna be like a multiverse time travel. Like crazy film. It's gonna be a disaster. Uh, yeah, we know they can handle probably, that though. So that's nothing to worry probably about. Gonna be a disaster. <laughs> it's gonna be so quick, guys. It's gonna be so quick. And I mean, the, the question will be: Have they even decided what the plan is after that? Is it gonna change now that James Gunn and Peter Safran are gonna be making some choices about? You know, does it even remain as it is right now? Is a hard reboot actually on the cards? I don't think so. Even now, which no. is absurd, because it needs even to if happen. Yeah, even if they didn't do a hard reboot at all and they did decide to take like a hard left turn and just try to do their best to take it in a new direction from where it is, that's not going to happen for at least uh, like a year or two, like you said. Like, we're yeah. not there yet. This still, this is more of the same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the longer it goes on, the more of like that baggage you have that is tricky and it's difficult to get rid mm -hmm. of. Like, the fact yeah. that people don't even know which Justice League film is canonical. Like, well, yeah. I'm pretty sure it is Justice Justice League is the canonical one. <laughs> but, like, yes. the fact that that's even in doubt is bad. Yeah, no, but, like, I think you're right. Like, as much as there's official weird or whatever, it's like, I think most, a lot of people will be confused. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I mean, people watching this movie will be confused about which justice organization is even yeah, in charge. Well, in the I, told you, I was a little bit confused because I was, I was like, are they a, a part of it? Are they associated in some way? And then having Walla be their boss, it's like, that's even more yeah. confusing. Yeah. I had to bring her back. <laughs> Well, the, the Again, sad like, thing is, I actually kind of like Viola Davis's Waller in in what I'm trying to picture as being the perfect version. The better version of herself, yeah. You know, like, she's a hard-ass, kind of nutball, crazy person who's getting really important and difficult jobs done that are morally dubious. Like, that can work. The Suicide Squad is the best version of her, even though it's pretty quick as well. But Suicide Squad is awful. Um, <laughs> when she just killed all of her own people, I remember just being like, I, I can't, I can't, this is a joke. Ugh. Um, but, like, the actress clearly can do it. They just need to give her a script that's not cringe. Absolutely. Yeah, like, she's pretty ideal casting that's... for Amanda Waller. It's just she's not... Like, yeah. everyone in this universe, no Ain't one is given anything to work with! Yeah, she would make a really cool character, like Mahler was saying, but, I mean, but then giving her the script seems to be a really difficult fucking thing. And the problem is now, how do you salvage Waller with all of the, with everything that's <laughs> happened so far? It's Dude, like, that's, well, that's tough. That should be uh, the question for anybody who's about to make a movie in the DC universe to prove that they've been paying attention. How many films has Amanda Waller been in? Yeah. If you like, I think um, it's five. I, think <laughs> I, can, I can see someone being like, well, many. it's three, isn't it? They, they look at it around the room, they're like, four, five, six, three, two? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. 
I don't know. However I don't many know. you wanted to be. I don't know what her reach is. She, she has contact with Superman, apparently. Um, okay. Um, like I, I wrote, you know, the way I described the DCEU, it is a puzzle with most of the pieces missing. And um, I actually wrote a list of things that are fucked right now that are kind of are the argument for the hard reboot. So you know, what have we fucked up so far? Uh, proper Superman origin story, that's gone. We don't have a Flash origin. Uh, we don't have a good Wonder Woman origin. We don't. We didn't get a solo Batman before he met Superman. We didn't get a proper first meeting for Batman and Superman. We didn't get a non-rushed version of the Trinity coming together. Any origin films of the JLA, really. Um, we don't, we've got, fuck, Lex Luthor's gone. Uh, Doomsday is wasted. We don't, you know, they already killed Superman. You can't do that again. Uh, yeah, Clark and Lois are already together. They, they will totally words. do that again if they want. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you well, they about? will. They will, but you can only do that once for the first time, is kind of what I'm saying. You can only yeah. do that once for the first time. Exactly. Yeah. Um, any stories with younger Batman? Probably not happening. Um, fucking Batman's already got most of his history gone, so mm, his stories with this Batman are going to be pretty limited as far as their potential is concerned. And you can't do much with Robin because he's dead. Um, Superman and Batman reacting to the existence of metahumans. You can't do that anymore. Reacting to magic. Can't do that. Superman meeting the Justice League. Decisions. Can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. You can't like, do... Like coming out of the yeah. bat and saying essentially, yeah, Robin's dead. But, oh, yeah. well. All right. I mean, you get the benefit of a Robin, so you know there's plenty left. But just still, you're right. It's like that seems like a story you should have fucking told. But okay. <laughs> yep. Like uh, Superman me met fucking Captain Marvel Shazam um, off screen. Uh, same with Amanda Waller. Um, fucking the uh, can't do a re. Uh, Black Mask is gone. Um, J. Uh, you know, Justice Society is introduced a lot of problems like um they're apparent are they a public entity are they not jimmy olsen's gone oh, Cassandra yeah. kane's a bit fucked um they're not going to show that conversation between superman and black adam every um, time i'm just gonna be honest every time you say kane i think about <sighs> <laughs> yeah oh, oh girl yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're not in a good spot we're not in, <laughs> this, this isn't really a universe i want salvaged because we've wasted so much i agree at this point. yeah yeah 100 yeah. i agree fucking flatten it with a steamroller turn it to a parking lot we need to redo it entirely start from the ground up you've blown all of your big loads they've all essentially been wasted we we have got to start over the state of the world's we a mess it. just yeah. do it just do it just have a big um, DCEU two or some rebrand it, just just do something else and start. You, and you gotta start strong. You have to start strong. I feel like if you're gonna do a hard reset, I feel like the thing to start with and get right would be a Superman movie, like Orton yeah. Superman movie. Yes, just do it right this time. You can do it. That guys. would really set a strong groundwork. I think because of all the things you mentioned that they fucked, the fact that. Superman's origin story is just horrendous. It feels like the worst one to me. Yes, definitely. Dude, there are people out there who think Man of Steel is like a glorious genius really masterpiece. Yeah. Can you believe it? <sighs> Can you believe it? I, I unfortunately have to because they keep finding me whenever I talk <laughs> I remember, about it. <laughs> Frank, you remember all the inhabitable that shit? Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. no! oh, my God. Oh. And the guy was like, you guys are the reason we ended up with Justice League. He kept complaining. And it's like, our reviews came out after all of that. What do you mean? We didn't even cover this. What are you talking about? And, oh, and someone, someone in chat reminded me as well. You remember how uh, Bloodsport shot Superman? And then they were like, wow! Like, that, the Snyder fans were like, that was a shot against Snyder's work. Implying that Bloodsport could take out Henry Cavill's Superman. And it's like, you guys need to calm down. <laughs> like, <it's... laughs> uh, like the only thing I would keep is Henry Cavill's casting, uh, maybe a I couple of casting choices. It's, but... it's difficult if you keep casting choices, it sends a confusing message about the continuity. It does. That, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tricky one. It's like 
man, sucks, really sucks. I We lose a lot of great talent, but, like, you got to bite the bullet and just restart with a plan. You know what's funny? Totally clean slate. If you, like, what's suggested funny, to the, the boardroom, like, full hard reset, they're like, we just released Black Adam. And it's like, yes, 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 we'll we'll redo that, too. <laughs> and they're like, what do you mean? And it's like, well, you know, we'll redo the, all of it. We'll take... Like, we'll 20 take... years from now. Yes, Bros, are you willing to do that again, but better? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> like, there you go. <laughs> I mean, in a perfect world, for me, I, I I don't even really want them to do an extended universe, but I, they're going to because they're always wow. going to be chasing that sort of Infinity War Endgame $2 billion movie. And so they're always going to be trying for that. So if they're going to do it, they should probably do a hard reset, though. I would like it if they did more standalone pocket stuff like the Batman and Joker and stuff like that. So. You say that, and something that scares me is I'm really scared that they're going to try and, bl like, merge the Batman into the DC universe. That would be I the worst know. version, yeah. Dude, I, I thought you were yeah. going to say they were going to merge the Joker into the Batman. Those, those specifically, because they're so, like, away from the DCU, both of them. They're just like, you know what, they are their own DC, they're the DCU too. And you'd be like, oh no, no, That no. would also be bad, yes. Please don't. It'd be so funny if they announced that and everyone's like, oh, you know, maybe this is potential. And they're like, also Black Adam is in that one. <laughs> <You'd be> like, <laughs> no. Uh, <clears throat> oh, fucking hell. Which about wraps up Black Adam discussion. Yep. I think so. How yeah. incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know what? Now I'm going to move into talking about certain cuddly fella who got yeah, an extension. Yeah, boy! Look at him go. Woo! Right, I got so extensions, I'm, everyone. You got to talk about it, because I am very <laughs> tired. I'm dying. All right, that's that's totally all right. Well, um, they decided, those uh, the guys over at Makeship, they decided to make an extension of the date. So, if you have not picked up one of these incredible rags plushies, and they are amazing, I've got one, then you have a second chance, a reprieve of sorts. So you get an extra week, and it's down to, uh, yeah, you get an extra, looks like they added eight days. Excellent. So, pick it up. Do not, uh, there's not going to be another extension as far as I know. So, if, if, you, if you don't have it, you should get it. Looks great. And it will look excellent next to your Mahler and Fringy plushes. You can have us all hanging out together with all of our mm. gadgets and gizmos now. So please do. It helps us out a great deal. Um, and yeah, so my, uh, I think what's gonna, I'm, I'm too tired to be able to give much more coherent responses and stuff. Uh, today I've been busy since super early doing all kinds of IRL things. And... Some cool mm -hmm. developments in regards to that that I will hopefully oh, cool. be sharing soon-ish with the uh, good old EFAP chat. Um, Exciting. Uh, got stuff to do, but uh, that 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 also means that yeah, I'm probably gonna uh, try and round us out at this point instead of trying to do super chats. But at the same time, me rags and Fringy have been recording lots of uh, offline catch-ups. We're gonna be we're, yeah. we're hacking away at that 200. That'll be releasing as one big thing or maybe two smaller big things. You know how it goes. Uh, there's other ones to be released, but then there's also um, games have been actually getting in the way. The oh. God of War Ragnarok is is probably the next big event now. Um, me and Metal are going to stream on Tuesday. A special little stream where we're just going to talk about God of War one, two, three, four, um, and then the following day Ragnarok comes out. I think, or at least around then. And uh, I think it's the ninth, uh, Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you know what I mean, like the midnight of Tuesday for, uh, uh, I think everyone, right? It, does it release it respectively in everyone's time zones on midnight or something like that? Uh, well, do? I guess it depends on you get it digitally or physically, right? Which means, physically, oh yeah, true. So, the, But does that mean, the, would Australia be the first people to get it at that point then? Yeah, of course. We're, well, New Zealand, but, you know. That's, that's kind of neat. Good for them. Yeah. Nice they win at something, yeah. But yeah, they, they, they get that. They're going to be playing it, and then everyone else is going to be playing it, and it's going to be... Super cool. Uh, I, I would picture you'll have a wonderful choice of watching myself, Metal, or Fringy, or all of us, uh, of all the EFAP sphere people. I'm not sure who else will be streaming it. It's probably going to be a pretty fun, big deal. Um, and uh, because we were so far ahead of EFAP episodes and it gives us more time to record uh, offline Super Chat catch ups, 
the next week EFAP will also not be an EFAP. It'll, it'll uh, probably be something else. If not streaming a catch up, it'll be uh, maybe releasing a mini, maybe releasing nothing, and we record something offline. That's what I'm trying to say, we're going to try and balance the numbers back out, and also give some more time for me to catch up on all of the housekeeping stuff to do with EFAP, because those those TV shows hit us hard. But I know the other thing you guys really want to know about is Andor coverage. What is going on with Andor? That is a what great is question. What is going on with Andor? Because we're not sure what's going on with Andor, to be honest with you. It's really difficult uh... to schedule it in. Um, and the problem is, like, there's, there's passion, but it's not enough to, like, where it barges into your schedule and you allow it to do that sort of thing. It's more so a thing that's, like, patiently waiting in the dentist's room and you're like, oh, there he is. I'm going to get to him. He is there and he's been patient. But I know that there's a lot of people who are very, very interested in... Uh, Hearing our perspective on it because apparently it's good, as in the uh, the, the the more stuff that's been coming out, it's apparently good stuff. Uh, the problem is like nobody's fucking talking about it. You know what I mean? Like 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 all the people in my spheres, all the different streams are going. Yeah, I haven't fucking really watching heard the show. About it. It's, uh, we need to get into it. We like the first three episodes, so we need to you know. Well, to the point where I'm probably gonna have to rewatch if we ever start watching it again. I hope we do. We have to rewatch those first three again yeah, to get back yeah. in. Um, and so it's so like, okay, people. so that doesn't sound promising in terms of coverage. And it's like, well, it's not. That's that's the truth there. Uh, um, it doesn't mean we won't be doing coverage, but it doesn't. It means I don't know what our coverage is going to look like uh, just yet. I keep saying we'll let you know once we know because we're not sure yet. The Black Adam is really easy because it's just a goofy movie that takes like two hours, and then we can talk about it. Uh, Andor is a very long TV show, and it's not even finished yet, so. I say very long, but Disney is very long. Well, yeah, that's a lot by Disney standards. Um, the other thing then would be Hot D. What's the plan with that? Uh, the problem we had was getting the guests. Everyone was very busy. All the people we want to try and grab. I'm going to see if I can get them, maybe for the week after next. Uh, you know how this goes, guys. If the longer it takes mm -hmm. and the more things that come up, it might be we don't quite get to cover it. Uh, possible. I'm not sure yet, but we're going to do what we can, though. I would like to. Yeah, I would, too. Uh, I really would. Uh, good stuff. And then, um, hey, why don't, uh, why, don't, why don't... Capital Opinions, why don't you talk about what you're up to these days? What streams you have, talking about movies, concepts, ideas, uh, I don't Just know thoughts if in general. Yeah, what, what are you up to? What you, what you, yeah, what you got? Well, uh, very recently on Halloween night, we did a stream talking about the original Hellraiser and the Hellraiser reboot, Whoa. comparing and contrasting the two films. If you're into that sort of thing, you should check it out. Thought it was a what good time. What sort of thing? That sort of thing. Oh, Hellraiser. Cool. Raising Hell. Right. Movies. Raisin Hell. Oh, yes. that's what happened in Black Adam. They tried to raise Hell on Earth. It went yes. really good. True. They it did. They called this well. movie Hellraiser. <laughs> um yeah yeah it's a very interesting stream i think tried to make it that way and there's some spicy takes for anyone Oof. who really likes the original hellraiser so oh my be warned oh. um yeah we got devs episode four coming out Ooh. soon and oh, in a, what was the, and then uh in about like two or so from now i'm gonna be on metals forge talking about a German movie called Victoria that was shot all in one long take. Pretty interesting. You're making him watch movie. German films now? I know, right? I, I, we were in a chat, and I said, hey, Metal, what are some of your favorite German movies? And he's like, oh, I don't really watch any of those. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe you should <laughs> You're watch shitty German. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to talk about that. It's cool. a pretty good crime thriller, actually shot in one long two-hour two long take. It's pretty neat talk about that Sounds that's what i got going on awesome huh very interesting that devs so is that eight episodes of that show i can't remember anymore it sure is eight episodes of eight pain. Fucking we're episodes. gonna make it through have you completed the scripts for all of this you haven't done the production side is that what it is or is i it... have completed the scripts for all eight episodes uh episode four all the audio is done and i'm working on the video editing now like so i said before man one of the things that fucking frustrates me to no end is when it takes a long time to get a script done, but then production can't take place because it's a commitment, and you've got other things that are going on. Like my The Boys season two script, it's it's there. It's on my hard drive. It's all complete. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't like. <laughs> oh god, that one has to become a video someday. Um. Yeah. Meme repos repos blah 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 blah. What are you up to? What's happening? How are you doing? Mwah. 
I'm doing good. I I just started a, a podcast called the Stream Repository. We uh, we we streamed our. How, wait, wait, wait. How do you spell stream? Uh, so you spell it um, S S S S S, and then you like uh, uh, move the dials so that it um, eventually goes S T R E A M. Uh, oh, okay, that is you're not you doing like S T R E M E. No, I, I because I didn't think okay. of that when I put it together because um, I regret you didn't, not you doing really that didn't now. think of that. <laughs> no, it's a, I, I was because oh, okay. I don't know. I I was just so I was so proud of the fact that I came up with it. It was a double entendre because it's both a live stream and a stream of consciousness. So I was just like, oh, that's really good. Never thought to 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 pun the title. Um, I thought it was okay. the, the rhyme was All enough. Right. Hmm. This is like yeah. the Sure Friday gag. Stream in the pilot of repository Archer. doesn't rhyme. Perhaps what do you mean? Yeah. Why? It's why not too it's... late? You know. That's true. That's true. Um, you know. You can um, read Rand. That's true. That's true. Um, I'll, uh, I'll I'll give that consideration. Mm. But um, yeah, it is a variety show where I basically talk about everything and anything uh, that uh, comes into my brain hole. So you know, we talk about you know the usual stuff. We talk about the medias, the DCs, the Marvels, the Star Warses, the. Uh, we actually got a little bit of a Transformers kick going at the moment, so I occasionally dip into that. Then yeah. we are, I've ta I also talk about uh, living with ADHD. I got a little bit into that, um, which a lot of people have actually responded very positively to. So I was uh, quite happy about that. Um, we also spent. Uh, uh, we also uh, read about. We also um, read some comments under a porn video um, at one point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Last week we went through. Yeah. As yeah. You yeah. Do. Normal. Yeah, as you do, as you do. Um, we um, we talked about nine eleven last last week. We looked through a bunch oh, of good. form posts Thank that you. were you know after nine eleven, right. and that was after I ranted about Green Lantern <laughs> for a little bit. So really, it's a show that can go in any direction at any time and can talk about anything. Um, uh, so if that sounds interesting to you, uh, you can see it every Wednesday um, at ten a.m. Um, Australian Eastern Time, and I re-upload um, the vods to the um, Stream repository channel, along with clips from the episode, um, to kind of little, little bite-sized bits, because uh, it's a it's a format that works really well for also putting clips out. So if if that sounds like your thing, you should check out the stream repository. It's uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it, um, and uh, you know I've gotten some positive feedback, so maybe you'll you'll like it as well. Uh, so let's see it. Yeah, this sounds great. I was yeah. about to say that did sound a bit like a, a Stewie <laughs> thing there. Yeah, it did go a bit stewy, didn't it? Little stewy. You gotta, you gotta... <laughs> a little story, beginning, middle, and end. Yeah, yeah. You gotta the, the main you character learns three dimensional. Just a turn. Everybody lets the hero's journey as noisy as No, I look forward to reading it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love that love joke. It. It's great. Yeah. Anyway, oh. uh, rags, friggy. Did some of you guys wanted to say about anything? I don't know. Oh, I put out a couple videos recently that you guys can check out, and I should be putting out more dog bites and things along the way. Um, I don't know if I will do a new project before the new computer. I'm not sure, though, but uh, I'll probably focus on getting some dog bite stuff out, and who knows? Who knows what I'll be up to lately? But yeah, check that stuff out. Please do. Do it. Fucking do it. Sweet. Also, buy my plushie. Yeah. It's amazing, and it will make you happy. It's literally... It's It's... It's uncanny how efficiently it is at converting currency into happiness. Apparently they design them it's, that way. Like they want them to be cuddly and fluffy and comforting. It's incredible. It really is. Technology, man. Where it's at. Yeah. Like Eternium, but for cuddly things. It's just like you can make a crown out of my plushies and it will summon the demons from hell or something. Neat. What are you bringing? I don't, uh, don't have anything at the moment. Just writing, working. Very well. Uh, you know how it is. Like I said, the next thing you guys will see from me is a stream where me and Metal have a little chat about God of War, I think. Should be. Oh, other than if, if Drink is doing a catch up tomorrow, he might be. And then obviously, Real BBC, actually. That'll be before I do the thing with that. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I need a schedule. I need it on my wall so I can keep track of what the fuck's going on. Uh, but then also, I will be more specific about these. Cool thing that may be happening or not. Um, anyway, it's been wonderful. Sorry that we started late and technically ended early. Or well, technically ended around on time actually. But you know, 
I just, you, guys, you guys want a million hour episodes? I know. It's okay. Got five hours, all right? Yeah, and go watch the Halloween arc for Final Destination if you haven't, okay? You'll love it. The, a lot of work went into the editing of those from lots of people. Um, and, and more fun flisms on the way. But thank you very much, all of you, for keeping us company, for the kind donations, and for keeping, giving us some back and forth about this wonderful movie called Black Adam that's going to save the DCEU. I'm that's sure. right. He's not like other girl superheroes. Yes. <laughs> he Don't is, worry. He's really. Yeah. I will make sure to change the thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, you got it. The you real have thumbnail. To. So many much better options. Um, but okie dokie. Toodle pip, everybody. Cheerio. Yeah, yeah goodbye, goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Toodle. Bye. 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 See you. Sweet dreams. A boo boo.